The King of the Battlefield Description Humanity was on the brink of destruction. Mu Young, an assassin from the Forest of Death, fell to his knees. There were corpses all around him. For years, he had worked for the Forest of Death and had finally been able to eradicate them. Now, he, himself, was about to die. He closed his eyes as he felt his heart stop beating. Suddenly, Mu Young opened his eyes. By some miracle, he was still alive. He then realized that he had actually gone back 40 years in time. Join him as he decides to fix humanity's past mistakes and fight against the 72 demons of the underworld. Prologue. Roar. The forest was on fire. This was the base of the organization, the forest of death, where any human could come to kill each other. Cough. In the edges of the forest, a man missing the lower half of his body was struggling. While coughing blood, he grasped Mu Young's ankle and shouted, For, for what reason did you destroy the forest of death? For forty years, you killed thousands of people with us so why now? Mu Young, wearing a black robe smeared with blood, quietly looked down at the man and said, Weren't we all already non-existent? The group living in the furthest corner of the world. That was the forest of death. As they were never able to tread in the light, they did not exist. It was just a disappearance of people who already didn't exist. There was nothing strange about this. Finally, everything was quiet. It was because the man grasping his ankle, the leader of the forest of death, had breathed his last breath. As he gazed at the abundance of bodies surrounding him, Mu Young thought, if I was given the choice, would I have lived a different life? Too many had died. Even the blood of the innocent were spilled by his hands. Living a different life, it's probably impossible. It was hard to imagine living with someone with his pungent smell of blood. Thud. Mu Young fell to his knees. There were various holes strewn throughout his body. It was surprising that he still didn't die after losing so much blood. Even though he had the finest training in the forest of death, it was too difficult to assassinate hundreds of experienced fighters and the leader by himself. It's been a long road. He forcefully brought the edges of his lips up. He couldn't even remember his real name or how to smile anymore. But 40 years ago, Mu Young had been just a common university student on Earth. Once he was summoned to the underworld, everything changed. The underworld. This world that was ruled by 72 demons was no different from hell. For a long time, humans were slowly summoned to the underworld. It was the same for him. Without any time to adjust, he was left to protect himself against monsters. He couldn't even trust other humans. For decades, humans existed in this world. They treated other lives as if they were worthless. To protect this belief, small organizations and bases like this were even established. Mu Young was kidnapped by the forest of death as soon as he arrived in the underworld. From then, he was put under drugs and brainwashed into killing others. The people who could have been the hope of humanity were killed in this way. Even after he was released from those methods, he already lost the guilt of killing others. He had gone too far to live amongst others. But, even this path was now at its end. Mu Young lifted his head. It will probably be the last time I get to see a sky like this. The sky above his head was incomparably clear. Chapter 1, Blue Temple, 1. Hook. Mu Young opened his eyes. His whole body was covered with cold sweat. As he wiped his sweat, he took a deep breath. Who? Who? He slightly frowned as he felt something strange. How am I able to breathe? He definitely remembered dying after wiping out the forest of death. He was also aware that his heart stopped when he took his life. Am I, alive? But what is this vividness I am feeling right now? Even doctors who have reached heavenly levels wouldn't have been able to heal him. It was definite that he was going to die. But he didn't. The heart he thought had stopped was thumping harder than ever. All his senses of smell, hearing, touch, taste and sight were normal. These weren't the only weird points. He turned his head. There were almost 50 people around him. WH where is this? I was definitely working at my company? Mommy, mommy. There were many different types of people, ranging from children to the elderly. Mu Young had seen this before. It was a vague, faded memory, but this was the scene he saw 40 years ago, when he was first summoned into the underworld. He also remembered the hell that happened afterwards. I don't have any calluses, he thought as he examined his hands. The rough calluses that were formed from using weapons for 40 years were nowhere to be seen. The scars and wounds that were riddled throughout his body were gone as well. Everything is refreshed. The past events he had endured were gone like it never happened. Even the great Mu Young was taken back. Did I return? It was hard to believe. Time traveling. But if this truly is the past, then I might know where this is. The Blue Temple. A half-destroyed temple. It was the place where people who are summoned arrive first. He has to survive here for a month to reach the next stage. I guess it'll come up soon. Mu Young gazed in front of him. Shortly, the expected phrase floated up. Choose your weapon. What? It's telling us to choose weapons? Fuck. What's that supposed to mean? While everyone was confused, only Mu Young moved out. Of the hundred weapons strewn along the wall, he grasped a shining blue weapon. Then a message appeared in front of him. Name, Scimitar of Strength. Rank, E. Classification, Flange Mounted. Endurance, 300. Effect, Strength plus 1. Ha. 
It's the same as before. If there was a difference, it would be that he reacted and moved faster than others. Following the law of Solomon, the first one to complete their mission will be awarded leather armor. Everyone turned to look at Muyung. Soon, out of nowhere, an armor made out of leather floated in front of him. Muyung wordlessly packed the armor. Completing the missions fast is good. That way he could receive these extra rewards as well. The underworld is swelling with various monsters. A regular human is unable to survive in this environment. That is the reason why there is the law of Solomon. The underworld was created by the 72 demons trapped under Lemigitan, note, lesser key of Solomon, as they wake up. Baal, Agars, Amon as well as the other demons were the strongest among the monsters. Solomon, who originally trapped the 72 demons, predicted this outcome and, to give humanity hope, forcefully made this system to fight against the 72 demons. But the real enemies were the humans. That's right. The enemy of humans are humans themselves. The work Muyung carried out was of the same nature. People with promising futures or those that would be of a hindrance were requested to be eliminated by the forest of death. Because of that small belief, they became narrow-minded. Since he arrived 40 years in the past, 20 years from now, the great calamity will strike and summon all of humanity to the underworld. That is when the demons will make their move. However, to protect their small belief, humans hid their trump cards in fear of losing them and were divided and eventually conquered. Even then, the amount of people requesting assassinations from the forest of death never dropped. By the time Muyung destroyed the forest of death, humanity was already on the brink of defeat. Is, isn't it best if we all chose a weapon? A woman gave her opinion. They all remembered the words and the leather armor floating in front of them. They realized that this wasn't just a trivial matter. But they were a step too late. Screech. 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 Kill 100 fire eagles. Rewards will be given to the people who kill the most. Or endure until there are 30 people left. The fire eagles that have eaten their full will return back to where they came from. As the temple doors opened, two meter tall birds were slowly flying towards them. Because their tails always emit fire, they were monsters known as the fire eagles. These eagles used their long sharp beaks to tear out the human guts. A good number of 100 fire eagles landed. It has begun. Muyung calmly gazed at his surroundings. Ka, wh what is heck is that? The fire eagles fearless entered the temple and started their attack. Only five people were able to react quickly to the situation and grabbed a weapon. Arg. A big, unarmed man standing at the front was the first to be eaten. He died as soon as a fire eagle stabbed him through his throat with its beak. Afterwards three fire eagles sat down and started to feast on the man's carcass. S save me, please. It was total madness. Hell had arisen. It could be said that dying here could even be a blessing. Mu Young was cool-headed. If they couldn't handle this sort of situation, once they are out in the underworld, they would meet even more terrifying ends. If he was to save them with half-baked sympathy, it wouldn't last long. If he wasn't going to take care of them until the end, it was better to not start in the first place. Also, with the body he returned to, he was unable to eliminate all 100 of the fire eagles. The fire eagles aren't capable of doing two things at once. Especially if they are eating, they do not pay attention to their surroundings. To defeat the swarm of fire eagles, a few people had to be sacrificed. Although he returned to the past, he still kept the accumulated experiences he gained in the past 40 years. And though his body was not like before, he expected that he will adjust to it quickly. Even though these birds will return once they are full. If that was to happen, he wouldn't be able to get any reward. Swish. He cut the head of the oncoming fire eagle. Screech. Will the eagles rage once they see their companion die? Of course not. Surprisingly a few eagles flew down to feast on the guts of their dead comrade. These bastards would even revert to cannibalism to sate their hunger. It was because at this moment, they were at their hungriest. For this reason, it wasn't hard to fight against the eagles. If he was alone, it would have been difficult, but there was prey all around him. While the eagles are preoccupied with eating, he had to take them down one by one. Hey, that guy is fighting. Everyone, lift your weapons and fight. The, the throat. Aim for the throat. Everyone was in a panic. Fortunately, it seemed like there was someone who was thinking straight. After observing Mu Young's actions, the person started to lead the others. The five people who picked out weapons from the wall earlier, led others to also pick their weapons. But there were also a few who didn't move. Like the voice said, if there are only 30 people left, the birds will return. I, I. I can't do it. I won't. They were the ones that were too frightened to act. But did they know that if they don't hold a weapon, they become the main targets of the fire eagles? If I was given the choice, would I have lived a different life? Muyung thought that all the time. He drew a different image of himself, not as a member of the forest of death. A dream that could never be achieved. But by some miracle, he was brought back to the past and was given a choice. At least this time I won't be used by others. I am tired of doing other people's bidding. Slash. The scimitar was smeared with blood. Chapter 2. Blue Temple, 2. Almost a hundred fire eagles were spread across the floor. What the fuck is this? Fuck, fuck, fuck. Wawa, mommy. Cries and curses existed everywhere. 
All of the Fire Eagle had been killed, but so many humans had also died in the process. Including Mu Young, 51 people had arrived at the temple. However, only 38 people were currently alive. 13 had died from fighting the Fire Eagles. Quite a few survived. Although he couldn't remember the exact number, back then, not nearly as this many people survived. At most half. It's definitely different from the past. Of course, it was mostly because Mu Young alone was able to clear about half of the number of Fire Eagle. Following the laws of Solomon, to the survivors, I give you the status viewer. Dot. A watch with a strange shape appeared on their left hands. There was only a pentagram on the face of the watch which didn't show the time. The status viewer shows the status of the person as well as their activity log. Every time you turn it on, it gets updated, and all its record gets permanently saved. Extorting someone else's watch and seeing their record is possible so make sure you don't lose your watch. Status viewers are very important. If it's not a person you completely trust, you should never show them your watch. If you lose it, you can steal someone else's and overwrite it, but then you will lose your entire history you saved up. Therefore, if you can, it's best for you to not lose it. Mu Young remembered looking at the watch of the people he had killed. For some odd reason, his only hobby was collecting these watches. Thanks to this, he had more information than anyone else. He even assassinated people who were thought to be impenetrable. As he turned the small bump on the side of the device, a hologram only viewable to the user appeared. Abilities. Skills. History. Other. He first looked at the abilities. And then, the hologram changed to show something else. Continuous victory effect, none. Class effect, none. Strength 11, 10 plus 1, agility 13. Stamina 9 Intelligence 9 Wisdom 8. Special Note, None. As he was had equipped the Scimitar of Strength, his strength increased by 1. If it wasn't for the Scimitar, his strength would have only been 10. These stats were incomparable to the ones he had in the past. But he didn't care. If he could just think over his past, he knew he could get stronger faster than anyone else. Next, announcing the result of the hunt. The best hunter, Mu Young, 47 Fire Eagles. Prize equals water producing magical item, food supply for 5 days, unknown item, known only by the owner. Second best hunter, Kim Taehwan, 6 fire eagles. Prize equals rank E plus weapon, options available, food supply for 4 days. Third best hunter, Oh Ji Young, 4 fire eagles. Prize equals rank E weapon, options available, food supply for 3 days. Does the system only show the name I remember? Mu Young was the name appointed to him during the days he was a trainee at the Forest of Death. He remembered using a totally different name when he was a university student in the past. As a side effect from the continuous brainwashing and drugs, he had forgotten a lot of important information. Being Mu Young is enough. He shook his head slightly. The choices he would make in the future were more important. What he had to do, what he was going to achieve. The name was a minor part. A little later, three items appeared above his hand. Water-producing magical item, food supply for five days, and the extra reward paranormal has been received. On your history, first day, best hunter had been recorded. These magical items were talismans that held different kinds of materials and mysterious skills. Unlocking the seal of Lemajidan didn't only release the 72 demons. The laws overruling this world changed and different types of magical items were created everywhere. This was arranged by Solomon. The hope of humanity forcefully created to give strength to those who fight against the 72 demons. Not bad for the first earnings. The water-producing magical item will surely be helpful from now on. Not just in the Blue Temple, but in the underworld, it was always hard to find fresh water. Mu Young concentrated on the yellow talisman he had and information relating to the object appeared. Magical item information. Name, water producing magical item. Rank, D. Classification, continuous use. Effect, able to produce 10 L of water every day. Even though there is a 10 L limit, it was still a lot for him to drink by himself. All the items are ranked from EX, S, A, B, C, D, E. F, in order from the best to the worst. If an item is deranked, then it is one of the best items you can get in the beginning. Not to mention it was a magical item. The food supply for five days appeared in a small box. Inside there was a bread under a preservation spell. Mu Young gazed at his bonus item. Paranormal. An accessory with a spell. Were you able to get something like this at Blue Temple before? Paranormal was a red ring. Information about the accessory. Name. Paranormal. Rank. D. Classification. A keepable type. Durability, max 5 times, 5 fifths. Effect, for 10 minutes, user can choose to increase all their ability plus 2, use healing wave, or fire bolt. As he looked at the information, he nodded his head. Depending on when he uses it, it could be quite the game changer. In a dangerous situation, the item could be used as the deciding blow. The fact that it was much harder to find decent accessories than weapons made paranormal an amazing treasure for now. As he wore the accessory on his left hand, people came up to him. Excuse me. Two women and five men. From the group, the man who was stand in front of them spoke. A group has already been made. It was an action worth applauding. 
The man instinctively knew they had to stick together to live and wanted him to join them. You seemed quite calm. Are you experienced? What if I am? Of course. Ah, uh, my name is Kim Taehwan. And your name is? Kim Taehwan. I knew I saw him somewhere. He was second in the previous ranking. Looking at the sharp longsword he was holding, he probably chose it as a reward this round. Are you referring to me? Yes, as there is no one in front of me besides you. Kim Taehwan impudently laughed. But, Mu Young didn't feel like getting involved with them. So he replied briefly. Yong Sa, meaning soldier in Korean. Taehwan's expression stiffened. Taehwan would probably think that he was being played around with. Even though he wasn't going to treat him seriously, he thought about the word continuously before telling him. In the past, Mu Young killed a countless number of people. From the people that he killed, there were soldiers and people who could have been recognized as heroes. For example, the dragon lord who tamed a magical dragon and queen of frost wind, Kim Hanna, and so forth. If those people were to be alive today, the humanity would not have been destroyed that easily. They should still be alive. They were few of the toughest opponents I had to assassinate. Especially for the dragon lord, it took him a whopping three years. The magical dragon that was by his side was one of the strongest monsters in the underworld, with great perception. Even the dragon lord himself was one of the top ten human beings living in the underworld. Therefore, even three years is considered quite short against someone like him. Anyhow, he will not deny the things he has done in the past, but he now has the chance to redo what he has done. Since he now has the chance, Mu Young decided to live a more meaningful life this time. Yong Sa. Then what is your last name? Li Yong Sa? Park Yong Sa? Is he saying that to joke with me? Mu Young turned away. My last name is Yong. First name is Sa. Anyone who sees them would know that he was ignoring him. Ha ha. You're funny. However, Taehwan laughed. Mu Young was now admiring him in his own way. This dude. He will survive quite a while. Even in this situation he decided to laugh. When he thought about it, the Blue Temple in the past might have had someone like him. However, Mu Young didn't really care. Even from the beginning, he wasn't someone who could socialize well with others. Nor did he ever have the time. Depending on how one uses their time in Blue Temple, it will drastically change their starting point outside of the Blue Temple. Only the people who use their time wisely will be able to survive the underworld. Also, it is the only way to dodge the hands of the Forest of Death. Unlike the past, he refuses to be kidnapped helplessly. As Mu Young started to walk away cold-heartedly, the other people around Taehwan Kim started to get enraged. Hey, Young Sa? Wow, Mr. Kim, just leave someone like him alone. Yeah, he has no basics. As Taehwan Kim decided to follow him, the other members of the group tried to stop him. It seemed that these people have formed a group with Taehwan as the core and had already agreed on a few things. And as they were pushed to their limit, there had to be someone who they could place their hatred on. As Mu Young heard their fuss, he just shook his head. It's not like grouping up will be best for them. If you can't trust each other, it's best not to group up. In reality, didn't most of the nine great guilds and the five great clans get destroyed because their internal conflicts? They were unable to trust each other and later they were unable to trust themselves. If this was the case, then how can a group of people trust each other when they just met each other? As time passes, the intensity of trials would only get stronger and within these people, there will be some who had hit rock bottom. He would rather act alone than to see them in that state. First, I need to build my body. The body that he has right now was very shabby. With this body, he couldn't achieve anything. The Mu Young in the past had seen a great number of other people's histories to know the way of attaining important items only available at the Blue Temple. Secret Classes Normal people are only able to achieve one class. However, Mu Young was able to get four different classes with different tendencies. The leader of the Forest of Death called it, Universal Type Characteristics. This allowed him to act freely in any situation. In the past, through the leader's policy, he had attained the classes of Warrior, Mage, Ranger, and Priest. Now, if he was to learn four different secret classes, he would be an expert with no apparent weaknesses. Secret classes were so powerful and dangerous that Solomon decided to hide their existence. And one of the classes was available in the Blue Temple. If I remember correctly, it was the Necromancer class. There was a person who threatened others using an army of undead. The lunatic necromancer, Kim gil -young. By himself, he killed thousands of people, and made the dead join his force and developed even greater strength. When fighting a large group of people, it was a class with an absolute advantage. Even so, Mu Young slit his throat. During a war, he used his extreme hiding abilities to creep up to him and cut his throat. Drunk on blood, it was his fault not being cautious. Afterwards, Mu Young remembered taking his watch to look at his history. First, I need to get the necromancer class. Instead of allowing Gil Young Kim to get necromancer class, it was much better to keep it for himself. Chapter 3, Blue Temple, End. Thud. Thud. Mu Young kept striking the scarecrows located outside the Blue Temple. Every day, monsters would try to raid the temple, but for the past three days, starting from the first day, he never forgot to strike the scarecrow. Doesn't that guy get tired? There are all kinds of weirdos in the world. 
All the people around him were amazed at how hardworking he was, but no one stepped out to train with him. They were already exhausted after fighting off a monster raid every day. No one was willing to overwork themselves with all that training. To them, it seemed foolish for Mu Young to push himself so hard. It was also incredible that he kept getting the best hunter title, but since he never mingled with anyone, there was no one to compliment him for it. If anything, there were people who were revolted by the fact he wouldn't share his rations or water with anyone. For diligently hitting the scarecrow, strength has gone up by one. But Mu Young didn't care about that. Before befriending others, to him, it was more important to prioritize getting stronger. And in his own way, he felt confident in his decision. I can raise my strength and stamina up to a maximum of 20 using these scarecrows. Everyone knew about this in the underworld, but it was impossible for these newly summoned people to know it. Knowledge is power. And at this moment, Mu Young has the most knowledge out of all the people here. He never thought about sharing this knowledge. For people who needed to be spoon-fed information, there was no way they would survive in the underworld anyways. To survive, one had to have quick wits, decisiveness and most importantly, have perseverance. Why the hell is he doing that? Let him be, let him be. There's not much to eat anyways. The people next to Mu Young copying his actions, but gave up quickly. Thud. Thud. He raised his attack speed. They would have had to hit the scarecrow at least 10,000 times to see results. It was a battle with himself, but to him, this was nothing. For every 100 recruits, only one or two survived the forest of death's training and he survived. I need my strength and stamina to be at least 20 to attempt it. A secret class is obtained once you overcome the impossible. Even in the past, there were no more than 100 people with a secret class. But they all had logic-defying strength. Of course, there was an equivalent amount of risk involved, but it was definitely worth the risk. And to achieve the secret class, necromancer, it required you to first train your body to a certain level. Mu Young looked over. He saw the tall cliffs that surrounded the Blue Temple. Up on those unending cliffs somewhere, there is a nest. To become a necromancer, he would have to climb the cliffs, while fighting off hordes of monsters, and kill the five gatekeepers. As of now, that goal was still far off. Once one leaves the temple, fighting orcs and gnolls are common, but if you are unlucky, you might meet the giant Leo, a lion-type predator. So killing the five gatekeepers is too difficult for beginners. Besides strength and stamina, I also need to a weapon. After defeating the raid of monsters every day, they would receive rewards dependent on their performance. The reward for killing the boss monster that comes every 10 days was enough to offset the previous day's rewards. It meant that bosses were that much stronger, but he wanted to move out after he had at least killed the first boss. Excuse me. Just then, two women approached Mu Young. Although they looked a bit messy, they had a much better appearance than the rest. They were two university students with heavy makeup on. The one with long straight hair and who was adorably clenching her fist, spoke. He hit the scarecrow a bit more softly. Is there any meaning to hitting them? Thud. Thud. But Mu Young only continued with his actions. He hit concisely with no unnecessary movements. The scarecrow shook dangerously. Aren't you going to answer me? The girl stepped right next to the scarecrow. She lowered her gaze with a pitiful expression. On top of that, her white blouse exposed her bare shoulders. That scene would enchant most men. She had that level of beauty and in reality, a few of the surrounding men gave Mu Young jealous stares. Fuck off. But that wouldn't work on Mu Young. To Mu Young, who passed the harsh training of the forest of death, that level of seduction was like a child acting cute. That wasn't all. One of the things people had to be most cautious of in the underworld were beauties. Listening to Mu Young's reply, the girl staggered as if her pride was hurt. Then she lowered her head and knit her brows. Crazy bastard. Is he an eunuch or what? Kim Soyoung was not used to this sort of treatment as there weren't many men who would just abruptly tell her to fuck off. She was one of the those commonly known idols of her school. Men would line up just to have a chance to hold her hand. She knew she was pretty and because she thought she had such worth, she had extremely high standards for men. She didn't even consider doctors, lawyers or attorneys as much. If it wasn't for being summoned here, she would have been enjoying a drive in a sports car after an extravagant dinner. He should be thanking her while shedding tears for talking to him, but he dares to tell her to fuck off just because you know how to fight a bit. The reason why she approached him was because he seemed like a lone wolf. Although she said he could only fight a bit, she knew it was quite the opposite. During the past three days, they were constantly subject to life-threatening situations. They knew that there were more monsters waiting for them outside the temple. To be physically strong was the biggest asset in this situation. Even more so, the man in front of her resembled a wolf that would tear apart all the monsters he faced. He didn't approach others and because of his special aura, no one could approach him. She thought if it was this man, she would allow him to be with her for a while. But from the start, her plan was trampled by him. She refused to give up. She lifted her head and straightened her clothes. She revealed her enchanting smile and said, Aren't your words a bit too harsh? Even I would be a bit hurt. Mu Young stopped for a moment. His expressionless gaze fell upon her. She took that as a signal and told him, I've seen your performance for the past few days. People talk about Appa, 1, oh, 
I can call you Oppa right? Anyways, people talk about Oppa lot. She stealthily came closer and slightly brushed her hand against his. There was no man who could resist this kind of physical contact. When would you have ever held hands with someone as pretty as me? Mu Young's appearance was normal, a very average type of guy. If it was an ordinary day, she would never meet someone with his appearance no matter what qualifications he had. She believed that he only said those harsh words because he didn't know how to act in front of a beauty like her. He's good at fighting and was originally living in the temple, but he is a bit greedy. Ah, but don't worry about it Appa. They are all cowards who can't say it to your face. Also because you kill so many monsters, isn't it natural you receive the most rewards? Eye contact. She tried to laugh as naturally as she could while gazing at his eyes. It could be said that that was the finishing move, but as soon as she looked at Mu Young's eyes, she felt her body tremble slightly. For human eyes to be like that. There was not a hint of emotion in his eyes. His eyes didn't waver like other men would when they looked at beautiful women. His eyes were endlessly abyss. It was hard to explain the terrifying sight. Finally, Mu Young opened his mouth. Are you done talking? Yes? Ah, uh, why yes, I am. Then fuck off. What, did you say? Punch. Mu Young shattered the scarecrow's face. Her intentions were obvious and he didn't have to the time to listen to her. There was less than a month left. Once the month was up, the gate to the underworld will open. And then, big guilds like the Forest of Death and the Five Great Clans will be waiting for them. If he doesn't want to be pushed around by them, he had to increase his strength even by a tiny bit. If you try this again, I'll make your face the same as the scarecrow, he quietly whispered into her ear. He said he would become a soldier, but that didn't mean he would try to save everyone. If anyone stands in his way, he won't hesitate to get rid of them. I am not a good man. Maybe an evil one. Because he had gone too far down the road, he could never be a good man. Not that he wanted to become one. Hiccup. Soyoung hiccuped. That's right. He was like the embodiment of a wolf. Rough and untamable. Hiccup. Hiccup. The strength in her legs slowly weakened. Mu Young's stare was so terrifying she couldn't move. So Soyoung, are you okay? Eventually, the girl who came with her dragged her away by her wrist. He turned his head away after looking at Soyoung being dragged across the ground. Thud. Thud. He started to hit the scarecrow once again. If I get a high ranking during the boss raid, I might get a pretty good reward. The bosses that comes every 10 days are difficult. No matter how well they fight, a few will inevitably die. But if he is able to gain an overwhelming victory over the boss, he might get a weapon of rank C or higher. A C rank is sufficient. To defeat the monsters while climbing the cliff, a rank C weapon was more than enough. As he had the experience to fill the gap of having a lesser weapon. Chapter 4, Hidden Peace, 1. Five days have passed. At this point, there were only 32 survivors left. After 13 deaths on the first day, 1 to 2 people died every day thereafter. Everyone had become desperate after they learned that they will die if they didn't fight. But not everyone was useful. Let's reduce our numbers. Oh Ji Young. He, who was consistently ranked third the past few days, spoke up. He was a man in his mid-late twenties with a shaved head and tattoos all over his body. His appearance made others feel threatened. There were a few people around him. What do you mean by numbers? Among them, a man asked while gulping down his saliva. Ji Young crossed his arms and said, There's not enough food, but there are too many useless bastards. Food was only given to the top three hunters. Even though it was just crumbly bread under preservation magic, it was the most important supply in this place. Up until now, Taehwan and Ji Young evenly distributed the bread, but there was a limit to that. The already small supply of food was distributed among 30 people. Each person was pretty much living off of half a loaf of bread each day. A few people in the temple flinched. After someone died in agony eating grilled monster meat, no one had put their hands on the monster carcasses. Bread was their sole salvation, but if Ji Young cuts their supply, many people will have no option but to starve. In this world, starvation leads to death. Ji Young smiled as he said, so let's have the useless bums fight each other or whatever and reduce the numbers. Oh Ji Young. Taehwan approached him. Ji Young snorted at him. Don't try to be a hypocrite. Didn't we do enough for them already? Our goal is to keep everyone alive. That's why you thick bastard. Let's get rid of the useless ones. You see that guy with the kid? What can he do when he has no arms? It'll be good if he could at least serve as a meat shield. Ji Young. Taewon raised his voice. There was no choice. It was only a hard decision to make the first time, but afterwards, it would only get easier. If they start to get rid of the useless people, then there will only be a minority left at the end. Taewon was on guard. If their conscience died and only the self-centered people lived, the surviving group will eventually collapse. Ji Young picked his ears. Bitch, your voice is fucking loud. Even though you're okay with it, I'm pretty sure most aren't happy with the current arrangement. Ji Young looked away from Taehwan and gazed at the people around them. Everyone looked quite malnourished as their cheeks started to cave in. There was a clear distinction between the useful and the useless. The people who were of some use started to glare at the ones who weren't as useful. It wasn't just one or two days, it seemed like the dissatisfaction piled up during the past few days. 
they just couldn't voice their complaints since the food was only distributed to the top three hunters. It wasn't like Taehwan was unaware of the situation. We have to find a solution. If we start thinking about throwing others away, how are we different from the monsters? We are humans with reason. We need to help each other out. Ha, huh, it's not like you're going to drop food when you die. Whatever, if you really want to take care of everyone, do it yourself. From now on, I am going to take care of myself. Ji Young shrugged his shoulders. The food he distributed the past five days was still a considerable amount. There was no reason for him to stick his neck out for others when it wasn't his responsibility. But in Taehwan's position, this wasn't pleasant news. Ji Young, if you stop, many people are going to starve. So what? It's hard for me to live too. Or, Ji Young brought out a loaf of bread and quickly munched on it while looking at the crowd. Let's have a bartering system. I am not that cold-hearted, you know. If you give me a reasonable payment, I will trade it for bread. Or become someone useful to me. Yeah, I think I can feed up to six people. The reason why he decided on a specific number was simple. He wanted to make his own faction. In a place like this, power was the law. There was strength and unity. Although, they were unified, up until now, it was just a public declaration. It didn't have the same influence as a faction. So he was waiting for this moment. Mu Young was spectating the whole situation from afar. Oh Ji Young. He's quite the sly fellow. He deliberately waited five days. If he was to make this announcement when everyone was starving, there were definitely people who would cling on to him. To be part of the six people, he knew they would do all sorts of things to flatter him. On the other hand, the leftover faction lead by Taehwan wouldn't have the same unity. Taehwan tried to accept everyone. It didn't matter if they had any capabilities. Of course, the dissatisfaction among the capable will definitely rise and they will start to side with Ji Young's faction which centered is on power. Like how Ji Young deliberately waited five days before making a statement like this, he was someone who was able to calmly analyze his surroundings and act at the right moment. While goading Taehwan, it seemed like he was well-versed in human psychology. Ji Young was waiting with a completely relaxed attitude. How about me? Soon after, someone raised their hand. Kim Soyoung. After getting embarrassed by Mu Young, she decided that this time she would try and join Ji Young. You? What can you do? Just because you're a bit pretty, you think I'm going to give you my hard-earned food? She was flustered as she thought that he would definitely accept her. But she calmed down quickly and accentuated her chest. I can do various things for you. Anything you can imagine. Anything, you say. Ji Young skimmed over her body. It felt like a snake was slithering around her body, but she endured it. For the past five days, she took various of steps to survive. First, she searched for the person who she thought would survive the longest. That was the reason why she approached Mu Young in the first place. But it ended as a failure and her next target became Ji Young. Although he was a cold-hearted good-for-nothing, his skills were quite top-notch. Taehwan seemed a bit muddled, so it didn't seem like he would last very long. If I make this man a king, then I can be the queen. So she decided to make Ji Young a king. Once she decided on someone, that person had to become the very best is what Soyoung thought. Ji Young smacked his lips lasciviously. Sure. I will make an exception for you, but for the rest, I will have strict requirements. Ah, you must be hungry, have some food while you wait. Thanks. As soon as Soyoung stood behind Ji Young, he handed her a loaf of bread. She chomped on the bread and ate it as if it was the most delicious food in the world. She knew she would lose some face, but she also knew that if she did this, it would tempt more people to join. Many people gulped down their saliva while they watched her eat. Me, me, will you accept me? If you need to do something that requires strength, you'll need someone like me. Instead of a guy like him, I'm a much better choice. The responses came down like hail. Like a flood, a crowd of people went over to Ji Young's side. Kim Taehwan and Oh Ji Young. There was a clear distinction between the people who joined each side. Ji Young, it's not good to split into two groups. As Taehwan spoke with a firm voice, Ji Young just clicked his tongue. Just worry about your future, okay? There was no way for him to stop the momentum. Ji Young started to recruit members and the chosen held their heads up high as if they had been chosen to become nobles. Ranks were being established. Taehwan's save everyone policy didn't appeal to many. More and more people began to think that it would be better to get rid of the useless ones. A breakthrough. That's what he needed. He looked at Mu Young. Mu Young never lost his first place position in the rankings. He had the most food, yet whenever Taehwan asked him for help, he was ignored. However, it wasn't like they could forcefully take it. Maybe they could if everyone grouped together and fought against him. But even that was doubtful. He was the embodiment of a wolf. But now, Taehwan had no other choice. If he let this go, Ji Young will definitely take the lead. Did Mu Young understand Taehwan's look? Mu Young suddenly moved towards the center of the stage. At the same time, the commotion died down and everyone's gaze fell on him. It was because he had never stepped out like this before. After gaining everyone's attention, he spoke, I am going to explore the outskirts of the temple. All volunteers will receive two loaves of bread and clean water every day. He's insane. That was the one thought in everyone's mind. Why would all these people try to stay in this small temple? Because if they went even a little bit outside the temple, they would be overwhelmed with monsters. 
and he was going to explore that place? It didn't make the situation better now that he was handing out bread and water. Going out there would be no different than suicide. They couldn't decipher any other meaning besides going out to die. But, Myung continued to wait arrogantly. It was like it didn't matter if anyone joined him or not. No one would volunteer, that's what most people thought. Mr., can't it be three loaves of bread? For me and my father. The first to appear was a little girl. She looked like she was nine years old. She still had a lot of baby fat on her. On the other hand, her father was an armless cripple. He had lost both his arms during the monster attack on the second day. Death seemed certain for them as soon as they leave the temple. They wouldn't be of any help either. It would be considered good if they didn't hold him back. Welcome. But Mu Young's next words shattered everyone's expectations. Chapter 5, Hidden Peace, 2. If you left them alone, they were going to die anyways. It made no sense in accepting those two. However, Mu Young interpreted the situation differently. Quite fierce. The young girl knew by instinct that following Mu Young was her only way to survive. She had quick wits and was a fast decision maker. Age was not a problem. No one here could match up to his standards anyways. If that's the case, it would be better to choose someone fast-witted. Anyone else? What do you mean by explore the surroundings? A man who didn't belong to either side asked. Mu Young calmly replied, For three to four hours every day, you will explore the surroundings and gather anything essential. You will hunt if necessary. What they could earn at the temple was extremely limited. To earn something, you must be willing to accept the risks that follow. The more risks you take, the more profits you could gain. There was nothing you can get for free, at least in the underworld. I will volunteer as well. Surprisingly, Taewon made his move. It was quite unexpected as Mu Young thought he would continue his rivalry with Ju Young. Are you sure? We're not going out to play, he replied sarcastically. To him, seeing the two sides fighting each other was no different than bantering children. Taehwan nodded his head. I know it's a job with my life on the line. I also thought it was about time to explore the surrounding areas. It's not safe to continue to stay in this place we know nothing about. He thought of others before himself before he made his decision. His kind normally didn't last long. Nosy people like Taehwan were usually the first to die. But if he survives, he will grow to become a great influence. The Dragon Lord was like that. Everyone acknowledged that he had the talent of a real soldier. If he didn't die by Mu Young's hands, he would have made a great difference. However, it was very rare to find someone like the Dragon Lord. Even if they did survive, in the abyss like the underworld, 99% of them will eventually have a changed personality. Mu Young was skeptical that Taehwan would survive. Things that can be obtained outside the temple. The reason why Mu Young was gathering people was simple. The rewards he could obtain outside were greater than what he could earn here. Moving luggage, searching and even sleeping, these are better done in a group than by himself. Also, it was better to hunt for monsters outside than killing them during the raids. Primarily, people raise their skills better when they strive for it. By fighting monsters at the temple, their skills will rise quickly in the beginning, but it will slowly stagnate. If you didn't constantly improve your abilities, you wouldn't be able to survive the harsh realities of the underworld. It was a struggle to stay alive, but for now, it was more important to find the magical items hidden outside the temple. A magical item with movement abilities and a storage-type talisman, Hellhound's dagger, Despair Scout's gloves, and the Mask of Arrogance. I'll find as many as I can. Although Myung lost many important things by going back to the past, he was able to keep his knowledge and experience. After killing each of his thousands of targets, he would always read and memorize their history. There were many objects to find outside the temple. It was time to get started. Asterisk. In total, five people volunteered. Mu Young gave each of them a torch. The ends of the torches were smeared with oil. The oil was made by boiling the carcasses of the monsters. Never lose the torches and the oil can, unless you want to end up as monster fodder. Unlike the modern world, with bright neon lights everywhere to brighten up even the darkest nights, here, they could only rely on the torches to see. Most monsters fear fire. At the very least, going around with a torch meant that they would be less likely to be ambushed. A man, who received a torch, asked, aren't we just looking around for three to four hours? It was currently early morning. If they were to explore for three to four hours, the sun will be at its highest. It seemed like he felt uncomfortable with the preparations for the night. But Mu Young said with a firm voice, we don't know what kind of situation we will come across. Also, every midnight, the surrounding topography will change and if we don't have the torches then, we won't be able to find our way out. What do, you mean our surroundings change? This time, it was Taehwan who asked. Of course, they didn't know. Mu Young decided to use their misunderstanding to his advantage. Like you all thought, I am someone who has been living here for a while. So that rumor was true. When everyone was confused, Mu Young acted as if he knew what was going to happen. This is why people assumed that he arrived here before them and had lived at the temple for a while. He told them, outside the temple is wilderness itself. We won't have the time to help those who fall behind. And then, as if he was looking to see their resolve, he examined each of them. He especially carefully examined the young girl, Bae Susie, and her crippled father for a long time. 
having quick wits was more helpful than others with ambiguous skills, but there was the question of them being able to keep up in the harsh conditions. As she obviously knew what he meant, Susie gritted her teeth and said, I'll do my best. So I won't be a burden to anyone. After all, there were no other options for her if she wanted to survive. If she was to lose the chance at being by Mu Young's side, there wouldn't be anyone else who would take care of the father-daughter pair. She made up her mind that even if she was to die, she wanted to at least attempt to live. She has quite the backbone for her age. It seemed like she always had a sense of responsibility. Along with her fast wits and decisive decisions, it was surprising to see her adapt so fast for her age. That's why it was a little unfortunate. If she was a bit older, with a little help, she would have been able to rise to considerable heights. However the underworld was not a place that a young girl could easily survive on her own. Even I don't have the time to take care of others. It was a bit unfortunate, but that was it. After examining each and every one of them, he turned his back. If you don't want to die, don't argue with my orders. Don't get curious. Follow me unconditionally. Understand? Everyone solemnly nodded their heads. There was nothing more important than words from an expert. Especially after seeing what Mu Young was capable of, at least in the survival aspect, he was a pro. Then let's head out. After preparing their weapons and packing some tools, the torch, and the oil can, they started to move. Asterisk. Crunch. Mu Young stomped on a huge ant that was targeting his feet. As the fist-sized ant exploded, its juices flew everywhere. Dark red fighter ant. It was a big ant that produced neurotoxins. If someone was to get bitten, the bite will swell up to multiple times its size and the area would become paralyzed. Crush everyone you see. He gave out a warning. Although they weren't life-threatening, if they couldn't move, they would eventually die. Gulp. Six people, including Mu Young, cautiously stepped into the forest. They were constantly on high alert and paid sharp attention to their surroundings. They are already like that. It was good that they were alert, but if they tried to keep it up for hours, they would be mentally and physically exhausted. Even if Mu Young told them that, they wouldn't listen. It was because this place was a total mystery to them. It was faster for them to learn from their experiences. Mister, there's an item here. Susie brought a magical item to him. She found it after crushing a few dark red fighter ants. Paralysis-inducing magical item. It contained the neurotoxin produced by the dark red fighter ants. In a slightly more refined form, Mu Young grabbed the magical item with one hand and told everyone, after killing monsters outside the temple, there will occasionally be items like these. For those that wish to use the item can do so by holding the item with their hands. He brought out the water-producing magical item and once he held it in his other hand, water began to slowly trickle out. This is water, but the other one contains neurotoxins. It could affect your body, so be careful when handling it. Afterwards, Mu Young handed the magical item back to Susie. Susie tilted her head slightly. I can keep it? Of course. You're the one who found it, therefore it's yours. He drew a clear line. Everyone had to be responsible for their own items that they find. After walking for a bit, Mu Young pointed towards a tree. If you look carefully, you will find trees with exceptionally green and round leaves. All the things growing from this tree are beneficial. However, you must look carefully as there are similar looking trees that are poisonous. He took a couple of the mushrooms growing on the tree and placed it in his storage bag. It was a white moss-like mushroom that helped with blood circulation. Taehwan spoke. Can we grab them? Store as much as you can. It was a rare tree found in this forest known as the sacred tree. We were lucky. It was uncertain if they will see this tree again. They had to take as many as they could while they had the chance. Look dad, it's a mushroom. I think it will be delicious if we grill it. I'll cook it into something tasty for you. Susie excitedly stored lots of mushrooms in her bag. Footsteps. As others hurried to grab the mushrooms, Mu Young had already finished gathering and looked for any traces around the tree with his hands. He then found a scratch made by an animal with three claws. It must be the territory of the three-clawed shrewmouse. The topography changes every midnight. If they had simply remembered the places they have been, they would be screwed. So it was a must to check whose territory they were in. Also, because the three-clawed shrewmice moved in groups, they were quite hard to deal with. Even though they were only about knee-high, they had sharp teeth and were very fast. If I remember correctly, there should be a high-grade storage-type magical item in their territory. Storage-type magical items were very important. Depending on their grade, the amount of items one could store varied. If people didn't store their belongings in a storage-type magical item, they could easily be targeted by others. Of course, the shrew mice didn't just live in a single territory. They lived in a few different areas so he couldn't be sure if he would find it here, but it was still worth a try. This might be a bit annoying. Mu Young knitted his brow after seeing all the traces nearby. By the looks of it, it seemed like there weren't just a few tens, or a few hundreds even. He estimated that there were at least 3,000 of these shrew mice living in this territory. It was best to quickly accomplish his goals and leave. If you're all done gathering, we should start moving. Mu Young told them to hurry up. Asterisk. Ah. Get the fuck away. Fuck off. Two men who fell behind were swinging their swords and screaming out loud. A brief moment of inattentiveness led them to be surrounded by shrew mice. TSK. 
Mo Young clicked his tongue. If it was him in the past, he would have noticed these things in an instant. Unfortunately, it was impossible in his current state. Maybe, it was for the best. He couldn't avoid it. Therefore, it was better to use it as an advantage. Especially when some stats increase more rapidly in these type of situations. If he looked at it simply as a way to temper his body, it was actually more beneficial. Mo Young raised his scimitar. Bring it on. He shouted loudly to get their attention. It was a dangerous move, but he thought that if he fought with all he had, it wasn't impossible to win. Screech. Screech. One of the shrew mice fell down from above. While falling, the mice raised its claws in attempt to cut Myung's neck. Slash. Starting by leaving an air hole in the belly of the mouse, Myung started to kill mercilessly. A number a bit less than 150. He had to take out one mouse per strike. Myung started to collect all the magical items that poured out as he killed the shrew mice one by one. Magical item information. Name, shrew mouse's strike. Rank, F. Classification, single use. Effect, for one time only, you can have the same effect as a shrew mouse's scratch. It was just an F rank. It was the lowest rank with barely any effect. On average, one dropped for every two shrew mice he killed. The reason why he made an effort to even collect these magical items while killing the shrew mouse was because they stacked up. If you look at the item individually, they are useless, however, when you collect five, the story changes. You have collected five shrew mouse's strike. Dot. The five shrew mouse's strike, F, has now evolved to shrew mouse's great strike, E. Dot. The name changed as well as their rank. Spell enchantment. In the underworld, people referred it as spell enchantment. By collecting five of the same magical item, it allowed the item to evolve into an item with a much stronger effect, or sometimes an item with much different effect. Not yet. However, it wasn't an item he was pleased with. Screech. He couldn't afford to waste any more time in this situation. His shirt was torn near his belly button by a shrew mouse and his skin showed through. Blood dripped from the red streaks that appeared all over his body. However, he didn't care. Mo Young was used to these life-threatening battles. He pushed himself further. Even though he was able to dodge all their attacks easily, he waited for their attacks and counterattacked them only when they were very close to him. If you endure these dangers, your agility will increase. Agility stats didn't just increase your ability to move faster. It was considered the third eye. The commonly known, sixth sense, was a part of agility. To increase his agility stat, he had to put more pressure on himself in these situations. Creak. Screech. The shrew mouse started to focus on Mo Young and gathered towards him. They recognized that Mo Young was the most dangerous one out of them. Mo Young kicked their carcasses in order to create a makeshift barrier. Being vulnerable all around was the worst. He needed to at least keep a side block to stop them from coming at him on all sides. He slashed his scimitar without even turning around. Gawk. The mouse that tried to bite down with his wide mouth had the scimitar pierced through his neck. Slash. As he pulled out his scimitar, blood scattered everywhere. Mo Young was getting exhausted. However, Mo Young didn't stop. He moved faster and fiercer when more and more shrew mice gathered around him. Even though he was smothered in blood and had plenty of wounds, Mo Young's movements were still the same. His instincts took over the body as he lost half his sense of reason. And so, he was able to kill more than 70 shrew mice. You have collected five shrew mouse's great strike. Dot. The five shrew mouse's great strike, E, has now evolved to shrew mouse's cry, D. Dot. Way wrong. A small sound emitted from the magical item. At the same time, the shrew mouse who heard this sound became sluggish. There we go. The corners of his mouth lifted to form a sly smile. Chapter 6, Hidden Peace, 3. It was as he expected. When the magical item evolved, it became the shrew mouse's cry. Information popped up as he lightly examined the magical item. Name, shrew mouse's cry. Rank, D. Classification, continuous. Effect, inflict surrounding shrew mice with a fear status. Although it could not be used to physically damage their enemies, it was much more useful. Just possessing this magical item would affect the shrew mice near him. Because of the fear status, the shrew mice movements became sluggish. Unlike before, they weren't able to act as a group and were scattered. When the shrew mice flinched, Mo Young started the massacre. Incredible. Taewon was absent-mindedly staring at the scene which was unfolding before his eyes. Out of the members gathered today, Mo Young was the only one who was truly hunting. It was a scene that made others tremble, Mo Young looked like an evil spirit. He seemed like a champion fighting to death. Every unyielding step seemed to thirst for victory. If it wasn't for Mo Young, they would have been annihilated in seconds. I have to get stronger. Overwhelmingly. That is what Taehwan felt as he watched Mo Young fight. If he doesn't get stronger, he would never be able to survive in this place. If he wanted to survive, he had to get stronger. Like the man in front of him, he had to persistently strive to survive. After we clean up, we will move out, said Mo Young after he had massacred all the shrew mice except for the few that had fled. His body was caked with a mixture of his own blood and the blood of the shrew mice. There should be a den nearby. Looking towards the direction the screw mice fled to, it seemed like their destination wasn't far away. His stamina was almost completely used up, but he couldn't stop. 
there was no guarantee that it would still be there tomorrow. We, we aren't going back? There were no casualties on their side, but everyone had some light scratches. They were also extremely exhausted. It was too much to expect them to continue. Swish. Instead of answering, Muyung opened his gathering bag and took out a few leaves. The leaves on the sacred tree could disinfect wounds and had excellent treatment capabilities. After inattentively crushing the leaves into a paste, he rubbed it on his wounds. Not long after, the bleeding stopped. Those that want to leave, leave. If you leave now, you can get back by retracing our steps. Muyung was completely calm. The reason why he dragged all these people out here was simple. Luggage, sleep and for unlikely circumstances. It was also to select the few who would fight with their life on the line. Something like exploring the outskirts of the temple could only be done by those who are desperate. For the boss battle, I need people with at least a bit of experience. Bosses were strong. It was hard for him to overwhelm them alone. The ones that only improved inside the temple weren't of any use. Only those who experienced the outskirts of the temple for a few days would be able to cope with the boss. It was foolish for him to try to force them. That was why he only accepted the people who volunteered. At the same time, the person, who asked the question, became dumbfounded. Even if they tried to return to the temple, if they were attacked by monsters along the way, without Muyung, they would be in danger either way. In fact, they felt that they would be safer with Muyung after watching the previous scene. I will follow you. The first one to speak was Taehwan. Muyung who was examining his wounds next to a tree looked at him. We're not going out to play. I didn't volunteer so I could fool around. Muyung got up. I guess he figured something out. He wasn't simply a meddlesome fellow. On the other hand, Susie held a small dagger in her hand. Looking at the blood stained on the dagger, it seemed like she didn't simply run away when they encountered the shrew mice. She probably wielded her dagger to protect her father. Even so, she was only out of breath, he didn't see any apparent signs of agitation in her. If she just survives. He smacked his lips in anticipation for a second before shaking his head. He then grasped his trembling fist. He couldn't calm his excitement. It was quite different from his past self who was cool-headed in any situation. He didn't even feel this excited after killing 300 assassins and the leader of the Forest of Death. Was it because his body reverted back to its untrained state? As expected, my agility went up. After the fight, his agility went up by one. The more he pushed himself towards the boundary between life and death, the faster his attributes will rise. He looked at the carcasses of the shrew mice around him. The smell of shrew mouse blood was pungent. This was not a good place to stay. Even if it was the territory of the three-clawed shrew mice, this much blood could attract other predators. If, in the unlikely chance, a giant Leo appears, he will have no choice, but to use the others as bait and escape. Crush these herbs and rub them on your wounds. We leave in five minutes. He took out some herbs from his storage bag and distributed a small portion to everyone. Asterisk. After following several leads, they arrived at the Shermice den. It was a huge cave. Clump. The sound of their footsteps echoed out. There was no way to figure out how deep the cave was. Raise your torches and step lightly. I will lead. Taehwan, you bring up the back. Wouldn't it be better if I was at the front? Don't question my orders. Okay. Before they left the temple, Muyung told everyone to follow his orders unconditionally. No matter what, they had to return by midnight. There was no time for him to explain each and every detail. After arranging everyone in a line, he headed into the cave. Squeak. Squeak. Not long after, they were able to hear the cries of the shrew mice. Muyung took out the shrew mouse's cry. The rushing shrew mice slowed down and paced back and forth hesitantly. When he shed the torchlight around him, they were able to see approximately 300 shrew mice scattered around every corner. In any case, he wasn't after the shrew mice, he was after what was behind them. It was wise to pass through the horde of mice while they were still under the fear status. Hook. Gasp. Everyone was frothing at their mouth as they rushed to follow Muyung. He wasn't running at an especially fast pace, but the pressure felt from the surrounding monsters was no joke. Asterisk. They ran for a while. As the pathway slowly expanded, they arrived at an enormous cavern. From the floor to the ceiling, it seemed to be 50 meters tall and there were a multitude of holes on the walls. These are the tunnels the shrew mice used to move around. This was the center where all the tunnels led to. A shrine? Taehwan softly spoke out. His eyes fell on a certain place. At the end of the cavern, there was a shrine. There was a hexagram drawn in the center and statues of a goddess were spread out around it. Although it looked old and rusted, everyone was captivated by its magnificence. A hexagram and statues of a goddess, huh? Muyung looked at the status viewer on his left wrist. There was a pentagram on its face. On the other hand, the symbol drawn in the center of the shrine was a hexagram. It looked like two overlapping triangles. However, Muyung had definitely seen the symbol and the statue before. The Star of David. What? Taehwan tilted his head as he looked towards Muyung. But Muyung's expression was extremely solemn. Why would the Star of David be here? His whole body was shaking. The Star of David. The symbol only appeared in places where the 72 demons were summoned into the underworld after being unsealed from Lemigitan. 
That meant that one of the 72 demons was summoned here and that the shrine was just a consequence of the summoning. And that statue of the goddess is. Gremory. As one of the 72 demons, Gremory held the 56th seat. It was the statue of Gremory. What do I do? Muyung motionlessly stared at the shrine. A place where the Star of David appears. There would be treasures in every place demons were summoned. For example, in the place where the seventh seat, Amon, was summoned, there was a book. The book overflowed with knowledge of all kinds of magic. Magicians who have read the book of Amon gained ten years worth of training from simply reading the book. Those who rigorously studied the book became grand magicians. The owner of the book's class was changed to the secret class archmage and constructed the Tower of Wisdom which allowed him to confidently place in the top ten among humans. Unfortunately, no one could ever find the summoning location of Gremory. He couldn't understand why Gremory was summoned so close the Blue Temple where beginners stayed. Of course, he expected that this place would be as risky as the retrieval the Book of Amon, where more than 500 people lost their lives. There is only one chance. If he fails, that was it. After a month, the gate will open and they will all be sent to the underworld. Once they arrive in the underworld, they will not be able to return to the temple. Also, there was no guarantee that they would be able to come back to the shrine within a month. He was at a crossroad. If they were successful in investigating the shrine, Muyang will have an unbelievable advantage over others. On the other hand, if he failed, he will die. We will go inside. He made his decision. The underworld was a place where nothing could be gained without risk. The rewards were too tempting to just let this opportunity pass by. Asterisk. Rumble. As soon as they stepped into the shrine, the ground below them shook and words appeared in front of their eyes. You have entered the shrine of Gremory. The Star of David starts to shine. Four trials are created. Choose your trial and step in. Only a single person may enter each trial. Four doors appeared at the time. A few words were etched on each door. Chapter 7, Hidden Peace, End. What's this all of a sudden? I think it's telling us to choose a door and enter? Two members of the party discussed as they examined the four doors. You can only choose once. Four doors. Only one person could enter a room and these kinds of trials could not be repeated. Once someone enters a room, the door loses its effect. It was also impossible for one to pass a trial and attempt another. Until this time, no one has ever reached the shrine so the four trials were still intact. Muyung rubbed his chin. The trials are chosen by the specific characteristics of each of the 72 demons. There are always treasures to be found in places where the Star of David appears. However, the methods of attaining these treasures were different. The method would usually depend on the specific characteristics of the demon. The trial to obtain the Book of Amon was a conflict between human malice and selfishness. In the end, there were more than 500 casualties as people ended up killing each other. On the other hand, what about Gremory? Gremory never revealed herself, even until the very end. There were only rumors that she was the only female demon, besides that, there was no other information. Even after the Great Calamity, when the demons were destroying mankind, she never showed herself. There were a few demons who never showed up either, but even among them, Gremory was especially hidden under a veil. He would have no choice, but to make a decision depending on the commonly known characteristics of Gremory. Fidelity, honesty, generosity, and anguish. The first things that come to mind were those four. There were a few characteristics included that didn't match with the typical image of demons, but since he had never seen Gremory, there was nothing he could do. Anyhow, these were the characteristics used to describe Gremory in literature, he had to assume that the trials had something to do with them. Will there be rewards in every trial or after the completion of all four trials or if not those, will the reward be hidden in just a single trial? There was no way to know right now. Somehow, I feel uneasy. I, I'm not going in. Eventually, a man raised a white flag. Whoa. The sounds and the aura emitted from the doors were without a doubt able to stimulate fear in humans. Unless you were quite courageous, you wouldn't even think about opening a door. Since Mu Young was used to these situations, he wasn't very effect, but to those whose lives were the most precious to them, it was an obvious choice. Mister, can I go in there? Susie broke the brief silence. Mu Young looked at her indifferently. How unexpected. She was the youngest and was physically the weakest. She was only able to survive because of her quick wits and decisiveness. Since she was with her father, he didn't expect her to take risks, but she was the first to affirm she would be challenging one of the doors. The door she chose was the difficult, but short path. No one knows what's waiting for you inside the door. Is there a reason why you chose this door? Just. Just? I don't know. I just think that I should enter that door. She bowed her head deeply. It looked like she didn't know how to explain herself. A feeling. Or a trap. It was hard to conclude the reason why only Susie felt that way. But it felt like it wasn't just fluke. It's not a trap. If it was, there was no way they would target Susie. It is natural they would try to separate the most powerful one here, Mu Young. Even if they targeted Susie, it wasn't like she would influence others. He recalled Susie's past actions. As he thought about it, he realized that, although she wouldn't always be doing the best thing to survive, she would at least take the next best action. Like the time she survived the attack of the three-clawed shrew mice. 
The others would try their best to close their distance between Mu Young, but only she would keep her distance and secretly look for a place to avoid the fight. She wasn't taking actions consciously, her instincts and senses took over. Which door do you think I will have to enter? So he asked. No matter how hard he thought, there was no definite answer. On the other hand, Susie acted with confidence. The more surprising fact was her father's reaction. Normally parents would try to stop their children from getting in danger. Yet, as if it was natural, he didn't even try to stop her. Most likely, he knew about her feeling. Um. As she looked back and forth between the four doors and Mu Young, she pointed at a door. This one. Mu Young followed her finger and looked towards the door. The difficult and long path. He shook his head. He then stood in front of the door with the phrase the difficult and long path. All of you enter the door Susie chooses for you. What? Taehwan stared at him in surprise as if inquiring what he meant. It was abnormal to let a child make a choice that could decide their fate. However, Mu Young thought it was the right choice. Although he could only explain it as a feeling, since he had experienced life in the underworld, he able to accept it rather easily. It wasn't like there was no one with foresight in the underworld. Susie, who are the people who will attempt the remaining two doors? Taehwan Appa and that person. She didn't hesitate as she picked out those two people. And so it was decided that Taehwan was to attempt the the long, but easy path while the other man was to attempt the the short and easy path. The then are you telling me to stay out here with this person? The man, who was the first to say that he wouldn't enter the trials, trembled. It was because if he was to stay with the armless cripple, there was no doubt they would die if the monsters attacked. As long as you're in the shrine, the shrew mice won't attack. It wasn't a place where beasts like shrew mice could enter whenever they wanted. And there really were no traces of shrew mice around the shrine. We have to finish as fast as possible. It will be midnight in nine hours. They need at least one hour to return back to the temple. If they aren't able to get out of the trials by then, then the topography of the forest will change. If that happens, it will be much harder to return to the temple. Then, let's see each other on the other side. Mu Young was the first to open the door. The inside of the room was pitch black like a black hole. Slam! As soon as he stepped into the room, the door slammed shut behind him. Asterisk. You have entered the room of anguish. He looked around his surroundings. An endlessly desolate desert. There was absolutely nothing in this place. My bag and magical items disappeared. On top of that, his food and water were gone as well. Thin clothes and a scimitar were all he had. It seemed like the items unnecessary for the trial were removed. If I keep walking, I guess something will pop up. Didn't the name already suggest it would be a difficult and long path? There was no way that as soon as he stepped into the room, he would see his objective. He pushed through the rough sand and walked forward. How long had he been walking? It felt like it had been at least a day. If it was him in the past, he would have been fine after walking continuously without rest for a week. However, in his current state, he was slowly approaching his limit. The lack of food and water was the problem. It was incredibly taxing to walk without rest towards an unknown destination. If it was any normal person, they would have already exhausted their mind and body. However, Mu Young wasn't normal. I can still endure a bit longer. He dragged his feet. After walking like that for a few hours, he came across an oasis. Poison. But the water in the oasis gave off a purple hue. He sniffed the water and dipped his tongue in the water. Spit. He spat out the water immediately and turned his body away. Poison was mixed in. It wasn't a strong poison, but if he was to drink it, it would only momentarily relieve his thirst. It wasn't wise to try to distill the water without the proper tools either. The fourth day. The next thing to appear was a rabbit. He tried to hunt down the rabbit, but the rabbit was always slightly faster than him. South close, yet so far. The distance between the two wouldn't shrink no matter what he tried. So it's like this. After walking for four days, a man who has lost all sense of reason will do whatever it takes to catch the rabbit. But Mu Young realized that it was a trick. He gave up on the rabbit and forced his feet to move. He walked a few more hours like that. Thump. Even the great Mu Young had eventually collapsed on floor. I can't fall here. The mind controls the body. Mu Young was successful in getting his body back up with extreme concentration. Compared to the beginning, his pace was very slow, but he didn't give up and continued to walk. To make up for his loss of energy, his body started to burn away his muscles. This was the most optimal choice his body could make in this situation where there wasn't even water to drink. Not long after, his body was only skin and bones and his hair started falling out quite quickly. It was because he was Mu Young, he was able to stay alive in that state and continue walking. For 40 years, there was not a single moment when he lived his own life. He wanted to live his own life. A life of some significance. However, that was impossible. But then, he was given a chance. There was no way he was going to waste this chance as soon as he got it. Even though there were tens, even hundreds of times he could have given up, he didn't. Along the way, food and water did appear but since he knew that the trial was simply tempting him, he didn't even bother to look at them. As his stamina and mentality reached their limits, someone blocked his path. Why did you destroy the forest of death? Didn't we have a good relationship the past 40 years? Was it a mirage? 
The man in front of him was the owner of the Forest of Death, the chief. Mu Young waved his hands, however the chief didn't disappear. It. Wasn't. My life. Didn't you kill all your companions that have been with you for years? The ones who you laughed and played with? We. Never. Laughed. Mu Young took out the scimitar from his chest. Just wait. This time, I will certainly erase you. Once he returns to the underworld, his first target will be the Forest of Death. It would be difficult to do this right away, but he will strengthen himself and annihilate them as fast as possible. Splash! As he slashed out with his scimitar, the chief's blood sprayed out. Gulp! Mu Young drank the blood dripping off the chief. He bit into the chief's flesh. And then, approximately 300 members of the Forest of Death appeared. Spectres. Their eyes were blank. It looked as if they were asking why he killed them and to take responsibility for their deaths. However, Mu Young looked at the sight and laughed brightly. I don't regret my decision. He used the last of his strength and performed a deadly sword dance. Achievement percentage, 227.7%. You passed the trial brilliantly. Hidden peace, the special benefit for people who have stepped into the impossible to solve area, has been invoked. The special stat fighting aura has manifested. You gained a complete victory in Gremry's anguish. You have earned the weapon anguish. The skill the demon commander of the 27th Legion has been created. Chapter 8. A door appeared. As Mu Young stepped through the door, a bright light enveloped him. Mu Young closed his eyes, when he opened them, he noticed others looking at him. All together, five people. Was I the last one? The desert was long. For days, maybe weeks, Mu Young had walked continuously. No way, did they wait for me all this time? Mu Young stretched his hands and touched his hair. His body of only skin and bones with almost no hair, had been turned back to normal. Illusions. Mu Young realized that the world within the door was an illusion. Within the doors he wasn't aware of it, but he became certain once he passed through the door. Are you okay? Taehwan approached him. He donned a shield Mu Young hadn't seen before. A red shield with a cylindrical ruby embedded. As the aura seemed to be out of the ordinary, Mu Young assumed it was the reward he earned from passing through his trial. As Mu Young's gaze fixed on the shield, Taehwan awkwardly laughed. Ah, this shield? They gave it to me when I passed through the trial. It's a rank B item, the shield of eradication. A B rank gear was definitely a rare item in the underworld. Even in a large guild, it was only given out to a few of their important members. It wasn't an item a newbie could get. Taehwan seemed quite triumphant about the fact that he earned AB rank equipment. Hyangnam, 1, there is an unknown effect on this shield. Could you please look at it? Taehwan started to call Mu Young Hyangnam since they entered the forest. And so, he held out the shield. Normally, it was common sense to not hand over your gear, even among your friends. It meant that he wasn't completely contaminated by this world, but as Mu Young was also curious, he took Taehwan's shield. Name, Shield of Eradication. Rank, B. Classification, A Keepable Type. Durability, 8500. Effect, you gain a toughness buff when you face more enemies. You got a quite decent item. Mu Young nodded his head. The durability level was certainly high, but his attention was more focused on the toughness. Within the B rank items, it was definitely hard to find one with a toughness effect. On top of that, its buff will increase as he faced more opponent. If he used it on a battlefield, it was sufficient enough to be qualified as a B plus or an A rank item. However, Mu Young's reaction only made Taehwan more puzzled. I don't understand what toughness really means. It is a buff to reduce the effects of spells and curses. It also allows to resist primitive states of dread, like fear. Mu Young handed back the shield. It was a decent item, but Taehwan's abilities were far off from being able to use it to its full potential. There was a secret class, Light of Guardian, which used shields, but unfortunately, Mu Young didn't know how to earn it. As Taehwan received his shield back, he said. Anyhow, it seems like you have also changed quite drastically. Taehwan skimmed Mu Young's body and looked at his sheath attached to his waist. The usually place for his scimitar of strength was replaced by a different sword. Mu Young drew his sword. It was a red sword that looked like it was covered in blood. Bone-like objects stuck out throughout the length of the blade. Name, Anguish. Rank, A. Classification, A keepable type. Durability, 30,000, unrepairable. Effect, Strength plus 5. Ability to steal blood from the opponent and recover the stamina of the user. An A rank. It was a high-ranked equipment that only the leaders of guilds would normally use. The effects were also outstanding. It was perfect for Mu Young who had a low level of stamina. The fact that it was not reparable was a bit of a fallback, but still since the durability itself was amazingly high, he knew it would last him at least a few years. Even with his scimitar of strength, with a durability of only 300, he was still able to use it even if it became a bit dull. The shield of eradication is nothing compared to it. There was a condition attached to the shield of eradication. As you fight a greater number of enemies. If you think in reverse, it also implies that you can't get the toughness effect when you fight against a few people. However, with anguish, he just needed to attack. As long as he could spill the blood of his enemies and the durability had not dropped to zero, it was built for continuous fighting. But, anguish wasn't the only thing he had earned. 
Mu Young turned his status viewer and checked his abilities. Continuous victory effect, Gremry's anguish, A, plus 3 to all abilities. Class effect, none. Strength 30, 22 plus 8, agility 23, 20 plus 3. Stamina 24, 21 plus 3, intelligence 14, 11 plus 3. Wisdom 15, 12 plus 3, fighting aura 13, 10 plus 3. Special note, fighting aura has been awakened. Asterisk as your fighting aura increases, low-grade enemies won't be able to approach you. Before and after comparison. Strength 11 Agility 13 Stamina 9 Intelligence 9 Wisdom 8. Strength 30 Agility 23 Stamina 24 Intelligence 14 Wisdom 15. Maybe that was why his body felt like it was overflowing with power. Ha! Huh. Even Mu Young himself was surprised at his development. When comparing to the first day, his basic stats have improved drastically. However with the inclusion of anguish and the continuous victory effect, his stats had improved even further. Besides, an A-ranked victory effect was much rarer than similar ranked weapons. That was because receiving a continuous victory effect itself was extremely difficult. With this, it seems like the boss battle will be much easier. His current stats exceeded far beyond his expectations. If Taewon blocked the attacks with his shield, he thought that it was enough to win the boss battle. Afterwards, it seemed possible for him to go and retrieve his secret class. Anyways. He examined everything, except for the last one. The demon commander of the 27th Legion? If Mu Young's memories were correct, he clearly remembered the last message about a skill earned with that name. It was exceptionally rare for a someone to gain a skill before earning a class, but the name wasn't anything of ordinary either. When he opened his skill category, there was one as he expected. Skill title, the Demon Commander of the 27th Legion, A+. Description, the qualifications to become the Demon Commander of the 27th Legion. Gremory originally had 26 legions. Only Demon Commanders were able to command the 26 legions and every one of them was possessed with tremendous power. In your history, the first human Demon Commander had been recorded. Another link has been created to continue your quest. Quest, prove yourself as the demon commander of the 27th legion. Gremory is one of the few peacekeeping demons. If you can prove yourself as Gremory's demon commander, you could gain a power greater than anyone else. These were the messages that popped up as he checked his skill. Mu Young knitted his brows after reading all the messages. If you really think about, it's not really a skill. Simply, he didn't have the qualification. But, the necessary qualification was a staggering A plus rank. However, if he could prove himself, it meant that he would gain more power than he could imagine. A quest to become Demon Gremory's Demon Commander. Even in the past, Gremory was a demon who didn't reveal herself and was a demon of mystery. He never thought it was because she was a peacekeeper. He thought for a moment and decided it wasn't a bad idea. If he could gain strength and achieve his goals, becoming a Demon Commander wasn't bad at all. What Mu Young truly wanted to do was save humanity. But, it didn't mean that he wanted to save everyone. That's why Mu Young didn't want to be a true warrior. It suited him more to become a demon commander-like warrior. The problem was the method. How he was going to become one. For Mu Young, who didn't even know the location of Gremory, it was like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Someday I will achieve this. However, Mu Young didn't really care. They were most likely able to find this shrine of Gremory only because someone or something deliberately led them to it, otherwise it would have been impossible. That meant that it was possible to complete the quest. Mister. It says that I gained a new class. Susie carefully approached him. She then removed her status viewer from her wrist. This is also considered forbidden in the underworld. However, this wasn't even comparable to Taehwan giving his shield to him. Don't ever show your status viewer to others. Okay. She sunk her head from Mu Young's cold words, but quickly raised her head to say, Then I will only show it to you, mister. After all, if I don't know what I have, I will still be in danger. Mu Young looked at Susie's eyes for a moment. He couldn't believe that that was a statement made by a nine-year-old. She really is a keen child. And it wasn't as if her words were wrong. Not knowing what you had was also dangerous. He took Susie's status viewer and looked at it closely. Name, Bay Susie. Continuous victory effect, none. Class effect, Valkyrie of Dawn, secret, there will be light after hardships. Strength 11 agility 11. Stamina 11 intelligence 11 wisdom 11. Special note, none. So you could even receive a secret class. Valkyries referred to maiden warriors who served a god. It seemed like a special class only women could receive. Even in the past, he had never heard of the Valkyrie of Dawn. That's probably why it was a secret class. In the past, there were less than 100 people who had a secret class. Just by looking at that, you could tell that they were well worth it. It was as if Susie earned an incredible potential to grow. Though there was a question regarding the last part. There will be light after hardships. It was indeed an ambiguous effect. Does it mean that you will only get stronger as you face more hardships? Perhaps it might have something to do with the fact that her abilities are all 11. Thump. 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 Screech. Squeak. That moment. It became noisy outside. Must be the shroom ice. Mu Young sensed a huge number of them heading their way. 
Is, isn't this the sound of the monsters coming towards us? They shouldn't be able to enter the shrine, right? The two cowardly men asked Mo Young. However, Mo Young just shook his head. All the doors disappeared and the Star of David lost its brightness. Bang! Swish! The statues of the goddess outside the shrine started to crack and crumble. These signs only meant one thing. Catch this. And. Brace yourselves. After passing Susie her status viewer, Mo Young unsheathed anguish. Enemies are approaching. Chapter 9. Boss Battle. A large cavern. Shroomai swarmed out from a great number of holes. There seemed to be easily over 2,000. Block the entrance. We can win if we fight them within a small pathway. Luckily, the shrine will not collapse. So there was hope if they fought them at the entrance of the shrine. No matter how many there were, there was a limit to how many could possibly come in through the entrance. First, Mu Young held the magical item, Shroomouse's cry. However, it had no effect on the Shroomice movements. Something is controlling the Shroomice. That meant there was something that could control the swarm of Shroomice. And that its influence was greater than AD rank magical item, so the Shroomice could ignore the Shroomouse's cry. It would have been a close call without anguish. Mu Young placed his magical item back in his bag. Slash. He then raised the edge of anguish to slice the neck of the oncoming Shroomouse. At the same time, anguish sucked in its blood. It converted the blood into stamina. As he regained his energy, he was overflowing with power. At the very least, it didn't seem like he was going to get exhausted and collapse. Keep the line. Arg. It seemed like Taehwan earned a shield, Susie earned a secret class, and the remaining person earned two daggers. He just noticed the man swinging his two daggers wildly while screaming out loud. Wasn't his name Kong Beksa? It seemed like he also passed the trials. Mu Young didn't try to remember his name because he seemed like a scary cat who was going to die sooner or later. But, if he passed the trial, things changed. That meant that he had more than enough strength to be helpful for now. None of you will pass by me, you fucking mice bitches. Taehwan blocked the pathway the shrew mice were entering with his shield of eradication. He was the only person besides Mu Young who wasn't afraid of them. The toughness buff from the shield of eradication allowed him to reduce his level of fear. Also, his toughness buff increased the more enemies he faced. Sword of Dawn. As Susie quietly chanted, a sword of light appeared in her hand. It must be an inherent skill from the secret class, Valkyrie of Dawn. The skill wasn't very destructive, but it was enough to handle the shrew mice. Stab. Gush. Anguish pierced through a shrew mouse and completely devastated its organs. As soon as he pulled Anguish out, the shrew mouse's body exploded and its pieces flew everywhere. That wasn't all. While the others were stopping them at the entrance, he was the only one moving forward. His increased stats from passing the trial made him stronger. Although the difference wasn't drastic, he knew how to use his strength to its full potential. By instinctively calculating the air resistance, the angle of attack and even the slightest movement of his muscles, he was able to move without any wasteful actions. Compared to him, the shrew mice moved very predictable patterns. Even though there were a lot of them, none could stop Mu Young's advance. Those that saw Mu Young's endless onslaught shuddered. Ha! Huh? In any case, he really is a madman. Taehwan, who was blocking the entrance using his toughness buff, and Beksu, who was frantically swinging his daggers, were astonished. The brutally sliced shrew mice even looked pitiful. What if Mu Young pointed his sword at them? Run away. Everyone thought the same thing. Running away. There was no other way. However, there was also the question of if they could even run away. Since people knew this, no one at the temple bothered him, however he is much stronger now. A monster, was the word that kept reoccurring in their mind. Where is it? As Mu Young keeps swinging his sword, he continuously scanned his surroundings. The thing that is controlling these shrew mice was probably not far away. While he continued, his magical item kept enchanting. You have collected five shrew mouse's cry. Shrew mouse's cry, D, has now evolved to shrew mouse slayer, C, dot. You have evolved the item related to shrew mouse to the limit. To evolve this to its final state, you need the magical item from the great king of shrew mice. Dot. Just because you blindly collect tons of magical items, didn't mean they will continue to rise in rank. There was always a limit. Items that start off as AF rank, like the Shroom Mouse series, tend to usually end at C rank. Of course, there were always transcendental evolution, but the materials and the effort that were required were unbelievable. For now, it seemed like a pie in the sky. You are able to read the movements of the Shroom Mice. The magical item, Shroom Mouse Slayer, allowed Mu Young to gain information about the Shroom Mice around him. Mu Young instinctly realized that there were a total of 1,538 Shroom Mice in this cavern. At the same time, he found the location of the thing that controlled the shroom mice. It's there. Beyond the cavern. There laid the shroom mice king. Mu Young made his way through without stopping. As the entrance was small, as long as Taehwan was there, it would be difficult for shroom mice to invade. That meant that it wasn't really necessary for Mu Young to be there with them. Besides, it was a much wiser decision for him to eliminate the great shroom mouse king and end the battle. Mu Young headed towards the biggest hole among the thousands of holes in the cavern. Gorg grrrr. Just as he expected, as he entered the hole, there was an exceptionally large shroomouse waiting for him. At least 2m in height. 
he seemed to be about five times the size of a normal shrew mouse. When he noticed other large shrew mice around him, he was certain he had found their hideout. He must have sent signals from here to move the shrew mice. If you're a king, act like a king and come out. Rar, Like a lion, the great shrew mouse king roared and swung his huge front claws. Swung. Anguish bounced off. Of course, it could have been that Muyung was weak, but the great king's claws were also very sharp and sturdy. It seems like fighting with just my strength will get me nowhere. Even after a single exchange, he felt a shooting pain in his shoulders. If he was to receive a direct blow from him, his body wouldn't be able to handle it. Muyung changed his strategy. It couldn't be helped, let's make this into a fight of endurance. Cluck. Clank. Anguish ate up the shrew mice around him. In an instant, Muyung was able to recover his stamina and went all out at the great shrew mouse king again. If he was to lose his stamina again, he would then attack the surrounding shrew mice. Rawr. As he did this, the great shrew mouse king's movements became more aggressive towards him. Are they blood related? As this was the nest of the great shrew mouse king, the shrew mice that were fighting outside didn't try to come in. Instead, there were a few shrew mice inside the nest, it seemed like they were the offspring of the king. The great king desperately tried to stop Muyung, but Muyung continued to massacre them ruthlessly. You shouldn't be trying to attack me. Anguish kept absorbing all the blood it could get its hands on. A battle to the death where only one could live. Even the smallest forms of mercy will lead to a tragedy. As Muyung knew this better than anyone else, he didn't hesitate. Screech. Anguish scraped the floor to produce a sound which confused the great shrewmouse king. The great shrewmouse king who was more enraged than ever before threw caution to the wind and headed straight for Muyung. By doing this, the stomach of the great king was in plain sight. Muyung instantly found his chance to stab Anguish through its body. Screak. It gave a loud cry. However, even that didn't last very long. Thump. As Muyung moved aside as he pulled out Anguish, the great shrewmouse king slumped down. Muyung then picked up the magical item which appeared above its corpse. You have earned the Great Shrewmouse King. The two magical items, Shrewmouse Slayer, C, and Great Shrewmouse King, combined to form Emperor of Shrew Mice, B. As the two magical items overlapped, a light radiated and evolved. Emperor of Shrew Mice. Normally, if you continuously killed the same type of monster and also killed its king, you were able to receive a magical item with an absolute effect over its race. There were also rumors that the same method applied to demons and demon commanders, but there was no way in knowing the truth. Either way, the shrew mice were quite common monsters in the underworld due to its peculiar ability to reproduce. That was why there were also quite a few people who earned magical items regarding them. Muyung knew what to expect from the new item. As Muyung gazed at the magical item, information appeared. Name, Emperor of Shrew Mice. Rank, B. Classification, Continuous Use, Developing Type. Effect, you can summon the owner of all the shrew mice, the Emperor of Shrew Mice. Summon. As he called out the most simple command, a show mouse appeared as the face of the magical item jiggled. It was slightly bigger than the size of his fist. King, kinning. It was obvious for everyone that it was a baby. This must be why it was a developing type. Muyung held the emperor by its neck. As he came out of their hideout, all the shrew mice turned their heads around to look at them. Get lost. Screak. Screak. Right at that moment, a big commotion occurred. It was because they lost the influence from the great shrew mouse king and noticed a much greater influence emitting from Muyung. As Muyung yelled at the shrew mice, they all fled into the cave. Huff. Huff. Are you okay? The five, who were stopping the shrew mice in front of the temple, ran towards him and out of them, Taehwan spoke. Muyung, who was completely expressionless, replied. We leave immediately. They had achieved everything they could. There was nothing good in staying here any longer. Asterisk. The forest was pitch black. Evening. However, it wasn't past midnight. A day didn't pass yet. They followed back the traces Muyung had left. If the topography didn't change, it seemed like they had enough time to return. When they arrived at the temple after roughly two hours of walking, everyone except Muyung were completely exhausted. Their bodies were glued to the ground. Now, gasp. Even you beat me you to death, gasp. I don't think I could move. Pant, pant, pant. Most of them had facial expressions that showed breathing was the only thing they could do. Just a day. However, they experienced more than just that. Muyung noticed that just in a day, their prayers have changed. As promised, I will give out the bread and water. Muyung distributed the bread and water to each of them. Even though they were completely exhausted, they all stuffed the bread in their throats. Take it. Th, thank you. Susie replied as she wiped off the sweat from her forehead. Even if it was only three pieces, she handled them with great care, as if she was handling some kind of treasure. As Muyung watched her, he quietly opened his mouth. You cannot tell anyone your class. Even to my father? Yes. The secret class was much rarer and worth more than a regular class. If people knew the truth, when they entered the underworld, there will be bloodshed. Big guilds and clans will try to somehow get it or to kill if they couldn't earn it. Even if Susie was mature for her age, there was no way she could handle the harsh reality she might have to eventually to face. So until she had enough strength, even if it was her father, it was best to keep it a secret. 
I understand. Thank you for your advice, Bose. After she bowed 90 degrees toward Mu Young, she ran towards her father. It's a nice momentum. To be honest, it was unexpected for everyone to return safely. Since people followed him much better than he expected, he was able to achieve what he wanted. At first, he thought of them as simply a luggage carrier, but his impression of them was changing little by little. What? You guys came back? Look here. They came back. Although it was late at night, people started to quickly gather around them. Even the ones who were rubbing their sleepy eyes were awestruck as they realized that the group had returned. When they left the temple, not many expected them to come back alive. But, without an exception, everyone had returned back safely. In an instant, they were overcrowded. You look terrible, which kind of monsters did you fight? Did you get anything? How did you find your way back? There was no one who wasn't curious about their trip outside the temple. Just one. Expect Ji Young. Fuck, why are you all making a big fuss about something as trivial as this? Chapter 10, Boss Battle. While swearing roughly, he approached them with a trashy demeanor. Suddenly, a silence enveloped the group. Ji Young was one of the three strongest people in the group, and because of his particular attitude, many were afraid of him. Ji Young approached Taehwan by passing by other people and spoke while grinding his teeth. Four people died today, assholes. All because you guys just had to go out on your wonderful exploration. Once a day, there were monsters who raided the temple. However, including Mu Young, six people had left the temple. The remaining group had to try and fight off the monsters with their insufficient strength and four people ended up being sacrificed. Excluding the first day, it was the highest number of casualties. Not having Mu Young and Taehwan there must have made a big impact. Especially Mu Young, as he was able to annihilate almost half of the monsters by himself, his absence must have left a huge impact. However, losing just four people meant that they fought well. A moment later, Ji Young raised his left hand. The middle finger was abnormally short. Just the number of deaths is four, but there are many more who were injured. I even lost a finger. If it wasn't for me, half of the people would have died already. But, you guys decided to go out for a treasure hunt? That shield is looks great, huh? Ji Young mocked Taehwan who was holding the shield of eradication. It wasn't like Taehwan had nothing to say. Even he, himself, fought with thousands of shroom mice before coming back. However, he wasn't able to open his mouth easily. It was because whatever he had to say would only be heard as an excuse to the others. Ji Young had the lead. TSK. Mu Young clicked his tongue. Then he approached Ji Young. It was necessary to explore. Step aside old man. I'm talking to Taehwan, the great humanitarian. This exploration was lead by me. If you have anything to say, isn't it right for you to talk to me about it? Mu Young just stood there and looked at him. The reason why Ji Young was only after Taehwan was simple. In any case, it didn't seem like Mu Young was going to make a group of his own and he believed that the only person who would be in his way in becoming the king of this temple was Taehwan. Ji Young who felt Mu Young's gaze, grinded his teeth, but then calmed himself and talked. A lot of people were depending on Taehwan. At least Taehwan shouldn't have gone out to explore. You make it sound like Taehwan is their nanny. No, not that but there is something called a mentor. Those who can't survive on their own will die either way. They didn't even have to think about the underworld, those who rely on others wouldn't even make it to the underworld and will die in the temple. As soon as you rely on someone and are satisfied, you stop progressing and later will be eaten by monsters. Also, the right to take care of others was given to only those who had the strength. Taehwan was definitely not strong. The weak helping each other out was something that exists only in fairy tales. In the underworld, only the strong can act as they want as it is a world where the strong have absolute authority. So you're saying that it's okay for everyone to just die? The veins on Ji Young's neck bulged. Since he was already opposing Mu Young, Mu Young could tell that he was trying to sway the public to his side. Yes, those who can only survive by relying on others will only face even greater hellish conditions later on. However, Mu Young wasn't going to take back any of the words he said. Even Mu Young had spent 40 years living as an assassin without his will. Before he returned, the 40 years he went through was continuous torture. The days where he had to survive by even selling out his comrades. It was a blessing to just die now than to experience that again. Ha! Huh. Old man, you can probably live by yourself because you're strong. It's not that I am strong, it's just that you guys are weak. Mu Young asserted. The Mu Young he was in the past was practically nothing compared to the Mu Young he is right now. Even in the underworld, just looking at the physical abilities, there were countless people who were like monsters compared to him. Mu Young pointed at the scarecrows outside the temple. Was there anyone who trained on their own time? Didn't you guys give up right away after knowing there were monsters outside the temple? Whining is what kids do. If you weren't even going to try and be lousy about it, all that's left for you is to become monster meat. Even Susie, the youngest one here, didn't whine about anything. Instead, she tried to find a way to survive on her own. When Mu Young was hitting the scarecrows every day, no one had the determination to join him. It was because they believed that fighting the monsters that came every day was enough. Aren't you experienced? You were at the temple ALR- dash. Smack. Ji Young's body flew through the air. Thump. Ji Young, who unsightly fell on the ground, reached for his throat. Cough. 
He spasmed after getting hit unexpectedly on his chest. While Ji Young was struggling on the ground, Mu Young approached him and stepped on his belly. This is the wild. There are no rules or laws. If I was to kill you right now, who would be able to stop me? You need to learn to protect yourself. Squeeze. Mu Young placed more strength on his foot. Ga. Ga. H A. Ji Young's face was completely red. If Mu Young placed a bit more strength on his foot, the air inside Ji Young's body would flow upwards and impact his brain, killing him. Expressionlessly, Mu Young looked down on Ji Young. Ji Young's face filled with fear that he was going to die. Mu Young just lowered his head to look at Ji Young straight in the eye. Or, have you never thought that I could become your enemy? No one could stop Mu Young. This was reality. Even if you were nice and split your resources, no one would dare to speak out to the strongest. If you wanted to change that kind of reality, you had to move. You had to strive harder than anyone else. Mu Young was willing to do that. PL. Please. As Ji Young begged for mercy with his completely red face, Mu Young stepped away. Learn to be independent, I'm not expecting you to be strong. But, don't hold back others who are trying to move forward. Mu Young turned around to enter the temple. There was a long silence that followed. No one could move. Asterisk. Some people who were able to gain sudden realization from Mu Young's speech started to move. Even if the numbers weren't great, due to them, new things were constantly being unveiled. It says that my strength has increased. My stamina has increased. As people begin to figure out that they could improve their stats by continuously hitting the scarecrow enticed many to challenge it. Even if you had to hit at least 10,000 times for it to be of any effect, it was more productive than just standing still and wasting their time. Mu Young continued to explore every day, and whenever he returned, he started to build a fence. He fashioned wood into sharp spears and placed them around the temple. Although people were setting traps and preparations for the monster raids, they weren't very effective. Mu Young was preparing for the boss battle that will occur soon. There will be countless monsters that will attack before the boss comes out. This fence was made to interfere with the monster's movements, even if only a little. Of course it wouldn't have any effect if it was an ordinary wooden fence. However, Mu Young had gathered anesthetic flowers and rubbed its sap all around the fence. It had a strong anesthetic that would start to paralyze the body with a single touch. He also spread around Giant Leo's feces to confuse the monsters with its strong scent. As a predator of the forest, Giant Leo was at least one of the strongest monsters here. There were always going to be monsters raiding in once a day, but smelling the Leo's feces would definitely confuse them. Even though I had to risk my life, it was definitely a good idea to go to a Giant Leo's territory. If he was ever to be found by a Giant Leo, he wouldn't have been able to escape easily. But, to make the boss battle a bit easier, he needed Giant Leo's feces. Mister. I'm done applying them. Also, the work of rubbing the feces on the fence was being done by Susie. Even if she was carrying a bin to do this, her whole body smelled strongly of feces. King. King. The Emperor of Shroom Ice, who Susie named King King, stealthily avoided her. King King knew instinctively to fear the giant Leo. It was a task no one wanted to do. However, Susie volunteered to do it. Is this also her sense? However, would Susie know that this work will help her greatly in surviving? The one that emitted the scent of the giant Leo the most was Susie. Even if you washed yourself vigorously, the scent wouldn't disappear for a few days. Monsters wouldn't be able to easily approach her. If she instinctively knew this and volunteered, her sense had to be quite astonishing. Mu Young nodded as he glanced at the fences. Good job. Give me the bread a bit later please. Also, she had two bread to receive. Susie looked behind Mu Young for a moment and cautiously spoke to him. After practice, can I play with King King? King. Kinning. Emperor of the Shroom Ice. King King's body was shivering pitifully. Mu Young spoke without care. Do as you please. Yay. Thank you. She was still a kid. With a smile, Susie ran towards the scarecrows. Then, Mu Young stood up as he rubbed his shoulders. All that's left is to wait. He had prepared everything he could. Not just Mu Young, other people also did what they could in their own way. It was now a matter of how they could fight the boss battle with as little damage as possible. Asterisk. Growling. Nar. Hundreds of two-headed hyenas approached the temple. They were the species of monsters known as Shamba. The Shamba, who were running extremely fast became confused after smelling the giant Leo. Swift. Pluck. At the same time, numerous number of arrows were flying towards them from afar. People who were already waiting for them started to attack them with bow and arrows that they prepared at the last minute. Follow me. While the others were fighting the Shamba, Mu Young unsheathed anguish not too far away from the temple. He had to finish the job before monsters started to climb over the fence. Taehwan and Bexo followed Mu Young. As he wanted them to work as two separate forces, Suzy stayed behind to help others. Kill them. Kill them all. From afar, Mu Young could see Ji Young frantically fighting off the Shamba. While the Shamba's focus was on the group, Mu Young quickly took a side route around. What Mu Young was after wasn't the Shamba. It was the boss behind the Shamba. I will take the front. When I make the signal, come out. As he went further back, the number of Shamba decreased. And at the very back, the place where the temple and the forest met, there were two exceptionally large Shamba on the narrow pathway. 
Mu Young had to quietly exterminate the two. Mu Young closed his eyes and tried to slow his heartbeat as much as possible. Even if he returned to the past, the experience he had was still intact. Hiding abilities were abilities Mu Young had reached extreme levels in. There was no way he couldn't escape the eyes of such monsters like Shamba. Sniff. However, as Mu Young approached them using his abilities, one of the Shamba noticed that something was wrong. Mu Young quickly swung anguish and sliced the Shamba's neck. Grah. Gah. It was the same for the other Shamba. As Mu Young lift his hand, the two men approached. H, how did you do this? How, did they not notice you when you just walked towards them? Taewon asked Mu Young with disbelief. But, Mu Young didn't reply. After a while, he opened his mouth. Search the area. Since we killed the guards, it will now show up. Mu Young was nervous, very slightly. He was certain that there was a boss nearby leading the Shamba. However, he couldn't sense its presence. Instead, he felt a gaze. It's watching me. Drip. 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 And what Mu Young thought was correct. The wall that blocked the narrow pathway. However, something was climbing down that wall. Krang. If Shamba had two heads, this thing had a staggering three. It was at least twice the size of a regular Shamba. The formal appearance of the boss who led hundreds of Shamba. In an instant, messages popped up in front of them. Quest. Ralaka's attack. Ralaka has a great grudge on the humans. He will not stop his massacre until he kills all of mankind. Stop Ralaka. Following the laws of Solomon, every survivor will receive a prize depending on their level of contribution. Ralaka. If he remembered correctly, it seemed like it did have a name like that. In the past, from its attack, more than ten people had died. Not because of the hundreds of Shamba, but because of this one monster. I was waiting for you. However, Mu Young believed that it was possible with three people. The predator of the past, now it was its turn to get hunted. Chapter 11, Boss Battle, End. Taehwan lifted his shield of eradication. Clash dash. However, Ralaka's strength was beyond his imagination. Hew. Taehwan, who was holding the shield, just bounced away. Thump. Behind him, Bexu stabbed Ralaka's side with his dagger. But, it wasn't deep enough. It was like making a light scratch on a tough leather. Gra. After Mu Young figured out Ralaka's movement patterns, he started to move. Then Ralaka instantly turned its body to face him. From the start, Ralaka knew that Mu Young was the strongest out of the three. If it could kill Mu Young, then killing the rest wasn't going to be a problem. It's smart. Indeed, it wasn't an ordinary monster. While holding anguish, Mu Young spurred from the ground. In an instant, Mu Young swiftly jumped for one of its three necks, but Ralaka's speed was second to none. But, Mu Young also knew that the Ralaka was going to dodge. Puk. As he landed on the ground, he lowered himself and extended his foot to trip it. Like tackling, the smooth attack by Mu Young led Ralaka to stumble and lose its balance. Afterwards, it turned into a fight of speed. Either Mu Young was swifter with his sword, or Ralaka was faster at recovering its balance. By a narrow margin, Mu Young's sword sliced one of Ralaka's necks. Gra. Ralaka, writhing in agony, quickly backed off. Although it was a critical attack, surprisingly, the wound quickly recovered. All the heads need to be cut off. Even if the head that dropped on the floor wasn't going to recover, he knew that it was going to be hard to land a fatal injury with most of his attacks. I've also suffered. As he slightly tilted his head, he looked towards his right shoulder. The instant Mu Young went for its neck, one of Ralaka's claws must have gotten stuck on his shoulder. Blood was gushing out and it was hard for him use his full strength. If you think about the amount of damage, Mu Young suffered a loss. Hi Nim. I will block it. Taehwan came to the middle and made a wall. Taehwan probably wanted Mu Young to stop the bleeding. Mu Young nodded. This will probably be a long fight. It was unwise to leave a wound unattended during a fight. He rubbed on some herbs that were good for hemostasis, which he had brought. It felt like his skin was burning off, but he gritted his teeth and endured it. Gaa! The enraged Ralaka started to fight more aggressively. Even if Taehwan kept trying to block all of its moves, it was impossible. And it has already been a while since Biksu had been knocked out. Mu Young picked up anguish again while rotating his shoulder. What Mu Young felt was excitement. He was aroused by the fact that he could freely express all he had against a powerful prey. Ga. While ignoring Taehwan, Ralaka jumped high above the ground and went straight for Mu Young. It seemed like it knew it was going to die if it didn't kill Mu Young. And, therefore, made a desperate attempt to kill him. Okay. Bring it on. Mu Young firmly grabbed hold of anguish. Asterisk. Son of a bitch. How dare you humiliate me. Ju Young moved out of the temple with a group of people. Will, will this be really alright? It's not too late to return back. Besides Ju Young, the five people who were with him were all uneasy. It was because they were unsure if the job they were trying to complete while abandoning their post was going to go well. Just shut up and follow me. I'm sure he's probably exhausted by now. Ju Young was overflowing with confidence. That bastard said that he was going to kill the boss. It's probably a formidable opponent since he needed to prepare for days. The bastard he was referring to was Mu Young. Mu Young was continuously preparing for days for today's battle. The guy who continuously murdered monsters like it was nothing. 
It meant that the boss they had to kill today was that much stronger. But, it didn't seem like Mu Young was going to lose. Instead, he had to be exhausted. Ju Young was planning on eliminating Mu Young when he was worn out. I'm going kill him, take his weapon and the prize he was supposed to earn. If Mu Young and Taehwan disappeared at the same time, no one could stop Ju Young's advancement. This was the jungle. It was the place where the strongest became the righteous. Oh Ju Young. Before he came to this place, he was a gangster. After being expelled from high school for violence, he hung around crappy friends and committed crimes. Besides continuously committing violent acts, he stole and threatened others. He was even an agent of an underage prostitution by using juniors from his past high school. He was definitely not a guy who would live by obeying the law. But, Ji Young was always filled with dissatisfaction. He was dissatisfied that he had to always crawl on the floor in society. And then one day, his life was turned upside down and he was summoned to this blue temple. Getting attacked by monsters, living the true life in the wild where life is considered worthless. He was there. Everything was perfect. He thought that he could finally live how he wanted with no one to stop him. Kim Taehwan? He was a rookie. He was clueless about the bloody underground world. Even if Taehwan had the skills, Ji Young knew he could get rid of him if he really wanted to. But. Just one person. Ji Young couldn't do anything about just one person. Just by his appearance, he seemed to be like a bomb. When he fought against monsters, he didn't seem like a wolf, instead he resembled more closely to a lion. Mu Young. I just need to kill him. Clash. He heard sounds of an intense fight nearby. Injured Taehwan and Bexu were both sprawled out on the ground. It was only Mu Young who was fighting the great monster. But, the fight was about to end. Slash. Mu Young had sliced off the last head of the monster. H.A.A. H.A.A. Mu Young dropped on the ground and was heavily breathing. From afar, it seemed like he had suffered injuries all over his body. Today's going to be the last day you'll get to act like a mad dog. A smile formed on Ji Young's face. If he was so exhausted that he had to fall onto the ground like that, even if he was the mighty Mu Young, he wouldn't stand a chance against six men. Asterisk. Ralaka was strong. It was strange. When he thought of his past memories, he was sure three people were going to be more than enough, but instead they could have been the victims. Are my memories wrong? Of course, he couldn't have been able to remember everything perfectly. But, at least they won. He will use these mistakes as a stepping stone in moving forward from today. Who? Who? Mu Young sat down for a bit after he cut Ralaka's last head off. There wasn't a place on his body that wasn't sore. There were traces of Ralaka's claws all over his body. However, he couldn't just continuously rest there. Taehwan and Bexu both fainted after receiving injuries. It wasn't good to leave them unattended. Even the Shamba's attacks weren't finished yet. I will be back soon. He had to kill all the Shamba for him to have an opportunity to treat them. Thump. He stood up using Anguish for support. Even if Anguish absorbed the blood of Ralaka, whom he had killed, the amount was small. Instead, the wounds he had received from Ralaka's attacks were much greater. Maybe it was because Mu Young had lost so much blood, but his face was white as a sheet. When he was too exhausted to move properly. Mister. Be careful. Susie's urgent cry struck Mu Young's ears. He then looked around. That crazy bitch. Die. The six men who were hiding behind a nearby tree came out. It was Ju Young and his group. Mu Young sorta figured out why they showed up there. Far behind Ju Young, there was Susie who seemed to be out of breath from following Ju Young from the other side. If Susie didn't warn him, he would have been helplessly ambushed. Even if my body was in this state. He didn't think he wouldn't be able to not notice people who weren't even properly hidden. It was the limit to the body he returned to. Oh Ju Young. Mu Young didn't think he would be that reckless. Mu Young thought he had at least some sense in him. Was his thirst for revenge so strong that he lost all reason? Did Ju Young really think that he could win against him just because he was exhausted? Stab. Mu Young pierced through the chest of a person who ran up to him first. Then using anguish, Mu Young absorbed the blood flowing from the person's body. Ju Young didn't know the effects of anguish. He probably just thought it was a weapon with an extremely sharp edge. If he knew that it allowed him to recover his stamina like that, he wouldn't dare to challenge him like this. Even without anguish, as his skills were far superior than the six men, there was probably nothing they could do. One should not be screwing around a lion just because it was injured. Gush! As he pulled out anguish, he looked at Ji Young. Stop struggling and just quietly die. You son of a bitch. This was probably the last frantic attempt for Ji Young. You first. Mu Young positioned himself again. He gained the stamina to move after killing the guy who thoughtlessly approached him. Then, he slowly spoke. I will tear out your tongue which doesn't have a shred of responsibility. Crazy bitch. Ji Young wasn't as composed as his words made him out to be as he tightly held his sword upright. The reason why monsters were a threat was because of their fast speeds and their attack power. They were specialized to risk their life in order to kill their opponent. However, Ji Young didn't match any of the above criteria. He was just strong in terms of strength, but that was all. Clash. Smack. After their swords had clashed, Mu Young quickly turned his shoulders to smack his elbow against Ji Young's chin. Kook. Ji Young fell on the ground after suffering from a concussion. 
Mo Young shoved his hand inside Ji Young's suspended jaws, which was disjointed. Stretch. Unable to resist Mo Young's strong grip, his tongue was pulled out. Because of the grotesque scene that just happened, the other four were unable to act rashly. Gah hey. Next, I will slice off your wrist since you don't need it. He wasn't going to kill him right then. Mo Young was the best assassin who completed even the hardest training. He knew how to kill a person while allowing them suffer and make them feel extreme fear. It wasn't the most pleasant experience, but since Ji Young stuck out his sword against him, he was an enemy, not any more or any less than that. Swish. Ah ha ha Ji Young writhed in a desperate agony. His wrist which was holding the sword was cut off. I'm not really the type to enjoy torture. Lastly, I will slice your head off. Giving him a warning before completing the task. Ji Young was in complete fear just by that. However, Ji Young shook his head as he still desperately wanted to live. He seemed like he was pleading for his life, but Mo Young had already given him a warning. It was Ji Young who ignored his warning. Now it was time for him to pay for his choices. Slash. Chapter 12, Necromancer, 1. There wasn't even the slightest hesitation. In a blink of an eye, Ji Young's head was separated from his body. The scene was like a berated film, its lack of realism left the surrounding men speechless. Clank. Crash. However, they soon realized that this was reality and they all dropped their weapons on the ground. Then they raised their hands and tried to prove their innocence. I, I was forced by Ji Young, that bastard, to participate in this. Same with me, didn't you know? If you didn't follow Ji Young, you had no choice, but to starve. Ha! Huh. Mo Young laughed as if he found this whole situation ridiculous. Save your lame excuses. Since they have already raised their weapons against him, there was no need for any excuses. In the past, Mo Young knew the reason why the Forest of Death was able to survive amidst all that ill will. The Forest of Death never let an enemy go. It was the same for those who had the possibility to later become an enemy. It was one of the few things Mo Young agreed with the Forest of Death. It was foolish to leave those who could later become an obstacle alone. Raise your weapons. Mo Young's eyes narrowed. The men shivered at that sight. And at the same time, they realized. They should have never meddled with him. Even if it was injured, a lion was a lion. If they continued to stand there idly, they knew they were going to die. As their instincts told them to move, they picked up their dropped weapons. Fuck. The man, who was the first to come up with an excuse, dashed towards Mo Young. Swish. Thud. One exchange was enough. To end this quickly was the only mercy Mo Young could show. As an act of mercy, Mo Young swiftly ended their lives. Swish. Swish. As he moved continuously like a stream of water, their heads fell to the ground. Mo Young recovered some of his stamina as anguish absorbed their blood. The wounds received from the fight with Rilaka slowly began to close. Although he wasn't fully recovered, he still recovered enough to hunt the rest of the Shamba. Shortly, he sheathed anguish and started to move. Ah? As the one who spectated everything from afar, Susie was startled when Mo Young appeared in front of her. Susie has seen quite a few deaths, but this was the first time seeing a human dying at the hands of another human. It was natural for her to fear Mo Young. Follow me. But Mo Young didn't care. If she learned something from his actions today, she would live, if not, she would die. The underworld wasn't a kind place for a child. As Mo Young took the lead, Susie lowered her head and followed along. Asterisk. You have successfully defended against Rilaka and the Shamba. To the survivors, depending on your contributions, an appropriate reward will be given. The contribution level of the survivor Mo Young is 80.4%. Marvelous. You have broken a record. Will you leave your name in Solomon's Hall of Fame? If you decline, it will be displayed as no name. Dot. After splitting the skull of the last Shamba, the above words appeared. Solomon's Hall of Fame. In the past, he did have his name on there. He was at the top of the most humans killed rankings. It seemed like this was a ranking of people with the highest level of contribution in a boss raid at the Blue Temple. If I leave my name in Solomon's Hall of Fame, the demons will learn of my name as well. It was a fact found by the one with the most names on Solomon's Hall of Fame, the Adventure King Argo. Although he didn't know the exact relationship between Solomon and the demons, the story of how the Ninth Seat Paimon went out to search and kill Argo himself was famous. There was even a secret rumor floating around that if one had many achievements in Solomon's Hall of Fame, they would receive something that could harm even the demons. On top of that, it became much easier to get accepted into one of the great guilds or gather more people. Depending on the situation, it might even unlock a secret mission, however. Mo Young declined. He might have become famous more quickly once he revealed his name, but that was not what he wanted. After all, revealing his name had very little to do with receiving secret missions. There was also nothing good that could come from the demons learning about him. Of course, it couldn't be said that it wouldn't help him become a demon commander under Gremory, but the disadvantages outweighed the advantages. I refuse. He didn't even bother to say his decision out loud. You have refused to leave your name in Solomon's Hall of Fame. First place, no name, 80.4%. Second place, Alexandro Quintart, 78.7%. Third place, Atsuki Yuka, 72.8%. The names of second and third place were both very famous. 
They had already established their influence and had been rising at a frightening pace. That was especially the case for Alexandro, who had already become the head of the nine great guilds years ago. Influential monsters. Which meant that for at least ten years, no one had broken his record and that Muyang was finally the one to break it. Even though he probably didn't have any past experiences like Muyang, the difference was less than 2%. Although results weren't everything in the Blue Temple, Alexandro definitely had the right to rank amongst the top 10. Solomon's Hall of Fame, Blue Temple, 1, has been added to your history. By the law of Solomon, a reward will be given to you. You may choose two of the following, Infinity Pouch, The Secret Medicine of the Sage, Tyrant Sword, Soul Shield of Avalokitesvara, Talisman of Azura, Nine Dragon Blade, Boot of Hermes and Thousand Faces. His eyelids slightly trembled. There were a few items that he had heard of within the list. Tyrant Sword, Soul Shield of Avalokitesvara and the Boots of Hermes were especially famous. These were items used by masters. The secret medicine of the sage was known as the epitome of alchemy and the infinity pouch spoke for itself. There was simply nothing to discard. But the item that piqued his interest the most was the talisman of Azura. Talismans of the eight Deva guardians of Buddhism. There were eight guardians that served under Buddha. Among them, there was one called Azura. Wasn't this one of the items the five great clans searched for day and night? Muyang didn't know for certain, but he remembered reading a secret document that stated if someone collected all eight of the talismans, Buddha will descend. The descent of Buddha, it might be hard to believe, but there really could be a calamity that significant. I choose the infinity pouch and the talisman of Azura. There was no need to agonize over it. Anguish was enough for him as a weapon and infinity pouch was a treasure he might not get the chance to obtain again. For someone who was trying to change everything by himself, it was a vital item. Not choosing the secret medicine of the sage, which could raise the limit of a human, was a regretful loss, however, his growth would be determined by the four secret classes he would choose. Not long after, a pouch the size of two fists and a talisman floated above his hands. Although the infinity pouch had a limit to the size of the item that could fit, it was limitless in terms of the amount it could store. Muyang was quite interested in the talisman of Azura. Name, Talisman of Azura. Rank, A+. Type, One-Time Reinforcement Type. Effect, Contains the strength of Azura, one of the eight Deva guardians of Buddhism. It can strengthen an equipment or a skill. Aha, Muyang nodded his head. After reading the explanation, he understood. The five great clans had a few exceptionally incredible weapons. They were probably reinforced by the talismans of the eight Deva guardians of Buddhism. Unexpectedly, it can also reinforce skills. It wasn't that there were no magical items that could reinforce skills. However, there were only a minute number of them. If one did not have heavenly luck, they would not be able to obtain one. On top of that, the talisman of Azura had no limitations so possibilities were endless. Damn it, everyone move. How long are you all going to be space out for? Someone lend a hand here. People started to carry the corpses. Though they won the battle, the damage was devastating. Muyang packed some medicinal herbs and went out to bring back Taehwan and Beksu. Asterisk. 17 people. Out of 28 people, 17 were left. But more than half the deaths were caused by Muyang. Five died from the Shamba raid while six died by his hands. Everyone knew of this fact, but did not discuss it. It was because a few people saw the six people escape from the battle to kill Muyang. There were a few that thought the consequences were too harsh, but they valued their lives. It wasn't like the monsters would stop attacking now that they were so few in numbers. To survive, they had to get stronger and now, more than ever, they sought to unite as a group. The death of Jiyoung actually resulted in everyone gathering together as a group. People started to follow Taehwan as their leader and the exploration was stopped. However, Muyang didn't intend to explore any further. Necromancer. The secret class that was able to single-handedly kill thousands of people in the past. After fully preparing to get the class, he headed out towards the forest. Chapter 13, Necromancer. A massive castle. A man was sitting on a throne built by the bloodshed of countless men. The man, who had a scraggly beard and was wearing silver armor, was the leader of the Sun Guild and also the one who placed top 10 amongst humans, Alexandro. Alexandro Quintart. It had been decades since the underworld started to summon humans, but even among them, he was exceptional. He had the most achievements in Solomon's Hall of Fame after the adventure King Argo and was responsible for solving a few major dilemmas in the underworld by himself. As a man who started from the bottom, he forged a path for himself and his grandeur was recognized by all the people in the underworld as a leader of one of the nine great guilds. However, he was currently looking at his status viewer with a solemn expression. Someone broke my record. There was no one near the throne. Growl. If the humongous lion-like beast, Giant Leo, was excluded. Only people who had permission from Alexandro were able to enter the throne room. And Alexandro would not let anyone in unless it was of utmost importance. Basically, he didn't trust anyone. No matter how faithful a man who had taken an oath was, he was ultimately human, therefore he would not trust them. A risk of an assassination attempt, that was his biggest worry. Although he was ranked in the top 10, that didn't mean that he was impervious to powerful curses or skills. 
As it hadn't been long since he had become the guild leader, the guild wasn't completely united. They were split into a few different factions and if they saw a chance, they would devour Alexandro. I can use this. He was not sure if he was able to use the novice hero to his advantage. The record he held in the Blue Temple hadn't been broken for over 20 years, but now someone who had broken that record appeared. After advancing rapidly, this was the golden opportunity for the talented individual to gain the attention of many. If he could use this person to earn a bit more time, he believed he could seize control of his guild. No name. The problem was the new record holder did not reveal his name. In approximately 20 days, the newly summoned individuals would be sucked into the gate and arrive in the underworld, but no one will be able to know who the record holder was. Alexandro knit his brows. It was great news that a new hero had appeared, however he couldn't help but feel a little uncomfortable as well. For what reason did he not reveal himself? Was that even possible considering the human psyche? It was normal for people who gathered in the Blue Temple to reveal their names. It was because there was a reward, a reward that was only given to people who accomplished the impossible. Humans would try to leave their trace behind after they overcome something. Of course there were people in the underworld who would intentionally hide their names after a particular achievement, but wasn't that place the Blue Temple? It was a place where people were newly summoned. They didn't know anything. Alexandro pondered as he rubbed his chin. Utsuki Yuka. That bitch probably knows by now. Solomon's Hall of Fame only revealed the top three record holders and if the records were changed, they would be notified on their status viewers. Utsuki Yuka, who led the ninjas would have noticed the appearance of a new talent. She would definitely keep track of the movement of this new seedling. The man who placed third had already died so there was no need to worry about him. If, by any chance, Utsuki was to secretly snatch the talent, it would make things difficult. However, even for the great Alexandro, it was hard to win an information battle against the ninjas. If he is deliberately trying to hide himself, I guess I'll have to make this welcoming ceremony especially grand. Alexandro decided to change his plans. Someone who concealed his name. That meant that he didn't want to reveal himself. However, if he was to publicly announce this information, no matter how hard he tried, he would be unable to hide himself any longer. There was no way to openly take him away, but if he could tie up Yuki for a while, he would be able to exercise his right of speech to snatch that no name away. After he organized his thoughts, his shoulders relaxed. The arrival of a new hero, huh? Smirk. Alexandro smirked. No one hoped for that. None of the ones who held any influence in the underworld hoped for it. It was just something they could use when they needed to. Asterisk. Before Muyung left the temple, he left traces around the forest. It was so that he could find the way back even if the areas changed. With King King's extraordinary sense of smell and Muyung's experiences, they were able to explore the forest with ease. After walking for three days, he arrived at his destination. It's been a long time since a human has come here. Within the overgrown vegetation, there was a small wooden house. A black-skinned, long-eared man who was in front of the house looked at Muyung. Dark elf. Yeah. I am a dark elf and you are a human. Did you lose your way in the forest? But you came too deep for that to be the case. Guide. I came looking for you. He didn't get lost. Muyung had precisely wandered through the forest to find this dark elf. The dark elf widened his eyes. Me? Hmm. That's strange. It's normal for the ones who had just arrived at the temple to not know the existence of a guide. I wonder if you have a special skill? Or you just came here using your senses? He looked at Muyung for a second before shrugging his shoulders. It was not in his place to care about that. Just like his name, the guide, his role was to simply guide people. This is the best way to save time. Only this dark elf knew the geography of the forest. The former necromancer coincidentally found the cliff, but Muyung had no time to wait for coincidences. So his solution was the guide. If it was the guide, he would be able to efficiently and quickly take Muyung to that cliff. Well if you know about me, you should surely know about the rules as well? Are you talking about the three wagers? He replied as if it was something insignificant. There were quite a few people in the past who were able to find the guide, who lived in the center of the forest. Usually they would find him accidentally while exploring the forest or getting lost in it. The existence of the guide was quite well known in the underworld. The guide clapped his hands together. Oh, you really do know quite a lot. That's right. If you are able to beat any of the three wagers I suggest, I will take you to wherever you wish. Ah, by take you anywhere, I mean within the boundaries of the forest and the temple. That meant if he wanted, it was possible to be guided to the other temples as well. The massive forest was connected to every temple. However, there was no need to travel to another temple. The remaining survivors will meet when they travel through the gate anyways. The real competition would start then. I have no objection. Only, the wagers were always different. He could only adapt to the following circumstances. As Mo Young gave him a look, the guide said, it's good that you're so open-minded. Then should we start with hunting? The winner will be whoever catches a dwarf squirrel that lives throughout forest, first. The time limit will be by midnight. Isn't that too advantageous for you? I will start six hours after you. The guide stated with ease. He looked confident as if he could never lose. Hunting was second nature to him. He was one of the few predators that hunted day and night. 
It was daytime at the moment, but due to the characteristics of dark elves, he would be able to see clearly in the dark. He had to catch the squirrel as fast as he could. I have to use his composed attitude to my advantage. Mu Young started to move after he nodded his head. Since he said he would start six hours later, Mu Young planned to hunt it down before then. Asterisk. Although it does live throughout the forest, just like its name, it was only around the size of a thumb. Unless one had extraordinary senses and sight, it would be very difficult to hunt them. However, Mu Young knew what dwarf squirrels like to eat. Dwarf squirrels like to eat dark red fighter ant eggs. It wasn't hard. In the past, he used to catch a lot of them for assassinations. Since these squirrels were small and fast, they were quite useful for information warfare. Mu Young searched for an ant hill and lit a fire. Once the ants were dazed, he swiftly took out their eggs. He then made a simple trap and waited for a dwarf squirrel to come. Now, thud. After waiting around two hours, a cowardly dwarf squirrel slowly approached the eggs. He didn't lose that chance and dropped the grass-woven basket. He had successfully captured the squirrel. He waited for the allotted six hours to pass before returning to the guide. When he arrived, the guide opened his eyes widely and trembled. Th this, is invalid. I didn't even get to start. I have the same thoughts as well. My luck was just good. Of course it was like that. Haha, <laughs> quite the flexible fellow. Then, let's forget about hunting and do a treasure hunt. I placed a few strips of red fabric around this place. If you are able to find three of them before the sun rises tomorrow, it will be your win. If you fail, it will be my win. Fine. Then I guess I'll go prepare my dinner. Hoo <laughs> This time, the guide was certain Mu Young was going to fail and felt confident. Luckily it's a wager I know. Mu Young had sufficient past knowledge about this wager. If I win twice, it said that he would give me a useful treasure. There was a reason why he didn't end it at the first wager. He once assassinated a man who won two wagers against the guide. In his history, there was detailed information about the events that unfolded and once the man won twice, he received the glass of fire. The glass of fire contained a mid-ranked fire spirit which could spit out an unlimited amount of flames. However, what would happen if he won all three wagers? As there weren't even rumors about anyone who won three times, even Mu Young was slightly curious. Mu Young grabbed a magical item and summoned King King. King King, avoid places with lots of mana and find the dark elf scent that's on the ground. King. Keying. The man who won this wager in the past used a tracking skill to look for the fabric, but Mu Young had the shrew mouse emperor, King King. King King was especially specialized in finding magical positions and tracking. Its nose was more advanced than a dog's and was able to distinguish even the smallest difference in scents. It was largely due to King King that he was able to safely arrive at this place. The problem was the explosive magic traps. If I mishandle them, I will die. The guide hated losing to an extreme. He would rather see Mu Young die than lose. Unfortunately, King King was able to avoid those places and only find the strips of red fabric. Knock knock. After an hour, Mu Young knocked on the door of the wooden house. Huh? Are you giving up already? Three strips. I found them. What? The guide blinked his eyes and stared at Mu Young's hand. There were exactly three strips of red fabric. Who? Are you going to call this wager invalid as well? Th that, that's not it, but I casted stealth magic on the fabrics. It's just surprising to see you found them already. If you want, I can do the next wager as well. Is that true? The guide cheered. His pride wouldn't let him lose like this. When the sun rises tomorrow, let's have you hide and I'll try to find you. Can't you use magic? It should be easy to find me. I vow in the name of Solomon to not use magic during this wager. I will simply use my physical capabilities to search for you. How long do I have to hide? I will admit defeat if I can't find you by sunset. How about it? Good. It was pretty much hide and seek and Mu Young was most confident in this field. It won't be as perfect as what as he could accomplish before but he definitely had the skills to fool one dark elf. As soon as the day passed, Mu Young stepped out into the forest. After climbing a suitable tree, he closed his eyes and slowed his heartbeat. Become one with nature. There were different stages of stealth. If one practiced to an extreme like Mu Young, they were able to become one with nature at will. However, without a practiced body, it was uncertain if he could hide from the dark elf for a long time. 50-50. He was gambling everything on that 50-50 chance and he even constricted the movements of his organs. He even controlled the unconscious movements any living creature would make. In the past he could move in this state, but currently if he was to make even the slightest movement, he would be caught by the guide. He was motionless like a grass swaying from the wind. A few hours have passed. And, dinner time arrived. Thud. As soon as the agreed time had passed, Mu Young dropped from the tree. Thereafter, he went inside the guide's house and started to eat the prepared food when the guide opened the door. Why are you here? Gulp. After swallowing the meat he stabbed with a fork, he answered, they say it's easy to miss what is in front of you. He acted like he left the central area, but in fact, he didn't even leave the center. From the beginning, hiding was the field Mu Young was most confident in. The guide never thought he would lose due to the special traits of dark elves, but as soon as he chose this wager, his loss was determined. 
Unaware of this fact, the guide searched the area where he expected Mu Young to hide. As he realized this, his legs wobbled. I, I lost. Only then did he acknowledge complete defeat. Chapter 14, Necromancer. The guide regained his composure after looking like he saw the collapse of the world for a while. Soon after, he looked through his clothes, took out a small magical item with his one hand and offered it to Mu Young. Accept it. Since you beat me three times, you have the right to receive this. Mu Young examined the magical item. As soon as he accepted it, information popped up. Name, Long Distance Teleportation Magical Item. Rank, B+. Type, One Person, Single Use. Effect, Within the Underworld, you are able to teleport to a place you remember. Mu Young tried to keep himself as calm as possible. He calmed his spirit and regained his composure. Although it couldn't endlessly emit flames like the glass of fire, to Mu Young, the glass of fire was incomparable to this item. To a place I remember. He couldn't return to Earth, but depending on how he used it, it could be incredibly useful. It was peculiar that it didn't have a limit to the distance. If Mu Young was a beginner, he might not have had much use for this item. However, as the current Mu Young possessed his past memories, he could make use of it better than anyone. He could teleport to a currently undiscovered place with the Star of David and monopolize the rewards or he gain a secret class much more easily. However, the first thing that came to mind when he first laid eyes on the magical item wasn't either of those. Headley Cow, 1, dot. Humans have been summoned into the underworld for a long time but there were more unexplored areas than there were explored. Five years from now, due to the foretelling of the Great Calamity, every guild and clan started to organize a wide-scale exploration of the underworld. During that time, they happened upon Headley Cow. Headley Cow was the name of a certain fairy. Although fairies normally have the appearance of a four-legged rock, they were able to shapeshift. On top of that, they were able to possess the same abilities as the target they shapeshifted into. And one of those targets was, the Phoenix. Once they felt that their life was threatened, they would break out of the rock as a phoenix. However, Headley Cow was too cowardly and fled as soon as it transformed. If he could only capture it, it could have become a material necessary to create an S-rank weapon. Even if he was to absorb it, he anticipated an incredible growth to his abilities as the heart of a phoenix was an endless supply of magical power. Although the phoenix was a bit weaker than a dragon, its heart was comparable to that of a dragon's. If it was a regular phoenix, it would be impossible to catch, but a headly cow-transformed phoenix could even be captured by Muyung. It was better than most rewards he could receive from a place with the Star of David. What was worse was that the trials were designed to be impossible to complete by one person. The only obstacle in capturing headly cow was that area which headly cow inhabited was quite deep in the territory of a demon so, to secretly traverse the territory, he needed to get stronger. Is this all? asked Muyung as cool-headed as he could. It was because it was him, that he had a use for the item, to any ordinary beginner, the item would have been an insignificant reward. At the same time, the guide's expression stiffened. What do you mean is this all? It could be a life-saving item you know. Every time I win, don't I get a reward? On the first bet, he won the guide's guidance. On the second, he won the long-distance magical item and now Young looked like he was waiting to see what he would get for his third win. You, are very greedy. You are the one that said you would give a reward for a win. Ugh. Fine. For the last reward, why don't you tell me what you want? I will do my best to fulfill your request as long as it's something I can do. The biggest compromise. It was obvious he was going to coldly refuse the difficult requests. Also, Mu Young didn't have anything special to ask of him. Guarantee my safety for 10 days. Mu Young was certain that the guide wouldn't refuse as this request overlapped with the initial request of guiding him. 10 days? Too long. I won't go over 3 days. Then let's settle for 3 days. Mu Young nodded his head. Truthfully, one or two days would have been sufficient. Since he knew the guide was going to haggle, he purposely asked for ten days. Three days was a splendid result. The guide was stupefied when Mu Young agreed so easily. However, Mu Young knew what kind of existence the guide really was. The past aid of Solomon, a magician who can only live in the Blue Temple. A supreme magician more than a thousand years old. He was a guide and at the same time, a protector. With his existence, the Blue Temple was completely protected. Even the great demons were not able to easily break into the Blue Temple. However, he was unable to leave the Blue Temple, in a certain way, he was the Blue Temple. It was because he had aged to a point where he should have been long dead. However, he heard that the guide periodically reversed the effect of time on his physical body. It was magic that was only permitted in the Blue Temple. This was why he currently had a naive appearance. As both his physical body and mind would always revert back in time, his physical body had to die to truly awaken the power of the Supreme Magician. This was uncovered through the demons. A full-scale invasion started after the Great Calamity, where all the humans on Earth were summoned to the underworld. And then, because of the massive gathering of humans, the barrier of the Blue Temple collapsed. Three of the highest-ranking demons launched an attack on the Blue Temple and the guide's physical body turned to ashes in an instant. However, afterwards the Supreme Magician began to reanimate himself. The battle went on for ten long days, but the Supreme Magician ended up losing. 
however, he was an incredible existence who was able to fight evenly against three high-ranking demons for ten days. Although he was not the supreme magician, the current body of the guide was more than enough to ensure his safety within the forest. Since, no matter what his current condition was, his strength was in magic. So where are you planning on going? I will first fulfill my role as a guide. Shuring. Mu Young unsheathed anguish. And then, he ran towards the forest. That, that crazy. Huawag. After staring at Mu Young's fleeting image and hearing the shrieks of various monsters, the guide finally realized Mu Young's intentions. So that's what he meant by ensure his safety. That was it. The reason why Mu Young asked him to ensure his safety for three days. Shut up and hunt. He planned to wipe out the monsters without looking back. Asterisk. Agility has increased by one. Stamina has increased by one. Mu Young ran like crazy. As if to show what it meant to run like crazy, he didn't even stop to rest for a second. If anything, he jumped towards danger and fought with his life on the line. He knew that the best way to increase his stats was to fight against monsters. At the same time, the one who felt like dying was the guide. Gore. You asked me to only ensure your life, what kind of impractical request is this? The guide only acted when Mu Young was about to die. However, that was not easy to time. With the way Mu Young fought, it wouldn't be weird if he dropped dead at any time. After he had protected him with magic, he was thanked with replies like, I almost lost my flesh and could have ended up as a pile of bones, I got scratched a little, but it's not to the point I'll die. Crazy bastard. So he couldn't afford to look away for a second. The observing guide was much more exhausted. After killing a dark bear, Mu Young said, I need to fight a bit riskier. What? When I avoid every attack by the width of a finger, my agility isn't increasing as fast as I hoped. I need to reduce the width to half a finger. Is that a distance you can reduce just because you want to? It seems to be possible the more I try. The guide was speechless. It seemed like he was looking at a person who couldn't wait to die. If he was able to choose the distance he avoided incoming attack at will, he could already be considered an expert. No, it was difficult even for an expert. However, there was no end to Mu Young's mysteriousness. His technique was definitely above an expert, but it felt like his body couldn't follow through properly. If he was to force himself to move a certain way, it would cause an untimely death. However, the more he fought, the faster his body adapted to his movements. What a crazy, but peculiar fellow. A promise was a promise. The guide had to take care of Mu Young throughout the duration for the determined three days. And Mu Young was definitely planning on maximizing the guide's help and fought with every monster he encountered. After doing this for a day and a half, a message appeared. Amazing. You have broken the Blue Temple hunting record. Will you leave your name in Solomon's Hall of Fame? If you decline, it will be displayed as no name. There was even a ranking for this? But, Mu Young shook his head. He didn't have the slightest intent to reveal himself. You have refused to leave your name in Solomon's Hall of Fame. First place, Lucian, 2,578 monsters. Second place, Muller Lucas, 1956 monsters. Third place, No Name, 1221 monsters. Third place. Mu Young had killed more than 1,200 monsters since his arrival. It was most likely that only monsters that were suitable opponents were counted. Shortly after, Hunting Record, 3, was added to his history and a hunting map was given as a reward. The hunting map showed which monster's territory he was currently in. It wasn't a very useful item, but it would save Mu Young some time. Mu Young decided not to waste even a second of the remaining time and continued to hunt. Then his ranking slowly started to climb. Marvelous. You have broken a new record. You have refused to leave your name in Solomon's Hall of Fame. First place, No Name, 2,579 monsters. Second place, Lucian, 2,578 monsters. Third place, Muller Lucas, 1956 monsters. Finally, he was even able to take first place. Herculean Strength Leather Armor was given as a reward. He didn't expect much since he didn't receive any reward for taking second place, but it was a pleasant surprise to receive a B-plus ranked armor with an effect that increased the wearer's strength by three. Although he was able to find some equipment in the forest other than those rewards, unfortunately none were useful for Mu Young. Mu Young looked at his status viewer. The status screen popped up. Achievement effect a Gremory's Anguish, A, plus 3 to all abilities. Class effect on none. Strength 41, 30 plus 11, Agility 35, 32 plus 3. Stamina 33, 30 plus 3, Intelligence 17, 14 plus 3. Wisdom 16, 13 plus 3, Fighting Aura 19, 16 plus 3. Special note, fighting aura has been awakened. Even considering that the Herculean strength leather armor increased his strength by 3, he could see that his base stats had increased considerably. Agility especially increased a lot. His senses had become sharper. Although everyone's stats increased rapidly in the beginning, there wasn't anyone who could compete with Mu Young at this point in time. Not bad. While he was feeling content with his improvement, the guide said, the promised three days have passed. Isn't it time to tell me where you want to go? Mu Young answered right away, to the cliff of agony. Finally, all the preparations were complete. 
Chapter 15, Necromancer. Edited by Myoni and Yoni. Giant bird-like monsters flew around the steep cliff. There were a countless number of monsters, including one known as the small pterodactyl, the sword-beaked bird, and another whose body was half-transparent, transparent bat. The only thing these monsters had in common was their fierce appetite towards prey. You had to prepare to lay down your life if you wanted to climb this cliff. Are you seriously thinking about climbing this cliff? The guide spoke slowly with a pale face. Even while coming here, Muyung ceaselessly hunted. To show someone the way meant that that someone had to be alive. Muyung maximized that subtle reasoning and traveled as slowly as he could. Even if the guide understood his intentions and traveled in places where there were no monsters, Muyung would always find a way to draw monsters to him. Like they say, he got his money's worth. And thanks to that, the one to suffer was the guide. They only arrived two days later than they expected, but the guide's appearance made it look like he aged a few years. I'm going to climb it. Muyung replied as if it wasn't a big deal. Unlike the guide, he used anguish to continuously stack up stamina so he wasn't as tired as he thought he would be. The guide's face stiffened and he opened his mouth, within the boundaries of the temple and the forest, this is one of the most dangerous places here. Since we're here, I can take to all the way up, but. No thanks. It was like the guide was offering him a last bit of service, but Muyung flatly refused. The Cliff of Agony. At the top, there lied the secret class, Necromancer. And one of the few conditions to receive the Necromancer class was to climb the cliff by himself. If he was to accept the guide's help, all of his efforts would become meaningless. You really have a thoroughly adventurous spirit. The guide shook his head side to side. Although he had this thought numerous times while coming here, the human in front of him was definitely not normal. He really couldn't tell what he was thinking. It felt like he was recklessly running towards his goal, but since he acted as though he had 12 lives, he felt that it was slightly contradictory. People who have clear goals value their lives. To achieve their goals, they would not hesitate to use any method necessary, but they would at least value their lives. However, when looking at Muyung's actions, it felt like he was moving on the premise he was going to die. Does he not care about his life? While coming here, Muyung faced situations where, if it wasn't for the guide, he would have died at least 50 times. If he was to make the slightest error, he would have lost his life. Although he had promised to keep him alive, it was still reckless. What was more, the Cliff of Agony was known as one of the most dangerous places even in the forest. Logically speaking, it was hard to resolve this matter with Muyung's current level. But he still wanted to attempt it. And without any help. He was thoroughly insane. Because of this, the guide was excited. How far could this insane human go? It felt like it had been a long time since he felt this way. Although his memories weren't complete, he felt that it had been a few decades since he felt this kind of feeling. If only he comes back alive. The guide imagined an impossible scenario. The Blue Temple was a place where people who attempt the impossible will be aptly rewarded. If by any chance, Muyung returned after climbing the cliff, the guide had no choice, but to admit that Muyung wasn't crazy, he was just different. That's right. Different. Those that tread a completely different path than others were known as heroes. Although there were many people who claimed they were heroes, in the guide's eyes, they all were incompetent. However, the human right in front of his eyes seemed to be out of the ordinary. If you can pass the cliff's trial, I'll tell you my name. A small swirl of emotion appeared in the guide's eyes. And Muyung stared at his eyes as if he was being pulled in. Now that you mention it, the guide, the supreme magician were simply titles, there was no one who knew his real name. It didn't seem like even the demons knew his name. How strange. Up until now, he never really thought about it. He wasn't even curious. The fact that he was able to fight against the demons for 10 days was important, his name wasn't really that important. Of course, the question was will there be some change by knowing his name? Do I really have to know? There won't be any disadvantages from knowing it. The guide's expression was extremely serious. Muyung shrugged his shoulder and turned around. Do what you want. There was no reason for him to refuse if he insisted on telling him. However, it was more important to climb the cliff. Whoosh! The fierce winds attacked Muyung. Like a swaying twig, he perilously climbed the cliff. The only thing confirmed by reading his history was that he had climbed this cliff. The status viewer he read after killing the necromancer was not very detailed. The facts that the necromancer class was attained by climbing the cliff and killing the five gatekeepers were all that he knew. Of course, there was no way for Muyung to know the methods the previous necromancer had used. That was why he increased his stats as high as he could. To prepare for any situation. Ka! A sword-beaked bird targeted Muyung's back with its sharp beak. Muyung immediately used anguish to cut its beak in half. The increased agility enhanced Muyung's senses. Taking care of a bird that would make a sound while rushing at its prey was simple. Ka! Ka! However, as one died, as if they were getting revenge on their fallen comrade, ten sword-beaked birds rushed at him. From the beginning, I never intended to dodge. There was nothing more barbaric, but the method Muyung chose was a direct face-off. He planned to crush all the obstacles and attempt to climb the cliff directly. He took a deep breath, pulled his body close to the cliff and wielded anguish. How far did he climb? The clouds touched the top of his head. Almost there. 
his whole body was a mess. If he didn't receive the leather armor from breaking the hunting record, he would have had a few fatal injuries. The giant centipedes that jumped out from between the boulders were especially dangerous. He was nearly crushed to death by a centipede wrapping around his body. Others would have sworn that he was completely insane and that he had lost his mind, but to Muyung, these situations weren't particularly weird. As climbing an endless cliff was part of the Forest of Death's training regime. If you don't climb, you die. Even if they climbed, they would die from starvation or would fall to their deaths. Half his fellow recruits died from simply climbing a cliff. A red orc. He quickly ended his thoughts, as he climbed onto the top of the cliff and looked around. There was a single cave in the center of the summit. And at the entrance of the cave, there was a red-skinned orc standing guard. It seemed to be one of the five gatekeepers, nevertheless it didn't seem ordinary. The fighting aura emitted from his body. His tempered muscles and physique made it seem like it was born to fight. Kurek? The red orc stared at Muyung. Come at me. Kadakadak. Muyung motioned with his finger. Kuruk. The red orc grabbed his big axe and rushed towards Muyung. His shoulder got dislocated. The orc's raw strength was greater than what he had imagined. If it had become a battle of strength, there was no way for him to win. He seized his victory wholly through his exquisite skills. Stab. As he stabbed the center of the orc's carcass, anguish started to absorb the blood. He was able to regain a bit of his empty stamina back, but this method was only temporary. Nevertheless, Muyung immediately started moving. Kegigek. The next opponent he faced was a null thief. True to his name, he was incredibly fast. He aimed for Muyung's neck with his poison dagger. Unfortunately, the pairing was bad. Muyung was an assassin second to none. He was able to predict all of the null thief's movements. The fight concluded in five minutes. This is driving me crazy. The victor was obviously Muyung. However, he groaned after killing the null thief. His leg was poisoned. He definitely should have evaded it, but the dagger lengthened and cut his leg. It was completely his fault. However, each gatekeeper he fought left a wound. It was as if it was predetermined. It was like for every gatekeeper, the challenger had to be inflicted with a wound. You have climbed the cliff of agony and hunted the final gatekeeper. Muyung did not stop. To expel the remaining poison, it would take five more days, but he didn't not have the time. As a result, his actions would become rougher the more wounds he had received. Like the uncontrollable Norse warriors, he went berserk. In the end, he able to hunt down the last gatekeeper. Huff! Huff! He panted heavily while gazing at the chunks of what used to be a giant serpent. I think I'm going to die. His complexion was deathly pale. He couldn't put any strength in his fingers. The fight was intense to that extent. He narrowly came out victorious in the life-or-death struggle. Muyung slumped to the ground. It seemed he really had pushed himself too hard. There may have been a better way to do this. As there was only one gatekeeper per fight and there was no time limit. Perhaps if he took his time, he would have been able to win more easily. The previous person to get the necromancer class must have spent days figuring out ways to defeat the five gatekeepers. However, Muyung foolishly forced his way through. He crushed everything with a frontal assault. It was truly an intense surprise attack. Overcoming danger makes me stronger. He only knew how to get stronger by pushing himself to his limits. Even if someone kindly taught him a different method, the current Muyung would still tread this path. To push himself like this was definitely dangerous, but he strongly believed if he was to endure it, he would take a step towards his growth. I endured this time and will continue enduring. Muyung gritted his teeth. He will not die. Lie the way you want and achieve your goals. Before long, his vision became hazy. You climbed the cliff of agony and defeated the five gatekeepers in a day. To you who accomplished the impossible. In accordance to Solomon's law, a special reward will be given. The masters of darkness are examining the user. The death lord has chosen the user. Chapter 16, Art of Death. A stretch of flat, barren land. Against an army of a million undead, more than a million humans fought. Most of the humans used swords and spears, while a few users of holy energy and magic were mixed in the crowd. However, there was a great variety of undead. No, there were so many of them that looked so bizarre, it was difficult to define them as undead. Zombies with wings of an angel, skeletons with Pegasus's horn pierced through both of their hands, vampires with the body of a bear, and three frog-headed Cerberus. They weren't simply different in appearance, but they were far stronger than a typical undead. They even had an amazing ability to think for themselves and had cognitive capabilities. The general belief that undeads were just dead bodies who moved simply was destroyed. Humans struggled to protect their base, but it was useless. In an instant, there was a mountain of corpses. Massacre, there was no other way to describe this scene. And in the middle of all this, there was a huge lich with a red cape fluttering in the wind. The Death Lord. As the Death Lord raised his hand, thousands of corpses were lifted off the ground and completely reconstructed into the form of a giant. Death is a beautiful thing. Wah! The giant roared out loud. As the Death Lord gazed at the huge giant, so large that it seemed as if it could touch the sky, he nodded his head. Doesn't it look amazing for something made out of mere humans? As the Death Lord walked, all the corpses he passed by came back to life. 
The comrades who used to fight with them in battle were now ripping apart and chewing on their hearts and swinging weapons in an attempt to cut their throats off. It was an unbearably horrific scene. Against the overwhelming power, humans were only helpless. Since I'm the king of death, worship death, the ruler of all deaths. He was the death lord. Asterisk. The body was burning with a fever. After Mo Young had collapsed, he was continuously in a hypnagogic state for the entire day before he could finally get up from his spot. What, was that dream? While he was passed out, Mo Young had a dream that could have been part of a movie. He felt like he had seen a war movie through a big screen. However, it felt strangely vivid. A dream, but not just a dream. Thump. He tripped over his own legs and fell back on the ground. Mo Young lightly clicked his tongue. It seemed like he needed to first take care of his body before he could even think about the dream. Hmm, I wasn't able to completely remove all the poison. He remembered using herbs right before he fainted, but it seemed like they didn't completely heal him. Mo Young gazed as his ring on his finger. Paranormal. The first reward he received in the Blue Temple by killing monsters. Even if it was limited to five uses, it allowed for an effect to increase all his stats by two for ten minutes, cast a healing wave, or a fire bolt. I used it twice already. But, I'm not sure if three healing waves will be enough for my body to recovery. He used it twice to fight against the giant serpent. Swa! He chose the healing wave skill among the effects offered by Paranormal. Right away, a green light emitted from the ring. The light wrapped around him and rejuvenated his body. After casting it two more times, he was back to his lively self. His body seemed to have recovered and gained resistance to the poison. It's done. Since it wasn't a powerful poison, it seemed like the tiny bit left in his body would naturally recover on its own. Swoosh. However, since he had used paranormal to the full, the ring shattered into dust. He felt as if he had wasted it, but considering the situation, it was the best choice he could make so he didn't have any regrets. By the way, I clearly remember that messages popped up before passing out. He remembered seeing a few words floating in from of him, but he could not remember what it was about. After Mo Young sipped some water using his water-producing magical item, he looked at his watch to see what had changed. First, he looked at his abilities. Achievement effect, Gremory's Anguish, A, plus 3 to all abilities. Class effect, Death Lord, Lord Class, Ruler of Death. Abilities. Strength 44, 33 plus 11, Agility 37, 34 plus 3. Stamina 35, 32 plus 3, Intelligence 17, 14 plus 3. Wisdom 16, 13 plus 3. Fighting Aura 19, 16 plus 3. Special note, Fighting Aura has been awakened. The armor you are currently wearing or using, Anguish, Strength plus 5, and Herculean Strength Leather Armor, Strength plus 3. Nothing greatly changed about his abilities. His strength was definitely the highest, but since his pure stat was only 33 with an added stat of 11, it just seemed very high. However, something he had never seen before was written under class effect. Death Lord. The ruler of death. But, it was the first time he heard of this. There was also something unfamiliar. Lord class? Not even a secret class, but a lord class? There was no one with a lord class, at least from the people he had killed in the past. Even Mo Young, who knew quite a lot of classified information, was totally clueless. Wasn't this the place where he could receive the secret class, necromancer? Mo Young instantly shrugged his head. This was the place. The trials were also the ones he had to complete as well. Then, he could only believe the cause was the amount of time he spent on clearing the trials. It clearly stated Masters of Darkness were examining me. I don't have a clue what all this means. Masters of Darkness and Lord Class, they were all things unfamiliar to Mu Young. For a moment, Mu Young furrowed his brow. The reason he wanted to earn the Necromancer class was because it was a class that specialized against a large group of opponents. However, if the Death Lord's class specialized against only a few opponents, then he couldn't say he had achieved his goal. He needed to carefully examine the classes he was planning to earn in the future. Skills Mu Young turned the pentagram of his watch to look at his skills. There was an addition to his skills besides the skill of the Demon Commander of the 27th Legion. Skill Title, Art of Death, F. Description, Reinvent and Reconstruct Death into Art. Once the undead is created, it will be graded. Its abilities will be determined by this grade. Death is a beautiful thing. Hashtag Death Lord, 1. Even if he had only gained a single skill, he felt like he understood what it could do. This wasn't simply a dream. The transfigured undead in his dreams. It was probably the skill to make those kinds of creatures. Death Lord led an army of a million transfigured undead to massacre humans. If it was that powerful, then it seemed enough to fight off the troops of demons, the legion of demon commanders. First, it was a type of necromancer class. His initial worries disappeared. It also seemed like a higher class than the normal necromancer. If he just polished this skill, he believed he could reenact the scene he had seen in his dreams. Also, as he increased his rank, more skills would be added. Mo Young approached the dead giant serpent. Out of the five gatekeepers, it was the monster that tormented him the most. Didn't he almost die from it? He felt it would be beneficial to make it as an undead. Art of Death. 
When you didn't know how to use a skill, if you just say its name, it usually worked. Soon after, a dark aura emitted from the tips of Myung's fingers and it wrapped around the giant serpent. The material isn't in a good condition. Skill rank is really low. There isn't a trace of artistry. Art score of zero. All the abilities will be reduced by 50% from when it was alive. Swish. The giant serpent started to move slowly. If it's an art score of zero, then does it reduce the strength of the undead? At first, nothing really seemed different. The sluggish movement and basic patterns. However with a glance, he noticed that it was definitely weaker than before. It just seemed like a great big undead giant serpent. That was all he could say. It was nothing compared to the undeads in his dream, who moved on their own without an order, could think for themselves and overwhelm the humans. Stumble. Muyang was barely able to stay up by leaning onto the giant serpent. Maybe it was because he used a skill, he felt as if he was becoming exhausted at an alarming rate. Somehow it seems as though I spent my stamina. It must have been a skill where he couldn't abuse it constantly. From the state he was in, it looked like he could use the skill at most three times a day. It seemed like he needed to use it wisely. To increase the art score, different types of materials were generally required. If he used the corpse of the boss that attacked every ten days, he thought he might be able to get a better score. Let's go down. After thoroughly examining the Death Lord class, he started his way back. He passed out for quite a long time. There wasn't any time to waste. Asterisk. Even if the giant serpent had lost 50% of its abilities, it was quite useful. Its thick hide was a fine shield for Muyung, as he climbed down the cliff. Thanks to the serpent, Muyung was able to climb down safely. The guide was waiting for Muyung at the bottom of the cliff. He looked at Muyung in admiration. Hook. Hook. Didn't think you would really make it. Although he did not have any ill will, these words could have caused a misunderstanding depending on who heard them. Muyung shrugged his shoulders and spoke. Did you want me to die? No, but it's hard for me to believe that this is real. And from your aura, you don't seem like an ordinary man. It seemed as though you have earned an incredible reward. Muyung nodded. The guide was the other self of the supreme magician. Although Muyung didn't deliberately try to hide the change, it wouldn't have been weird for the guide to notice his changes. What perfect timing. Muyung asked one of the questions he had about the Death Lord class. Who are the masters of darkness? As if it was trivial matter, he answered. They are the ones who couldn't become gods and by Solomon's laws, became the ones who managed the darkness. But, how do you know, ah, uh, no, did you? They said one of the masters of darkness has chosen me. The guide's eyes widened. Chapter 17, Art of Death, 2. The rule administrators have chosen you? It was hard for him to believe. As if that wasn't possible. The guide asked again. Muyung nodded his head and started to speak. Is it really that strange? He was honestly just curious. That was why Muyung asked so bluntly. The guide was someone who was wholly dedicated to this place, even before the collapse of humans. He might even be the one person who knew more than Muyung. If the guide didn't have the answers, there was no way for Muyung to find out as well. His expression was serious. I'm not sure of the details. How many manage the laws of the darkness, who are part of it, and etc. Just know one thing, that they have really high standards. Even if someone completed the impossible, it was rare for them to choose anyone. Then he looked Muyung again and rubbed his chin. It seemed like even the guide did not have the information about the Death Lord or the Lord class that Muyung really wanted to know about. The guide continued to speak. But, you were chosen, right? Like a kid who had just found a new toy, his eyes started to sparkle. Great excitement. At the same time, a slight smile appeared on his face. As expected, you truly aren't an ordinary human being. That's probably why you were able to win the three wagers against me. While he seemed to be particularly obsessed with wagers, Muyung could not refute his words. Before Muyung realized, the guide was holding an orc staff. Even the mood seemed to have changed. The aura of magic surrounding them was so dense that it suffocated Muyung. Muyung bent his eyebrows. As Muyung slowly moved his hand towards his weapon, the guide started to talk again. Ah, ah, I'm sorry. I was extremely thrilled. That's right, I probably said that I was going to tell you my name if you came back alive. If it is you, you deserve to know my name. TSK. Muyung clicked his tongue as he removed his hand from the sheath and returned his hand to where it was before. Do as you please. To be honest, it wasn't like Muyung was really curious about his name. What could happen by knowing letters of a name? Seeing how the guide was obsessed about it, Muyung just thought he really wanted to introduce himself. I'm a druid. Druids were known to be the ones who dealt with nature and spirits. Swish. Out of the blue, the wind blew. The spirits of the wind started to come and surround the guide. Muyung swallowed his saliva. I thought you were a magician. At the same time, I'm also the supreme magician. You weren't wrong. Even though I was born from an incubus of darkness, I was baptized right away so that I wouldn't be infected by evil. Instead, I was able to gain an enormous amount of power. Of course, there is no way I can display my true powers in this fake form. As if he was boasting, he continued to talk. The system of skills that humans are able to use were made by me. So that as long as you knew the spell, it wasn't hard to cast the spell or to exert magic. 
Even though the guide said that he was going to share his name, he was bragging about his identity. But, Muyang didn't really care about his identity. Are you asking me to play 20 questions? The guide looked a bit disappointed. You still don't know who I am? As if his identity should have been obvious by now, the guide clearly found it shocking. I still don't know. Merlin. Merlin? Muyang looked at the guide. The guide didn't seem like he was joking around. Finally, there was a smile on the guide's face. I'm the Merlin whom you're thinking of. Finally, few words appeared in front of Muyang. The supreme magician Merlin has identified himself. Your intelligence has been permanently increased by two. For a moment, a blue light wrapped around Muyang's body. Just by knowing the guide's name, his magical abilities rose. That meant that the name had that much worth, but it was the first time something like this happened for Muyang, so it was natural for him to be a bit confused. As expected, you really are talented. Just because someone hears my name doesn't mean that they all get something. A drawing might be just a scribble for someone, but to another, it might be a work of art. Without a care in the world, Merlin became more enthusiastic about Muyang. It's my first time hearing that Merlin followed Solomon. It wouldn't be correct to say that I followed him. We had no choice, but to combine our strength. If the seal of Lemigitan was to be broken, the fake will become real and the real will become fake. It was very obvious that in a state where everything became chaotic, humans would be annihilated. He also seemed to be the reason to why humans from Earth were being summoned here. Muyang could not take it as a joke any longer. Right now, Merlin was telling him about the history of this world. He knew that the 72 demons were going to be freed when the seal of Lemigitan was broken. But, even Muyang was unaware of the specifics regarding its background. Do you mean the summoning of the humans into this underworld was already decided upon long ago? Merlin nodded his head. Yes. And to be honest, it wasn't too promising either. The demons were too strong and therefore, even if they were to prepare for them, there was always a limit. That's why, our only hope was humans' unlimited potential, but. He became silent. However even if he didn't hear the rest of the story, Muyang understood. After all, in the end, humanity wasn't able to stop the demons. Instead, due to conflicts between humans, numerous humans with potentials were killed. And, even Merlin, himself, wasn't able to consider humans' desires and their selfishness. No, even if he knew, like a Pandora's box, he might have still firmly believed in them as their last hope. However, if it is you, the person who was chosen by the Masters of the Darkness, I believe you have the potential of becoming a true hero. The burning look of Merlin's eyes were making him feel uncomfortable. However, Muyang didn't really like how he was sweet-talking him. Muyang placed a lot of pressure on his neck before he spoke. So what is your point? Become my successor. The supreme magician Merlin has made an offer. If you were to accept, you will succeed in obtaining the secret class court magician. Muyang thought he had heard of this somewhere. That a person could potentially receive a class from supreme beings. Unlike other people, Muyang was able to accept four classes. As of now, since he has earned a secret class, it wasn't a bad idea to earn another. Still. Death Lord is one of the magic type classes. Muyang was planning on getting specifically distinct classes. And just by the name, he could tell that the court magician class was one of the magic type classes. I refuse. You, refuse? In an instant, Merlin's expression became strange. It was an expression like he never expected to get refused by his offer. Muyang calmly spoke. To become your successor means that I need to be here for a long time right? Merlin was a being unable to leave this blue temple. To learn from him meant that a lot of time will be spent here. Ten years would be more than enough. You will be an accomplished magician. Muyang just shook his head from the expected answer. Becoming an accomplished magician seemed nice, but in ten years, he could gain a lot more by living in the underworld. He needed to be the first to retrieve specific treasures. I'm more curious about the world beyond these gates. Even if you go there, there aren't many good things to see. It's much better to learn from me now and go against the demons later. If I become your successor, does that mean I can kill the demons for sure? That. Of course, it would be impossible. Like he said, all Muyang could do was fight against them. Muyang knew the end of Merlin. Even when he returned to his former self, all he could do was tie up three top-ranking demons for ten days. That was all. Even if Muyang was to take all Merlin had to offer, it meant that there was a limit. Of course, just that by itself was an incredible thing. It was enough for him to be called the Supreme Magician. However, Muyang knew too much about the past. It would be foolish for him to waste ten years here. Therefore, he calmly replied. As humans are faced with trials, by overcoming them, they get stronger. And a system that rewards you appropriately is exceptionally pleasing. Since you will be rewarded for the amount of effort you put in. Selfishness of the humans have gone too far. If you pass the gates, monsters and demons aren't the ones to be worried about, it's facing the sickening desires of humans, the same kind as you. Are you going to consider that as a trial too? If they stop me, I will destroy them. I'm not willing to leave anything that stands in my way. Ha! Huh? As Merlin listened to Muyung's answers, he sighed. It was because he knew that whatever he had to say, wouldn't go through to Muyang. Muyang's determination was that firm. What a shame, what a real shame. Why don't you look for a successor yourself instead of just waiting? 
there are plenty of people who are more talented than me. It wasn't like Mu Young was exceptionally talented in magic. However, considering how many real genius magicians have shown up in the underworld, it wasn't like Merlin couldn't find a successor. But, Merlin didn't move from the center of the forest. Even if a genius showed up, how can he find a successor if he just sits and waits? I'm not just looking at skills. But you do make a good point. Merlin sighed out loud. I'd basically given up on relying on humans. Just enjoyed wagering with a few humans who came to see me. However, after seeing you, I wanted to try once more. You will surely find someone. Finally, Merlin took out a small bottle from his side. Take it. It's the secret medicine of the sage. Inside the bottle, there was a liquid that had a red glow. The secret medicine of the sage. It was an item recognized as the pinnacle of alchemy. It was one of the choices he had when he made it to Solomon's Hall of Fame for killing the boss. But unfortunately, it was a reward he had to give up. However, Muyung gave him a flat refusal. I'm not interested in becoming your successor. Even then, Merlin didn't take his hand back. I'm not giving it to you because of that. My primary role is to make heroes and to guide them. Since I can see hope in you, I can't just send you away, can I? For a long time, Merlin just looked at Muyung without saying a word. Muyung didn't try look away either. If Merlin was willing to give him the secret medicine of the sage with no strings attached, there was no reason for him to refuse. As Mo Young grabbed the bottle, Merlin spoke as if he was worried. I hope your will won't be broken. Nothing will be able to break my will. Mo Young waited 40 years to get this chance. A chance to go through his life again. Never, no matter what happens, Mo Young wasn't willing to waste this chance. Chapter 18, Art of Death, End Merlin placed a spell on the hunting map Mo Young had. It evolved to be an item that allowed him to move without getting lost, at least in Blue Temple. Afterwards, Mo Young headed out on his own. Although he could feel the lingering gaze of Merlin, he knew that if they were to stay together, they would only grow to become more attached to each other. On his way back, Muyung killed monsters and used his art of death skill to increase his level of understanding. The material is a bit usable. Art score of 5. Name, Ugly Salamander Monkey. Level, 14. Type, Zombie. Strength 17 Agility 15 Stamina 20 Intelligence 3 Wisdom 1. Gorg GRRRR. The completed undead looked at Muyung while flicking its tongue. After wildly mixing the corpses of a monkey monster and a red salamander, he received an art score of 5. Just mixing them won't do. Mu Young lived the past 40 years as an assassin. Perhaps the little artistic sense he may have had in the past had already disappeared by now. He rubbed his chin. How to get a higher score. However, the stronger a class was, the more difficult it was to master. If he carefully experimented, he would be able to laugh at the face of necromancers. I should make a skeleton by carving out the bones. Instead of connecting monster's body parts to create a zombie, wouldn't it be better to create a skeleton by carving out its bones? Mu Young first looked for materials. If the materials were good, it would have a better compensation effect. And it was making a soldier out of bones. He couldn't just use the random bones of monsters. He needed the sturdiest bones possible. If I remember correctly, there were cannibalistic elephants around here. He thought of the elephants that lived in the forest of the Blue Temple. These elephants that had robust frames and huge ivory tusks were very hard to find as there were only a few. Cases of them being found were very rare. Even in the case that they were found, it was difficult for someone to fight them alone. However, Mu Young had the map Merlin had placed a spell on. Also, Mu Young wasn't just an ordinary person. In the underworld, he might have been a weakling, but at Blue Temple, he was one of the strongest. Mu Young quickly moved his steps and entered the territory of the cannibalistic elephants. He was able to witness four elephants drinking water near a lake. Unlike regular elephants, cannibalistic elephants did not normally move in groups. At most, they moved as a family. But, they were aggressive and were known to enjoy fights. If you approached them carelessly, you might suddenly get attacked by them. Mu Young carefully stalked the elephant family and at the moment an elephant was by itself, he rushed in. Tralala! The elephant who discovered Mu Young screamed out loud. It was because Mu Young swiftly went on top of the elephant to stab its neck with anguish. The elephant constantly shook its body, but it was useless as Mu Young was stuck to him like a glue. Thump! As soon as anguish had sucked out all of its blood, the elephant collapsed onto the ground. Mu Young wiped his forehead. I think I also need the cartilages and the tendons. He couldn't make a skeleton with just its ivory tusks. He needed enough cartilage and tendons to connect the bones to make a proper shape. However, Mu Young didn't have enough time to dissect the enormous elephant by parts as the other elephants may discover and attack him. Remove the skin. Scrape. Growl. Mu Young wasn't alone. The giant undead serpent and the undead salamander monkey followed Mu Young's order and started to move slowly. The serpent swallowed a big chunk and spat it out, while the monkey used his dull sword to slice the skin off. They were slow, but it was much faster than Mu Young doing it alone. Mu Young started to dissect the elephant and left the useful parts aside. When he had gathered enough bones to create a skeleton, he finished by cutting off its ivory tusks. He wasn't done just because he had collected enough materials. 
A lot of knowledge and effort was required in slicing the tusks to make a skeleton. It was fortunate that he knew the anatomy of a human body better than anyone else, but it was hard work to carve the tusks into bones. Scrape. Scrape. After moving to a safe area, Muyung started to cut the tusks inside an empty cave. If he had a sharp chisel, it would have made the job much easier, but all he had was axe to carefully carve the tusks. The axe was one of the items he grabbed while he was massacring the monsters with Merlin protecting him. It seemed like a waste to throw it out, but as he didn't really need it, he kept it in his infinity pouch. Carving wasn't hard to do. All he had to do was concentrate his strength and scratch along the grain. This is an interesting experience. He chuckled out loud. Something he had never done. It wasn't a bad feeling. It must be because you get stronger by learning things you didn't know and by overcoming them. It wasn't bad for Mu Young to experience these things. It's probably better to make it a bit different than just having it shaped like a normal human. Didn't he just have to make it as beautiful as he could? To Mu Young, art was beauty. He thought that his concept wasn't bad. Scrape. Scrape. Mu Young's hands slowly moved faster. As he started to shape the bones and piece together the pieces, more than half of a day had passed. Mu Young nodded as he was satisfied with his finished work. A skeleton with small wings was laid out on the ground. As Mu Young activated Art of Death, a dark aura emitted from Mu Young's hand and wrapped around the skeleton. The material is decent. Art score of 15. Name, Slipshod Skeleton Who Cannot Fly. Type, Skeleton. Level, 21. Strength 33 Agility 19 Stamina 23 Intelligence 5 Wisdom 4. Rattle, Rattle. Skeleton stood up awkwardly. As Mu Young looked at the skeleton, he found out that the bilateral symmetry was slightly off. It was the first time he had made anything. He couldn't be satisfied on his first try. As if handicapped, the skeleton walked while dragging its right foot. A score of 15. It couldn't be considered as a high score, but compared to the serpent or the monkey, it was much better. Its stats were also quite decent. Maybe it was because he made it with the tusks of the elephant, but its strength was high. This should be similar to a typical undead. Take this. It was the axe I used to make you. Mu Young handed the axe he used to carve the tusks. Since the skeleton had a high level of strength, it was perfect for it. Crack. It made weird noises as it reached out to grab the axe. Asterisk. The temple was calm. The survivors, including Taehwan, gulped down their saliva as they blocked the entrance of the temple. Twenty days had passed since they had first arrived. He had heard from Mu Young that there would be a boss battle every ten days. If that was true, then today was the day a strong boss would make an appearance. Taehwan looked around. Fifteen survivors. Almost no one had died since the tenth day. It was due to Taehwan's leadership and his shield. However, today, Taehwan was nervous. Thump. Thump. Soon after, a huge monster appeared heading towards the entrance as the ground shook. A goblin. Everyone was puzzled after seeing it. It was 2.5 m tall, one-eyed monster, with a small horn on its forehead, holding a large bat. Whoever looked at it was reminded of a goblin. It seemed to be a female, considering her large breasts. It was the first time they faced a human-like monster. Gaa! The goblin ran towards them while screaming out loud. Let's act calmly. As usual, just attack behind me. The very first to act was Taehwan, with his shield of eradication. The only reason why there weren't many casualties was because Taehwan stood and blocked the front. But, the conditions weren't great this time. The shield of eradication's toughness buff worked when there were numerous of enemies. But, there was only one golem. Thump. Waff. It was only a single attack. But, it felt like his arm was being shattered. Taehwan clenched his teeth. As if it was unexpected, the goblin tilted her head. At that moment, a rain of arrows flew towards her. However, a fog-like shield was formed beside the goblin and all the arrows bounced off. Ah, as expected, the boss is different. It was on a different level than normal monsters. Even against Ralaka, it was Mu Young who killed the boss himself. Thump, thump, thump. Taehwan was at his limit after blocking a few more of the goblin's attacks. Crack. He wasn't able to handle her attack any longer and his bone snapped. Damn it. He felt like he was going to faint. Holding his right arm, he dropped onto the ground. The goblin slowly approached him. If only Hyungnim was here. Although he had made a resolution to protect the others by himself, there was a limit to his abilities. Soon, the goblin tried to smash Taehwan's head off with her bat. Taehwan closed his eyes. Swak. He only heard a noise, his head wasn't split open. Taehwan opened his eyes and saw an odd sight. A serpent? A huge serpent was wrapped around the goblin. Gua, gua. The enraged goblin held the serpent by its neck. She then threw the serpent on the ground and started to rip its body apart with her bare hands. Swing. Thump. At that moment, a dagger flew straight towards the goblin's head and embedded itself into the back of her head. As if the barrier didn't work properly, the goblin's body started to wobble. And then he appeared. Twack. Lowering his body as low as possible, he ran at an incredible speed, then flew up and sliced the neck of the goblin. Hyungnim. Goblins can't produce a barrier if they can't see where an attack is coming from. Aim for her back or her neck. Your back. 
Taekwon leaned forward and attempted to get up to greet him, but Ma Young stopped him. This isn't the end. A male is going to show up soon. Ga wa wa hia. The moment Ma Young finished his words, an enraged cry sounded out. The ground shook from just the sound. As they turned their heads, a completely red goblin snorted violently as he was staring deathly at them. Chapter 19, Blood Red Tower. Goblin. This goblin was different from the virtuous goblins that appeared in folk tales. There were a variety of goblins in the underworld, however all of them were strong, yet savage and cruel. The reddening of the skin when angry is the special trait of blaze goblins. Among goblins, blaze goblins were known for their foul temper. It seemed like the previously killed goblin was his mate. The goblin was angrier than he had ever been before. The goblin brandished its giant club. Soon a black fog formed above the goblin. Blaze! A flame created from the fog flew in the direction of Young. Since he was aware of what kind of attack he was going to make, it wasn't hard avoiding it. However, he wasn't finished with just one attack. Blaze! Blaze! In a moment, his surroundings became a sea of flames. Back off! Young grasped anguish. The flames of a blaze goblin weren't the kind that could be easily put out. Until the anger of the blaze goblin died down, the flames would endlessly burn everything in its surroundings. I will help you. Young glanced at Taehwan's current condition. The hand holding his shield was broken and his muscles were very distorted. If he pushed himself too hard in his current condition, his arm would have to be amputated. Slam! Young kicked Taehwan's body. Get lost. You aren't of any help. This was the truth. By needlessly pushing himself, he could end up being a hindrance in Young's battle. Also, it was better to face the blaze goblin by himself than with a group. Slash! Young forcefully cut the neck of the dead female goblin with the dagger embedded in her head. He then held the female goblin's head in his hands. Do you want her? Grah! Grah! As his mate's corpse was desecrated, the blaze goblin's red skin incomparably reddened. Excluding the goblin king, all goblins had lifelong mates. They were devoted to each other and spent their lives together. If their mate died, they didn't look for another. They had a very loyal side to them. His enemy was bad. Then take her. Young threw the head of the female goblin high above his head. When the blaze goblin moved to catch his mate's head, Young threw the dagger, predicting where the head would land, and quickly rushed out. Others may look at this and curse and point their fingers, however Young held the opinion of doing whatever it takes to win. Someone who was only kind will die. Only because Young knew to use any weakness, he was able to survive as the greatest assassin. Even if you were to say his end wasn't great. The blaze goblin caught the falling head of his mate, however a dagger stabbed into his back. He purposely took the hit. If he did not step in the way, his mate's head would have been pierced. The place where the head would fall and the direction of which the dagger flew completely intersected. Only if he was to sacrifice his back was he able to protect what he wanted to protect. As expected. Up until this point, it was as he planned in his head. Blaz as easy -e. Soon the whole body of the blaze goblin was burning. After carefully placing the female's head on the ground, the blaze goblin grinded his teeth and charged towards Young. Clash! Anguish bounced off. Immense monstrous power. However, as soon as Anguish had bounced off, he twisted his body and arrived at the blaze goblin's chest. Flames completely engulfed Young. The goblin won't be able to guard his blind spots. As he wasn't able to follow Young's instantaneous movements, the blaze goblin was unable to set up a guard. Using this opening, Anguish was wrenched into the blaze goblin's body. Kraha! The problem was the flames. Even if it was Young, if he was to receive these flames unconditionally, there was no way he was going to survive. The only reason he was able to last this long was due to the enhancement of a stat after taking the secret medicine of the sage. Magic resistance. The secret medicine of the sage was a liquid medication that would randomly raise one of his stats. Since it was random, it heavily relied on luck. However, Young knew of a method to reduce the options. The secret medicine of the sage's random stat would slightly differ depending on the time and place. Luckily, it was a full moon yesterday. The night of a full moon was the most abundant in magic power. There was an especially large amount of magic power reflected off the lakes. This was how Young was able to enhance his magic resistance. Magic resistance. Just like its name, it was able to raise the resistance against magic and special skills. It was rare for common equipment to have a magic resistance stat. Even related skills were rare and only cleric and support classes were able to raise magic resistance a little for a limited time. However, it was different if the basic magic resistance stat was increased. Depending on one's effort, it was possible to permanently raise the magic resistance stat. Being one of the strongest depended on if they used the secret medicine of the sage to raise their magic resistance, was there anything more to say? The problem was it was incredibly hard to obtain the secret medicine of the sage. As Mu Young was satisfied with four classes, he chose the talisman of Azura, otherwise he would have chosen the secret medicine of the sage. However, he was able to obtain the secret medicine of the sage through Merlin. It's a battle of who endures the longest. The dagger was laced with a strong neurotoxin. Even the blaze goblin would be affected by it. On top of that, Anguish was ceaselessly draining his blood. Cray-ah! 
He tried to get Myung off in any way possible, but Myung was also desperately holding on. If it was only a battle of endurance, it was more advantageous for Myung. As soon as the Blaze Goblin's strength weakened, anguish cut through his chest in a vertical line and pierced his throat. Slam! The Blaze Goblin fell to his knees. Myung drew anguish and sheathed it. You have successfully guarded against the charge of the goblin couple. All the survivors will be rewarded depending on their contribution. The level of contribution for Myung is 98.7%. Phenomenal. You have broken a new record. Will you leave your name in Solomon's Hall of Fame? If you decline, it will be displayed as no name. In the first boss battle, Myung had approximate level of contribution of 80%. As their group was smaller, it was much easier to monopolize the level of contribution. It was because he became incomparably stronger than himself 10 days ago. Just like before, Myung shook his head to decline. You have refused to leave your name in Solomon's Hall of Fame. First no name, 98.7%. Second Alexandro Quintart, 88.4%. Third Lucian, 86.3%. Alexandro was already the guild master of one of the nine great guilds, the Sun Guild, Lucian was someone who was first in Solomon's Hall of Fame in number of humans killed when Myung started to assassinate people. Fighting King Lucian. At first he wasn't too sure, but after looking at the boss battle rankings, he was certain. Although he didn't place within the top ten among humans, he was a monster who came close. His title, Fighting King, showed that he was a fighting psycho with strength second to none, never leaving an enemy, a complete wild man. The two of them both had high levels of contribution, however there was around 10% difference from Myung. Solomon's Hall of Fame, Blue Temple, too, has been added to your history. By the law of Solomon, a reward will be given to you. You have received the talisman creation skill. There was no choice as he was forcefully given a skill. As much as there was no choice, it was bound to be a useful reward. Myung expectantly checked the skill. Skill name, talisman creation, rank, nothing. Info, transform something that contains an object, creature, magic or holy power into a talisman. Only items the user possesses are able to be used. It was a skill that created talismans. Seeing how it wasn't ranked, it seemed like it could only hold one effect. Not bad. Depending on how the skill was used, it was better than most high-ranking items. Its usability was a bit broader than the infinity pouch. In the very least, infinity pouch had a size constraint and could not hold living creatures. However, talisman creation could accommodate a larger variety. Something containing magic or holy power, I guess these mean skills? This was the part that received most of his attention. If it was possible, it meant that he was able to convert the priest's blessing into a single-use talisman and use it during hunts. Also it would be useful for hiding things. Simply put, its uses were limitless. Myung lowered his head and gazed at the blaze goblin. The hand of the blaze goblin fell in the direction of the female goblin. He could feel his will to be together even in death. I'll do as you wish. A blaze goblin was the best material he could use currently. Myung dragged the two corpses in attempt to create an undead. Asterisk. Myung built a simple log cabin near the temple and locked himself inside. There was no one who would bother him now. In fact, there were quite a few that were happy with Myung's return. In this place, there was no one who could hunt the boss by themselves. No, even facing the monster raid every day was too much. However, Myung would be able to take care of these by himself. If for a while, they struggled to live, with Myung, they were able to be more relaxed. There were even a lot of people leaving food in front of Myung's cabin. Going beyond leaning against Myung, there were some who started to revere his power. Also, there was a rumor Myung was able to handle death. This rumor started from the skeleton and zombie guarding his cabin. The mixture of fear and awe made some even deify Myung. Myung Nim, 1. I killed the wicked woman who slandered Myung Nim. Late at night. As soon as Myung stepped out of his cabin, a man kneeled and handed him a package wrapped in cloth. A familiar face of a woman was inside the cloth. Kim Soyoung. At one time, she tried to seduce Myung and failed, next, she stuck next to Oh Young, who died by Myung's hands, a woman who walked a stray path. Although he never paid attention to her, it seemed like she was slandering Myung when she was alive. It seemed as though she thought that making Myung the bad guy was the only way for her to survive. And then she died from a man who followed Myung as if he was a god. Soyoung's eyes were wide open. How cruel was her death that her face still held a pained expression. Myung frowned. A human killing another human wasn't something weird at this point. However someone killing another for his sake felt different. Even more, he didn't feel happy about this kind of attention. Clear it away. D does it not satisfy you? Please do not leave us. The man slammed his head on the ground. His figure showed that he completely believed that without Myung at the temple, they would all die. This wasn't what I hoped for. Following something blindly would eventually lead to only being able to see things in black and white. And seeing things only in black and white was the greatest deterrent in unifying humanity. While humanity was on the brink of destruction, the forest of death's clients may or may not have increased, but they definitely did not decrease. He acted so he didn't have to see that ever again, but to think out that because of him, these same events were happening, made him feel terrible. 
If you don't leave within three seconds, I'll cut your head off. Yi. Yes. The man held the cloth and ran away. Taehwan will punish him in the morning. Taehwan was trying to maintain rules and protect others in his own way. Mo Young clicked his tongue as he looked up at the night sky. An awfully large amount of stars was shooting down. Ten days from now. This was the time left until the gates would open and teleport them into the underworld. And before that time, there was something he had to get. After five days, I will climb the tower. On the 25th day, towers will automatically emerge at the centers of all the temples. The tower only allowed those who have killed humans to enter. And once they entered, until they completed a special objective, no one was allowed to leave. I have to obtain the lunatic sovereign's ring from there. The tower was connected to every temple. The surviving elite would gather there. And only by massacring approximately 200 people who enter would he be able to obtain the lunatic sovereign's ring. Although it was the most savage condition, he had to obtain the ring. The greatest possible treasure earned from the blue temple was that ring. Also, the lunatic sovereign's ring was one of the items essential to awakening the S-rank weapon, Diabolos. A weapon above S-rank was almost non-existent in the underworld. No more than an amount you could count with your hand. So, he had to once again become a slaughter to accomplish his goals. Only those who have killed humans were allowed inside the tower. It was the start of a blood-red festival for murderers. Mu Young's eyes sunk endlessly. 1. Nim to indicate reverence, high standing, or in this case, God. Chapter 20, Blood Red Tower. He sat with his legs crossed and meditated. Silently re-evaluating himself, Mu Young would always meditate like this when he wanted to contemplate on his life and the mistakes he had made. And this time, he closed his eyes to plan something. He was conceptualizing the figure and the use of the undead he would create from the corpses of the goblin couple. To Mu Young, this sort of effort itself was new to him. The pondering Mu Young opened his eyes. The goblins looked too pitiful. Susie, who was silently playing with the Emperor of Shrew Mice, King King, said directly. The only one who would walk into Mu Young's home with no hesitation was Susie. The Susie, who was stricken with fear, watching Mu Young cut off Ji Young's head, seemed like she had changed, as she would come whenever she wanted to play with King King. Mu Young didn't refuse her. However, it was rare for one to let another enter their personal space. Mu Young, himself, thought it was strange and came to one conclusion. It must be a specific trait of the Valkyrie of Dawn. Susie would receive some care from everyone at the temple. If it was like before, this would have been unimaginable. Everyone would have chosen to ignore the young Susie for their own survival. Perhaps, the Valkyrie of Dawn had an effect that would make surrounding humans more friendly to one another. Its effect was similar to the one the Saintess, Snow, had in the past. The goblins are pitiful? As long as she wasn't hostile, there was no reason for Mu Young to chase her out. If she was a disturbance, it may be different, but whenever he was doing something, Susie would even go as far as slowing her breathing to stay silent. After asking her again, Susie answered. The couple wanted to stay together. She pointed to the corpses of the couple. The blaze goblin definitely wanted to be with the head of the female goblin until the very dead. Aren't they together? Not that. A bit more closer, um. It seemed like she was having a hard time thinking of the right words. However, he understood the gist of her intention. Mu Young motionlessly stared at the two goblins. There are trees that fuse to form a single tree as their branches tangle together. People called this phenomenon, inosculation. Fuse them together? Combining the structures of similar goblins didn't seem like it would result in a more special undead. However, instead of replacing certain parts of the body, if he was to connect them, would it yield a better result? He had to make it so that the two bodies move like one. He thought that this was a challenge worth challenging. The exposed skeletons of the goblins had their backs facing each other. After burrowing grooves in their spines, he interlinked them like a jigsaw. If, by any chance, two individuals were combined into this form, they wouldn't even be able to walk properly. Only after they knew each other's tempo and were considerate enough, would they be able to move. However, these two were a couple. Even in death, the blaze goblin didn't hesitate to throw his body to protect the corpse of his mate. Although goblins were aggressive and cruel, their loyalty towards their mate was better than humans. Until they died, they would only care for a single goblin. I'll do as you wish. Although it was a simple job, he was satisfied. According to the blaze goblin's wishes, Mu Young placed them as close together as possible. The head of the female was embedded in her chest. Soon after, Mu Young raised his hands and casted the art of death skill. The material is good. Your skill rank is very low. The two goblins have completely different attributes. However, their combination is perfect. Finally, a short scene played in Mu Young's head. The story of the two goblins unfolded like a movie. A battlefield. Hundreds of blaze goblins and the ice-attributed frost goblins were gruesomely fighting against each other. The two met each other as enemies. Eventually, the blaze goblins lost and everyone died. However, for some reason, the female goblin hid the dying male. She cared for him devotedly for a long time. The male was touched by her sincerity and proposed to her. Even facing opposition from their tribes, they promised to care for each other for their whole lives. However, they could only run and escape from pursuit of their tribes. 
perhaps it was inevitable that they ended up at the Blue Temple. Although they did die by Muyung's hands, they were at peace. Their love for each other would continue on in death. Love completed through death. The Death Lord is very pleased. Art Score 71. A surprising work of art has been made. Name, Skeleton of Fire and Ice. Level, 47. Type, Skeleton. Strength 45 Agility 36 Stamina 51 Intelligence 21 Wisdom 34. Plus can cast a mantle of fire and ice in a radius of 5m. Plus can use the skills, flame cannon and ice pillar. Plus very slow. Your skill rank has increased from F to E rank. Mu Young read and reread the words for a long time. This work was incomparable to the previous works he had made. Creek. Soon, the moving skeleton of fire and ice began to undergo a transformation. The empty sockets of the blaze goblin were filled with flames while frost began to settle on the whole body of the ice goblin. Ha. Huh. Honestly, Mu Young's thoughts on the undead were simple. Quality over quantity. Anyone would be pressured from the increasing amount of undead during war. However, the undead in front of his eyes was enough to smash Mu Young's understanding. Using only an F-ranked skill and some decent materials, he was able to create something beyond his imagination. The story is important. Unlike the other undead, there was a story to the two goblins. That story was reflected in the art score. The combinations of undead he had seen in his dream seemed to have been a trap. If I get a high score, does my skill rank up? It seemed that no matter how many of those undead he makes, it wouldn't be very effective. He thought it was hard, but now he realized he was thinking inside the box. Undead were monsters that shine depending on the death of the living. Obviously, the focus should be placed on the stories of when they were living. It looks like it will be of some help. Mu Young looked at the skeleton of fire and ice and nodded in satisfaction. Its stats weren't very different from his own. He felt that it could be of vital importance in the tower. Although its flaw was that it was slow, it wasn't a big concern. As he could just make it into a talisman and use it when he needed it. Talisman creation. Mu Young placed his hand on the skeleton of fire and ice and activated the skill. The skeleton of fire and ice quickly shrunk and soon became a single talisman. Now, whenever he wanted, he could summon the skeleton of fire and ice with this talisman. Asterisk. Soon, the 25th day, since they arrived, had arrived. And at the same time the sun was rising, the ground shook as a giant tower emerged. The tower was odd. Its red sheen made one image blood and an unknown moan sounded out. A sign made of rock was erected at the entrance of the tower. They were simple rules. Unless one was obsessed with murder, they would not enter. In reality, everyone was just staring at the tower. Only Mu Young was entering that place. If you don't want to die, don't come. This was the only warning Mu Young could give. Asterisk. Mu Young completely erased his expressionless expression. Abyss-like eyes and the murderous intent hidden within. He was the one who killed countless people for 40 years. Although he resolved to live a different life, the past wasn't something that could fade. The blood of the forest of death still flowed in him. Cold and heartless. He was a monster who would kill others without a moment's hesitation. What's more, as his targets were all murderers, and those that willingly entered the tower to kill, there was nothing to hide. The tower was like a first-round interview venue. They would meet after transferring into the underworld. If it was like any other day, Mu Young would have worn a mask to hide his identity. However, Mu Young simply unsheathed anguish and walked forward. There was no need for a mask if he killed everyone he saw. Chapter 21, Blood Red Tower. He had killed them all. Twenty-five days had passed since he had been summoned to this strange world. Just a few days ago, there were about four people who had survived. But even those few survivors were killed by him two days ago. I killed them all. Tang Xiaolei grinned. Just thinking of the expressions people made just before they died were enough to make him stiff. The loud cries and pleas of his victims. The pitiful look in their eyes excited him. Since he acted as secretly as he could, no one knew that Tang Xiaolei was the murderer, even in their last moment. When there were only four people left, it was a bit difficult as people had their doubts, but even that was amusing in its own way. Either way, they all died at the end. More. I can kill more. With glittering eyes, he licked his dagger. He could still remember the thrill he felt when he found out that there were others inside the tower. A tower full of murderers, just when he was feeling sad that there wasn't anyone else left to kill. He was like a fish in water. This was truly the place where he was meant to be. No one can stop me. Was it at the time when he had killed ten people? The rare class, slaughterer, he received then, suited him perfectly. It was like a perfect gift God had prepared for him to kill other humans. Slaughterer allowed him to enhance all abilities by three when he faced other humans. So he knew that when he faced other humans, he had the confidence that he will not lose to anyone. No, it was impossible for him to lose. On earth, he was just one of billions of Chinese. However, things were now different. The reaper who brought death upon humans. The reaper of death. Thump. Thump. At that moment, he could hear footsteps nearby. Like a person who found something delicious to eat, Tang Xiaolei ran across the hall, drooling hungrily. Quahahaha. Be my first victim. The opponent was a man. A dark-haired man with a long sword in his hand. 
The weapon seemed quite decent, just in time. He was going to kill him and take his weapon. That's what he thought when he approached him and stabbed his body with his dagger. Crunch. Tumble. Tang Xiaolei realized his vision was lowering very rapidly. It was strange. The man was expressionless. The dagger didn't even reach him in the first place. Ah. Only then did Tang Xiaolei see the face of the reaper who stood behind the man. The real reaper who sentenced deaths, a number incomparable to himself, stood there. That person. That person is real. The wailing of thousands of souls. It was the last thing Tang Xiaolei heard before he died. Mu Yang climbed the tower. The tower had a total of five floors. The first floor was very large and it had too many ways that led up that it was inconvenient to search for all of them. And it wasn't like he had the time. The total number of people in the tower has been updated. Less than 1,337 people. It was the message that appeared the moment he killed the Chinese man who was running towards him. It told him the number of people who entered the tower. However, the number was quickly decreasing. Nearly one person was dying every 10 seconds. 200 people among them. It wasn't going to be easy. Even Ben the Slayer had to work with 10 people to help each other out to get 200 kills each and for him to get the lunatic sovereign's ring. He had heard that they used 9 people to lure the prey, which Ben would then kill. So it was very time-consuming for someone to find and kill 200 people on their own. However, Mu Young did not mind it. Mu Young was an assassin. He had successfully assassinated people better than anyone else. It was his specialty was to sense people nearby and to sneak up on them. Even the slightest tremor in the air, or a small vibration. If he didn't pass up even the smallest trace, he believed he could kill 200 people within five days. Mu Young closed his eyes. Soon, not far from where he was, he was able to detect his next prey. Please help me. A man and a woman were running away. They were sweating profusely as murderers were chasing them down. Even if they screamed, no one was willing to help them. From behind, they could only sense the people coming to kill them. Oh, Appa, I'm tired. No, we can't stop now. How did this happen? If, if we didn't kill those people back then, cut the crap. Then should we have just let them do as they please? They deserved their deaths. The man and the woman were lovers. They were summoned together and had been barely able to survive until now. However, her beauty was the problem. Late at night, two men tried to rape her, but before they could succeed, the man found them and killed one of the two men with a rock. And the other man was killed by the woman. As a result, the two were branded as murderers and were banished into the tower. If anything was unfair, it was the situation. But, it wasn't like these murderers were willing to listen. Leave, leave me behind, they are after me. If we go on like this, we will both die. The woman realized that she was holding him back. However, the man could still remember the look on those crazy murder-driven bastards, how they smacked their lips when they saw her face. His face crunched up. I told you not to say things like that. Then just die? You want to just die? If you're exhausted, then just get on my back. We can still run away. There was no time to waste. Even at that moment, they could hear many footsteps approaching them. The woman bit her lips and got on his back. The speed was a bit slow, but they had no other choice. At that moment. Clash. Gah. M.O. Monster. A scream echoed behind them. Appa, this sound is. It was the sound of the people who tried to kill the couple. It couldn't have been a mistake. Someone must be fighting them. Shouldn't we go back and help? The woman cautiously made an opinion. If someone was really helping them, then it might be better to help the person. But, there was also the danger that they might still get tracked down if the murderers won. The man pondered for a moment and nodded his head. He felt that they had a better chance on surviving if they combined their strength with that person to fight against them. And besides, it was human nature to help a person who was in danger. They turned their footsteps. And, in a moment, the couple were able to witness a scene that was hard to believe. Sa, save me. Please. My arm, my arm. The murderers were a group of seven. Just a single man was fighting against them. As there was a saying that all things yield to numbers, a minority couldn't win against the majority. However, no common sense worked for him. He was strong. In an instant, he finished off all seven of the murderers. Afterwards, he looked at the two couple. Gulp. The bodies with their arms and legs cut off were lined on the floor. At the moment when their eyes met, the two were unable to move. They had met a countless number of people, but they had never seen a man with that kind of aura. The man next to the woman tried to sweep his fears away and started to talk. Are, are you okay? Why didn't you just run away? We came to help you. It wasn't like they were lying. They didn't realize how the man knew that they were running away from the murderers. Eventually, he, Mu Young, scrunched up his eyes. Affection could only be given by the strong. It was a truth they should have realized by surviving the 25 days. The affection spared on the weak could make the situation worse. Also, seeing the conditions of the couple, it didn't seem like they could last the five days. The women had sprained her foot and even if the man tried not to show it, his face was blue as if his internal organs were twisted. They probably had entered the tower because they killed someone, but in here, there were a lot of crazy people, craving to kill. If they were caught by them, they would experience all sorts of terrors before they die. 
To meet Mae Young at that moment, it was hard to say if they were lucky or unlucky. Kill everyone. It was the reason why he decided not to wear a mask. He thought there was no need for it as he was going to kill everyone he faced. At least in this tower, he planned to be a reaper who brought forth death. That meant that he was not willing to go back on his thoughts. Swish. Anguish screamed. Mae Young gave off an icy cold expression. You have killed 50 people. From now on, a red dot will show everyone the location of the slayer's dot. The location can be traced using your status viewer. You could find a map of the tower with the status viewer. And on the map, Mae Young's location appeared as a red dot. About now, everyone would have received a similar warning message. I can't just run around blindly. A normal person would try to avoid where a red dot appeared. After 24 hours had passed since he had first entered the tower, a new message appeared. A day has passed. First floor will now close. Total of 895 survivors. A bleak smile appeared on Mae Young. The tower had a total of five floors. Every day, a floor will be filled with water and closed off. If you didn't want to drown, you had to climb up to the next floor. Even if Mae Young's location was exposed by the red dot, even if someone wanted to avoid him, there were sections where there were no other escape routes. The entrances leading to the third floor. There were two entrances that led to the third floor from the second. And Mae Young was planning on blocking one of the two entrances. The other entrance would be clear, but it still won't be easy to pass by. Skeleton of fire and ice. Mae Young took out a talisman. And as he shook it like he was shaking off some dust, the skeleton of fire and ice appeared. Crack. Crack. The skeleton rattled as its bones creaked. Mae Young pointed towards an entrance that was about 5 m wide and quietly spoke. Kill everyone who passes by. Two entrances. And one of the two was blocked by the skeleton of fire and ice. People needed to make a choice. To face Mae Young or to face the skeleton. Or to die from drowning. Whatever choice they made, it would not be an easy decision to make. Now, I just need to wait. Like a fisher who waits patiently after casting his line. Chapter 22, Blood Red Tower. As he stood with his arms crossed, he waited for people to walk by the entrance. Prey started to flood in sooner than he anticipated. Even if he was identified as a slayer and his location was exposed by the red dot, not everyone tried to avoid him. I came hoping to see how strong the so-called slayer is, but aren't you just a weakling? Foolish people wanted to prove their strength. There were quite a few people who came, curious to see the face of the slayer. And curiosity killed the cat. Slice. He cleanly cut out the wrist of a muscular man who was holding a sword. In an instant, as blood gushed out, he grabbed hold of his wrist and screamed out loud. Gah! This, this bastard! And as his eyes met Mae Young's cold eyes, he quickly quieted down. He couldn't move either of his feet. It was similar to when you face a lion and your feet get all tied up. And, no, I said it wrong. Friend, yes? Give me just one. Guck! Anguish, which squeezed into his organs, started to suck out all the blood. Shortly, the man dried up like a mummy and dropped on the floor. Like him, there were others who disregarded Mae Young's first impression and fought against him. Usually, these types of people didn't even last a minute or change their words after one of their body parts was cut off. In front of Mae Young, corpses were piling up neatly. As the smell of blood overpowered the surroundings and thick blood was splattered all over the floor, Mae Young cut up the corpses into smaller parts, as best and as cruel he could, and arranged them in front of the entrance. Warning and division. Even Mae Young, himself, would be no match if dozens of men started to force their way in. Although he was certain he was the strongest within the tower, it was only in a one-on-one -on -one scenario. Although a strong person being able to overwhelm a 100 people was the reality in the underworld, he was not at that level. Mae Young coldly recognized the reality. Overconfidence was poison and was the main culprit for destroying oneself. Against monsters, he would transform into a beast to slaughter them. However, against humans, who knew how to think, he would have to use that to his advantage. The people who see these corpses would think they would not be able to tread further by themselves. So they would try to gather together, but would it be that simple? If I kill five people, I can leave. It was one of the conditions to leave the tower. It was the easiest condition to make people stricken with fear to divide. Unless someone who possessed an unrivaled charisma dropped down like a comet, it was certain they were going to divide. It would be the same at the other entrance. And because the skeleton of fire and ice was not human, they would get a taste the most primitive feelings of fear. Within these people, there will be some who would try to force their way through. Although humans were rational, if they lost that rationality, they will act recklessly. Then, Mae Young closed his eyes as he leaned against the wall of the entrance. It was to know if someone approached him. Either way, it was a battle against the time from now. Asterisk. 36 hours had passed since they had entered the tower. Slayer has killed 100 people. Now, if a slayer comes nearby, an alert will sound from the status viewer. After 11 hours and 56 minutes, the second floor will close. The same message appeared in front of everyone's eyes. The slayer was blocking the two entrances. It didn't take long for everyone to realize that it meant that all the courageous people have been killed and that they needed to kill that slayer to pass through the entrance. We need to stick together to live. One deadly strong opponent. 
It gave people a reason to group up. If someone with a special trait appeared, it was obvious they were going to group around him. And Colin was one of the people who had a special trait. A prince. It was a unique class, but he was also the prince of England before he was summoned. At most, he could confer knighthood upon 30 people at most and, depending on their conferred knighthood, their abilities will be strengthened. Loyalty was just an extra benefit. If the majority became his enemy, he would die. This penalty existed, but even with it, it was definitely an attractive class. Usually, the greater the class, a greater penalty existed. And Colin entered the tower with ten loyal subordinates. However, the slayer was strong. Even if he didn't face him face to face, he knew how strong he was. It was logically impossible for him to kill 100 people by himself. Colin who believed that even 10 wasn't enough, decided to increase his numbers a bit more. I will not kill you guys. Instead, work with me. Colin spoke to a group of five collapsed on the floor. Out of the five, the one who seemed to be their leader spat at Colin's face. Pooh. What kind of crap are you trying to pull? These bastards. You're all desperate to die, aren't you? A man beside Colin, who was wearing a full plate of armor, walked out. While holding a sword, he tried to cut off their necks, but Colin stopped him. Sir Swin, I'm fine. However, Prince. These rude bastards. Punch! Colin's fist smacked the chest of the man named Swin. Even though Swin was wearing a full plate of armor, the armor caved in as he flew back. Cough! As Swin coughed up blood, Colin spoke. Sir Swin, I told you I was fine. I, I'm sorry. Swin's face was filled with fear. Even besides the unique class, Colin knew how and when to use his power properly to put others under his control. It could be said that he was born with the ability to rule over others. Therefore, in reality, the penalty was non-existent for him, as it was unlikely for more than half of his followers to betray him. The five who witnessed his strength only gulped their saliva. And then, Colin resumed negotiations, smiling as he pressured them. Work with me. If you do, you will be able to enjoy all the glory. Asterisk. First, it was just one person. Mu Young sliced a man who was wildly running towards him. Next, two people came at him. Afterwards, five. By then, Mu Young noticed what they were up to. Someone is testing me. Who was this person? Mu Young was very interested. A man with considerable leadership had appeared. He had been rallying up people and cornering them into a deadly situation. Only to measure Mu Young's strength. He could slowly feel the killing intent of the person who would try to kill him after measuring his strength. Their abilities were strengthened. I wonder if they have a priest class. And those who attacked Mu Young were all consistently strong. Of course, even if he said strong, it was all the same to him. However, they were still above average. He was certain after seeing how they were unfamiliar with their own strength and were just randomly swinging their weapons. If they were a complete party with a priest class, Mu Young might have fought a bit seriously. But, Mu Young only made a small smile. It was like something was tickling him. It was similar to the feeling he had when he was appointed with a difficult mission. The habit he gained while living as an assassin for the longest time didn't disappear. It wasn't the type of habit he could fix if he wanted to. Then, it was unlikely for the person to appear unless he was certain of Mu Young's strength. If he had a brain, it was more than likely for him to just watch from afar. Mu Young couldn't approach him. Since he became a slayer, a warning will sound on the status viewer if he was to approach him. If he did, the enemy would hide even deeper. Push. After Mu Young had killed seven people, the last person to survive had stabbed Mu Young through his abdomen. Ah. Ah. Clink. As if the man who stabbed Mu Young couldn't believe it himself, he cried out a weird sound, dropped his sword as he ran away without looking back. Just after the man disappeared from his sight, Mu Young pulled out the sword from his abdomen. My organs aren't damaged. He purposely got stabbed with the sword. He moved so that the sword would pass by all his organs. He couldn't do anything about the blood that was spilling out, but there were lots of dead bodies nearby. Gulp. Gulp. As Mu Young thrust anguish in a corpse, it started to absorb the blood. His wound was healing at a noticeable pace. Now, what are you going to do? Mu Young looked towards the direction the man ran. Since he asked the question, a reply will come soon. It wouldn't be weird if the man decided to make a full frontal attack against Mu Young after learning that Mu Young was injured. He knew that the battle would be tough if the numbers were great. However, Mu Young gathered all the scattered corpses. Alone, but not truly. Lord class. Death Lord. That was right. He could just make allies. Soldiers of death who would never betray him and were willing to fight with all they had for Mu Young. Chapter 23, Blood Red Tower. Stamina was consumed to create undead. However, that was only when he made an effort in creating undead. As the skill rank increased, his expenditure of stamina decreased slightly, however, Mu Young only focused on creating the corpses into undead as they were. He didn't care by what percent their original abilities decreased. The unknown was horrifying. In this world, not being knowledgeable enough was really a crime. Even if the people who entered the tower survived the 25 days, fighting different monsters, they lacked knowledge of the undead. As they didn't know how to face them, it wouldn't be easy for them to come out alive. That was why some of the undead were roaming around the tower looking for food. What, you? Didn't you die? 
As Colin's comrade, who was sent to the Slayer, returned, people came up to greet him. People gathered around their comrade who was limping towards them and each spoke. Why isn't this bastard replying? Leave him alone, he seems severely injured. They really didn't have the slightest doubt. They didn't notice the unique smell of his body or anything strange about his appearance. It was because. They had never experienced it. The fear of undead. The horror of having your once comrade biting your neck. Crunch. Gah. Is, is this kid crazy? Yo, get away, get away from him. As the zombie bit the person closest to him, three people tried to help, but it was no use. The lowest level among the undead, the zombie's only useful weapon was the strong biting strength of his jaws. Unless someone ripped apart his jaws, he would never let go of his prey. Only when the zombie decided to let go, did the man drop down on the ground with blood gushing out from his bitten neck. Gore. As the zombie made a half-gurgling sound, as if he was mocking them, all three of them grabbed hold of their weapons. Swing. It's a monster. It's not human. Only then did they grasp the magnitude of the problem. Afterwards, the fight was dull. Until they realized that the zombie's weakness was his head, they continuously poked through its body until its body was a beehive. Ha, ha, fucking monster. Even when the zombie completely stopped moving, they kept kicking the corpse to vent their anger. Although they thought it was over, they didn't realize this was, in fact, the most dangerous moment. Grab, gah, the man who was bitten by the zombie to death had come back alive. Asterisk. You have killed 131 people. Vicious Slayer. You have achieved a new record of the tower. Dot. Will you leave your name in Solomon's Hall of Fame? If you decline, it will be displayed as no name. Dot. Mo Young shook his head. 131 people. Mo Young's record increased even when the undead killed humans. After he had reached third place for killing over 90 people, it seemed he had reached a new record. If Mo Young could remember correctly, the top score was made by Ben the Slaughterer, but the time period was different. Ben the Slaughterer hasn't been summoned yet. He needed to wait three more years for Ben, who received the Lunatic Sovereign's ring by killing more than 200 people, to be summoned. However, as Mu Young had already reached the top score, he was planning to continue increasing his kill count. Therefore, Ben the Slaughterer will probably not be able to set a new record. Blood Red Tower has been added to your history. You have refused to leave your name in Solomon's Hall of Fame. First place, no name, 131 people. Second place, Wang Chung Lin, 130 people. Third place, Lucian, 111 people. The reward will be given once he left the tower. Even if there weren't any extra messages, he didn't mind. Wang Chung Lin. However, he couldn't help but frown as that name appeared in the records. Wang Chung Lin. It was the real name of the chief who led the forest of death. Out of hundreds of assassins, Mu Young was the only one who knew the real name of the chief. He was truly a shadow as he existed in the boundaries of this world. If Mu Young didn't break through his brainwashing, he wouldn't have known the chief's real name in his lifetime. Crunch. From the current list of people Mu Young had to kill, Wang Chung Lin was, of course, his top priority. Even now, he will be growing the forest of death as the people he had killed with his hands were unable to rest in peace and were in infinite pain. Like Mu Young in the past, there will be a continuous rise of people who are kidnapped and forced to perform these hell-like duties. Wait for me. For now, it wasn't the right time. Mu Young was only given one chance. He wasn't as easygoing as to think he would be given another chance to return to the past. As his memories were clear, there was no way for Wang Chung Lin to avoid death. Mu Young calmed his rage. In an instant, his breathing returned to normal and his heartbeat became regular. It wasn't like he could fulfill his revenge right away. Instead, he needed to focus on getting the lunatic sovereign's ring. Zombies have a high chance of infecting their prey. He couldn't say that the zombies themselves were strong. The time they could move was short and they rotted fast if they didn't continue to consume humans. However, because of their contagiousness, people needed to be alert. But those who were unaware of the undead were just good prey. The zombies were continuously increasing in numbers. Colin, that bitch. He used us knowing we were gonna die? To the third floor. It's impossible on the second floor. The status, status viewer is ringing. The other entrance is being blocked by a skeleton. And the bastard called Slayer has a serious injury. We have a chance. Mu Young could sense five people fairly close by. The challengers approached, knowing that Mu Young the Slayer was at that location. They seemed to have made a detour after seeing the skeleton of fire and ice in front of the other entrance. They are starting to split up. He could sense that the group that was gathering people had started to break apart. And also that the person in the middle of all this was a man called Colin. His comrades who were killed by Mu Young would come back alive as undead only attack them. It seemed impossible for Colin to gain the trust of the people. It was like Mu Young had planned. He just quietly unsheathed anguish. Asterisk. Slayer has killed 150 people. Following the laws of Solomon, depending on the level of contribution, a reward will be given to those who kill the Slayer. Dot. The second floor will close after 4 hours and 49 minutes. Was it a safety measure? The alert level about Mu Young would change in intervals of 50 kills. And as he reached 150 people, he was recognized as the boss. As if it didn't want Mu Young to kill anymore. 
However, the number of people who came to the entrance to kill Mo Young had decreased over time. It couldn't be helped. There was no way that people would come crawling to a place if they knew it meant their deaths. It was because they all entered the tower to hunt, not to be hunted. Mo Young waited patiently. They didn't like the zombies, Mo Young, or the skeleton of fire and ice. Then he wondered, what kind of decision will people make? Escape. By killing five people they could leave the tower. It was an absolute proposition and their only way out. As people gathered, their selfishness tended to grow stronger. For now, they will group up because of Colin, but it was only a matter of time. I should start moving. There was no point in blocking the entrance any further. Colin would most likely try to leave the place to save himself or to arrange an all-out attack on Mo Young since he was now recognized as the boss. It was foolish to just continue blocking an entrance. Zombies were now scattered all around the second floor and, through them, he was able to figure out the location of the people. Mo Young just had to move. Their confusion will only increase if they hear that the Slayer had started to hunt. The decisions and the fates of those who were cornered were already decided. Asterisk. Beep, beep. An alert sounded from the status viewer. The red dot on the map was moving quickly. The movements of the Slayer, who used to only guard the entrance, made people nervous. Gah. People who faced the red dot were surely killed. The people who were still alive could only hear dying screams of the victims. People were frightened out of their senses. The combination of zombies and the Slayer were enough for them to lose their souls. Stab. In the end, someone had made a drastic decision. Cough. You. I'm, I'm sorry. If I just kill you, I will have five kills. I don't want to die. They gathered because of Colin, but their priority was to survive. A bright light wrapped around the body of the man who stabbed his own comrade. And as if it was a lie, the man's body soon disappeared. The people who watched the scene felt as if the line they were holding on to broke free. The first time was always hard, but, afterwards, it would progressively get easier. Beep, beep, beep. Even so, the red dot kept moving. Die. Ah. The robust group made up of tens of people could only be shaken by the fear of death. But, there was something he couldn't understand at all. They clearly said that the slayer was severely injured. That he was stabbed with a sword and his blood was gushing out. However, the slayer didn't even care about the zombies and kept moving. By him, a lot of people had died. There was only one thought that came up on everyone's mind. Is he a monster? A thought that it might be possible for him to not be human. A suspicion that he might even be controlling the zombies himself. Who the hell is the slayer? Finally, someone screamed out. It was obvious. The person who told everyone that the slayer was injured had ended up having a convulsive death. The messages that popped in front of the people were the only way for them to learn about the Slayer. The words that stated how many people he had killed. In the end, no one knew if he was a human or a monster. No one. Chapter 24, Blood Red Tower. Anguish was soaked in blood. Because of the endless amount of blood, it was unable to absorb all of it. Drip. Drip. The blood ran down the edge of the sword and dripped on the floor. However, a puddle of blood was already forming on the ground. Mu Young's appearance was that of a vampire. As if he craved for blood, he instantly assassinated five more people. These five sheep who were stricken with fear and weren't able to cooperate with each other were unable to do anything against the wolf. This has to be a dream. Mo Young wielded his sword at a man who fell to the floor who had lost the will to even run away. Slash. Swish. Naturally, anguish was sheathed once again. Slayer has killed two hundred people. Following the laws of Solomon, excluding the Slayer, everyone will receive a toughness blessing. The second floor will close after two hours and thirty-one minutes. Less than 257 survivors. It wasn't satisfied in labeling Mu Young as the boss and had to go and give everyone else a blessing. As if it was trying to balance it out. Mu Young could understand why Ben the Slaughterer stopped his massacre after 200 kills. He probably got scared. He valued his life. The toughness blessing protected the person from the effects of spells and curses and also negated negative emotions, like fear. When fear disappeared, a prey is no longer simply a prey. If they combined their strengths and used their now clear-headed minds, the hunter might be the one to get bitten. I've now fulfilled the condition to receive the lunatic sovereign's ring. Normally, a person would usually stop after reaching their goal. Mu Young's ultimate goal in entering the tower was to receive the lunatic sovereign's ring and he had already achieved it. If he continued to progress, he didn't know what they would try to do in an attempt to kill the slayer. But, Mu Young was interested. If there wasn't a condition for the slayer to be at a disadvantage, he would have stopped by now. He didn't particularly enjoy pointless bloodbaths. However, after every 50 kills, Mu Young's situation also changed disadvantageously. Was it simply just to make it balanced? Or because they didn't want the Slayer to kill everyone inside the tower? No way. The tower or the underworld were both not all that friendly of a place. As the conditions get harder, the rewards will also become better. An immutable law. In this world, a person was rewarded by overcoming hardship. The problem was most would die in the process, but it was still worth a try. Even if Mu Young returned with his memories intact, there was no way to ensure a victory against the demons by following a fixed path. Mu Young looked towards the survivors. 257 people. 
There was enough prey. This, this is impossible. Colin wasn't able to come back to his senses. The current situation was way beyond what he had imagined. Truly, something impossible had occurred. I'm going to die? The people he had appointed knighthood had turned their backs and started to escape. The people he tried hard to gather, half had scattered or were dead, and of the ten people who followed Colin before he had even entered the tower, three had already escaped. It was the worst situation. Death was slowly approaching. As Colin had always been a winner his entire life, losing was something Colin was unfamiliar with. Born as the Prince of England, he always reigned over numerous amounts of people. However, no amount of authority worked on his enemy. Die by the condition of his class or die in the hands of the Slayer. But, how was he to contend against a monster if he couldn't even step on his shadow? Escape. It was easy killing five men. It was a decision a ruler should never make. Colin was seriously considering an option he has never made in his life. At the moment he was licking his lips nervously. Slayer has killed 200 people. Excluding the Slayer, everyone will receive a toughness blessing. Swish. The wind blew. At the same time, he felt as though something was covering his body. His thumping heartbeat slowly calmed back down to normal. His brain which was solely fixed on fear started to function again. What do you want to do? As the man who was wearing a leather armor and holding a mace asked, Colin spoke. Lord Alberts, the man is cleverly avoiding our location. Aren't I right? Yes. The people he had killed so far were the ones who had run away. In other words, it means he fears our gathering of people. Indeed, yes. Gather everyone. Now, we will commence hunting. They were taken back for a moment due to the appearance of zombies and the movements of the Slayer, but they had far greater numbers on their side. About a hundred people. Originally, they had about double their current number. Even though he didn't knight everyone, the fact that Colin was able to bring together this many people in a short time proved his ability. It was doable. He just panicked because he had never met anyone who threatened his life. That son of a bitch. How dare he humiliate me like this. Colin couldn't accept the fact that he was frightened for a moment. I will definitely kill you. No matter what happens, I will kill you for sure. Clench. Colin ground his teeth as he projected his murderous intent towards where the Slayer might be located. Asterisk. Zombies were quickly decreasing in numbers. People, who were blessed with toughness, had their fear reduced to a certain degree and started to fight back. Gather. If he left them alone, they would only be defeated by the enemy one by one. All the thirty-some-odd zombies who used to roam around the second floor started to gather towards Muyung. By this process, Muyung was able to notice that Colin was the man behind the hunt. The widespread arrangement of people started to move in around Muyung. Not a bad decision. It seemed like his stiff brain was working better. However, it wasn't like Muyung would let them do as they pleased after knowing their intentions. Using the talisman, Muyung recalled the skeleton of fire and ice. It was possible to summon it wherever he was if he had the talisman. Crack. Crack. The skeleton of fire and ice was covered in thick layers of blood. Since it had killed tens of people who tried to pass through the entrance, it seemed natural that traces were left. But, at that moment, the skill art of death rank has changed from E to D. You are filled with the energy of death. The change is starting. Clank. Zombies started to eat each other. In a blink of an eye, the total number of zombies had decreased to 15. Eventually, the bodies of the 15 zombies that ate off another were inflated. Their skins also changed to green. Sharp fingernails and teeth were created and they contained a strong corpse poison. All the zombies have evolved into ghouls. Watching the whole process, Muyung pondered for a moment. Did my skill ranking increase because the number of kills from the skeleton of fire and ice added up to my score? Muyung didn't do much after he entered the tower. All he did was make zombies and slay people. It seemed like the two actions he made had helped him raise his rank. Death and art, it seemed as though their fields were divided. Muyung just looked at the newly created ghouls. They were about 1.5 times bigger than the size of a normal zombie and their abilities have greatly improved. Sorry about this. Ghouls were incomparable to zombies. If there were 10 zombies, they may be somewhat comparable. If zombies were just mindless moving corpses, ghouls had an understanding of combat. Especially their poison imbued in their nails and teeth were strong enough to kill even an elephant. Unintentionally, an enormous fighting potential was handed to him. All of Colin's efforts and plans were put to shame. If it's like this, then even a single breakthrough isn't necessary. Originally, he was planning on making a single pathway and killing them off slowly. But, with fifteen ghouls, it didn't seem necessary. Follow me. Geek. Kwa -ok. As Muyung moved forward, the skeleton of ice and fire and the ghouls followed behind. Asterisk. Clash. Muyung parried a mace that was flying towards him. The man who lost his weapon ran towards him without a weapon. Gah. Anguish cleanly sliced through the man's chest. An exquisite work where even the bones were cleanly cut. The man fell to the floor. ha -ia. Right after, a man wearing a full-plated armor blocked him with a long sword. Thump. However, the speed was awful. After Muyung tripped him over, the man lost his balance and Muyung took the chance to stab through the slight gap in between the man's plated armor. Swish. 
As Mo Young took back anguish, which had accurately pierced through his sides, with a loud sound of a crack, the man's waist snapped. Mo Young continued to walk as he sliced through people who were in his way. No one could stop Mo Young from moving forward. If they attacked all at once, it might have been different, but the ghouls were already taking care of the surrounding situation. And the person who was trying to kill Mo Young was a man being protected in a safe area. Colin. At a first sight, Mo Young could tell it was him. That this was the man who was responsible for gathering up all the people and testing him up until now. As Mo Young stood right in front of him, Colin grabbed a thin longsword. Lord Alberts, Sir Swin. As he stood there and called out the names of his dead comrades, he felt enraged. You, I am going to kill you for sure. Did he feel companionship with those who were dead? But, he was flimsy. Like a flowing stream of water, Mo Young naturally dodged the longsword. As if he trained his skills well, compared to the few who fought earlier, he had much more sophisticated skills. But, he didn't have too much real-life experience. On the other hand, Mo Young had more real-life experience than anyone else. As Mo Young moved much deeper than the length of the longsword, he swung anguish without the slightest hesitation. Slash. Chapter 25, Blood Red Tower. Slayer has killed 300 people. Excluding the Slayer, everyone will receive a guardian blessing. The Slayer cannot leave until the last person is killed. The second floor has closed. Less than 102 survivors. The number of survivors quickly decreased. As Colin, the person who had arranged the largest group had died, without an exception, the majority of the people tried to kill each other to escape. However, there were still a few who decided to stay. The blessing from the tower allowed survivors to lose their fears and stick together. At 200 kills, they received a toughness blessing, at 250 kills, they received an iron will blessing and finally at 300 kills, they received the guardian blessing. Isn't it trying hard? Mu Young lightly clicked his tongue after reading the message about the guardian blessing. It was a blessing that could only be used by quite high-ranked priests. A penalty that wasn't really a penalty was created. Either Mu Young had to die or everyone else did for this fight to end. Now, he couldn't even give up. Of course, he wasn't planning to. But still, it was going to the extremes. Winner gets all. The last one standing would get everything. Mu Young was already very used to this method. It wasn't originally this kind of an extreme world. He turned around and looked at the ghouls. Meanwhile, the number ghouls have increased to 30. There was something unique about these ghouls, they had a bit of a dark aura mixed into their skin. And in the middle of them, there was a ghoul that was particularly dark. Dark ghoul. The prince and his subjects. As a matter of fact, after making Colin into an undead, he had turned into that creature. An ability to reinforce the 30 ghouls under his supervision had been created when his head was put back together. When Mu Young looked at the dark ghoul created from Colin's corpse, information about it appeared on the status viewer. Name, dark ghoul, prince and his subjects. Level, 56. Type, ghoul. Strength 65, 60 plus 5, agility 60, 55 plus 5. Stamina 55, 50 plus 5, intelligence 44, 39 plus 5. Wisdom 46, 41 plus 5. Plus dark aura, the 30 chosen ghoul's stats will increase by 5. Plus decent tolerance to light. Plus loss of vision, superior sense of hearing. Even the dark ghoul had its stats raised by 5. Since the number in front of the brackets were the finalized values, if he only considered just the basic stats, it was higher than Young. Although stats weren't everything in a battle, it was at least an objective indicator of one's capabilities. I've gained something unexpected. Young never guessed that Colin could be turned into this good of an undead. It meant that Colin had that much of an overwhelming story. Not only that but since he was recognized as prince and his subjects, not one but many, he could now place the 31 ghouls under one talisman. It was now a question of whether all the blessing given to the rest of the people in the tower to counterbalance Mo Young would be able to stop these undead. Grr. The dark ghoul laid down flat on the floor and pricked up his ears. Although he had lost his vision, he instead gained a greater sense of hearing and was able to catch even the finest details. Geek. Unlike the zombies, the dark ghoul was able to make decisions by himself and soon started to run towards his prey while letting out a horrible shriek. The thirty ghouls followed soon afterwards. Then, Mo Young couldn't just play around. The time had come to end this fight. After 350 kills, no other blessing was given. Maybe it had assumed that no one could massacre more than 300 people? He could only know just how many survivors were left and how many people he had slain. Even then, Mo Young was still calm. To enter the tower, the requirement was that the person had to have murdered someone. Also, most of the people entered to kill another. Even though there were some who entered not because they wanted to, he didn't have the time to take care of them. He couldn't hesitate any longer. It wasn't enough to just step onwards. There were too many strong enemies Mo Young had to face. 396 people. Swish. With a large shake, Mo Young brushed off a large amount of blood on anguish. Zero survivors. The Slayer has won. No one else had survived. Mo Young walked in between the dead bodies. I'm missing four people. For some reason, he felt sad. The numbers didn't exactly fall clean. 
He thought that like the blessing, the reward might have been decided upon every fifty kills. However, no one was left alive. In sadness, as he sheathed anguish, letters started to appear and combine, to you who almost accomplished the impossible. In accordance with Solomon's law, an incredible reward will be given. Who almost accomplished? It was definitely different from the last time he earned the Death Lord class. At that time, he had received a special reward instead of an incredible. As expected, was it because he didn't have 400 kills? Since it seemed like he would get a reward every 50 kills and since he had killed 394 people, he thought he was going to get the reward for 350 kills. Mu Young clicked his tongue. He waited for the reward, but then a story he never thought of appeared before his eyes. Death Lord Objects. The Masters of Darkness are evaluating with a different perspective. The ruler of the afterlife, the spirit sovereign, the star of twelve zodiacs and king slayer have approved. The other six have decided to withdraw. A number was added depending on the number of supporting masters of darkness, 396 plus 4, dot. To you who accomplished the impossible. In accordance with Solomon's law, a chance to earn a special reward will be given. The reward has changed. The impossible that has been almost accomplished has been changed to accomplished. This had never happened in all of his 40 years. Even more, the fact that the Masters of Darkness were responsible for this change in the reward. Besides the Death Lord, they were names unfamiliar to him. The Masters of the Darkness, who couldn't become gods. Solomon had died and instead the laws were left behind. And through the conversation with Merlin, Muyung knew that those who overlooked the laws were recognized as the Masters of Darkness. However, Merlin didn't even know the specifics about the Masters of Darkness. Possibly because the Masters of Darkness were superior beings to Merlin? Through this opportunity, Muyung found out how many were part of the Masters. Eleven beings. Those who supported were four and those who forfeited were six. And if you added the Death Lord, by simple calculations, there were eleven in total. However, it didn't seem like the Masters of Darkness were simply managers. Even if their identities were in a fog, like how Muyung was chosen by the Death Lord and was given a class related to him, it was likely that other Masters could also choose someone as well. Death Lord, the Lord class. The undead made by the art of death skill were much stronger than a normal undead. Depending on the rank, it should have a tremendous destructive power than most secret classes. The classes offered by the other ten masters would probably be the same. While putting a bit of strength in his eyes, he focused on the letters that appeared. You have received the Lunatic Sovereign's ring. Dot. You have received the Lunatic Sovereign's helmet. Dot. You have received the Lunatic Sovereign's cape. Dot. King Slayer has offered his favorite horse as a present. Soon after, a red ring, helmet, and cape appeared on top of Mu Young's hand. Swish. Nii. And beside him, a huge horse, about three meters tall, jumped out. Its hoofs, tail and mane were blazing with blue fire. It had dark skin and great big wings like a pegasus, but Muyung almost pulled out his sword instinctively, after looking at the creature. A top-ranking monster. Even in the underworld, there weren't many monsters considered to be in the top ranks. Usually, people identified dragons and their mixed bloodlines, giants, hydras and other creatures as top-ranking monsters. And the hellhorse that appeared before Muyung had the magic power that was comparable to a dragon's. Just by facing the creature made Mu Young's whole body tingle. It became hard for him to breathe and all his pores were dripping with sweat. Even if the monsters that appeared at the temple were strong, they were merely low-ranked. Something like a dark ghoul would barely pass the threshold into the intermediate rankings. But, all of a sudden, a top-ranked monster appeared. If it was someone other than Mu Young, they would have fainted already. The hell horse looked down on Mu Young. Nay, afterward, it snorted heavily. The hell horse does not recognize a user that is weaker than itself as its master. Instead, it is willing to help you three times when you're in need. Are you willing to accept? If you decline, a fight will commence. If you win the fight, you will be acknowledged as its master. A top-ranking monster could wipe out a reasonably sized guild or a clan. As of now, even if Muyung gave it all he had, he would be unable to win against the hell horse. For some reason, he didn't sense any killing intent. Muyung quickly calmed down. It was one of Muyung's specialties to adapt to any situation. When the hell horse watched Muyung instantly return his breathing back to normal, the horse looked surprised as it nickered. I accept. Nay, as if it was telling Mu Young, he had made a good decision, it spread its wings widely. It probably thought it benefited, but Mu Young also did it intentionally. It's enough. The rewards were more than what he had expected to receive in the beginning. It was truly impossible to simply tame a top-ranking monster. Even the Dragon Lord had to overcome tens of life-threatening situations and succeed in ten consecutive achievements in order to tame the magical dragon. For now, being helped three times was more than enough. Just like that, it was the same as a decent guild moving at his command. Depending on how he used them, these three opportunities could prove to be an enormous help. And Mu Young was one of the few people who could use these opportunities wisely. I could look around a dangerous area. As for now, Headley Cow was all that was on his mind. A fairy that could transform into any appearance. In the end, it turns into a phoenix, if he could just grab hold of the Headley Cow in that transformed state, he could benefit from it tremendously. 
Even though he had a long-distance teleportation magical item since it was in a demon god's territory he didn't know where to start, but with this, he believed he could advance more quickly than before. Besides that, couple memories came back to him regarding where he could use the hell horse. If I beat it before using all my three chances, that will do. Also, if Myung grew stronger before he used all his chances, that was good enough. Or, figured out a way to win. He had many options. It was just that it took him time. Myung considered taming the hell horse as a definite fact. The gate to the underworld opens in two days. He cleared his mind and nodded. The tower appeared on the 25th day. Within just three days he was able to overcome the trial and receive a reward greater than what he had imagined. This was enough to enter the underworld in two days. It would be enough to be free from the clutches of the forest of death and Wang Chung Lin. The past will not repeat itself. In the past, he was kidnapped without being able to even resist them. Afterwards, with all the different kinds of drugs and brainwashing, he was turned into an absolute perfect assassin. He lived a meaningless life, like a machine, for 40 years. Once was more than enough. Mu Young clenched his teeth. You have cleared all the conditions. You will now be transported out of the tower. Whoosh. Afterwards, a bright light surrounded Mu Young. On a more personal note, I also wanted to ask for your help. As many of you know, I'm currently pursuing my education, and it can be a real challenge to balance schoolwork and creating content for this channel. If you found my videos helpful or inspiring, I would be incredibly grateful if you could consider making a donation to help me continue my education. Even a small contribution can make a big difference, and it would mean the world to me.